You do the downstairs and we'll do the upstairs. Admittedly, that way you get the cooker, but we get the buff and the loo. I'm sorry, what's this? Better than that. That's a lovely Mrs Pierce to come round and do it first. Uh, what's this all about? What are you talking about? Well, I just thought you wanted to give the house a bit of a spring clean before Mum came in. Yes, well, I wouldn't hold your breath. I mean, I don't expect her to trot round today. Like, she's going to want the flowers and the chocolates, but so you better get on. You know, sometimes I wish you'd keep your juvenile sense of humour to yourself, sunshine. Who's him? After last night, you've almost cracked it. Me and Andy will no longer be the product of a broken home. Oh, I. And when have either of you ever cared about that, eh? You know, the pair of you think you're a grown-up man. Well, I'll tell you something else, you've a hell of a lot of growing up to do. Have we got our wires crossed here? I mean, here's me going on about good on your dad for uh, getting it back together with Mum, and you turn it into a rant about how rubbish me and Andy are. Somebody around here is daft, all right? But I don't think it's us. No, I've rung Debbie and some of the others. Nobody's seen her. <laughs> I've told you, Ken. All it said in the note was that she was leaving. Well, if I knew where, I wouldn't be calling to find out if she's with you, would I? No, no, there's no point you ringing, Maggie. I'll go round to the shop. Honestly, I need this right now like I need a hole in the head. <sighs> yeah, all right. Bye. I'll call in at the chemist on the way home, buy you a nerve tonic. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with my nerves. There definitely was someone following me last night. Maybe it's been logical. <laughs> Why would a man want to follow you? Well, just what do you mean by that? What I say. You weren't carrying your handbag, were you? Well, men attack women for reasons other than money. Or are you saying that no one, not even a, a pervert, would be interested in me? Are you being paranoid? Look, Derek, I might not be in the first flush of you. As are certain other people I could mention, but that is not to say that men don't find me attractive. Hard as you may find that to believe. Of course I find you attractive, Mavis. You're feminine, you're desirable, you're charming and... And what? Somewhat prone to a vivid imagination. Now, I'm not saying there wasn't a man. I'm saying in all probability he was out to post a letter or buy, buy a pint of milk. I mean, he didn't attack you, did he? Or speak to you or make any other approach? No, well then. an early customer? I just wanted a word with my daughter. Oh, she shouldn't be long. Sorry, you don't mind if I... Ah, uh, now I'll give you a hand. <laughs> Didn't you see her at breakfast? No. The thing is, she appears to have left home. Oh, dear. When did this happen? Well, I found a note when I got up this morning, but it's been brewing for a long time. Does Ken know? Yeah, I had to ring him to find out if she was there. Oh, she's probably spent the night with one of her pals just to give you a fright. They can be quite heartless. Yeah, well, I've wronged everybody I can think of. Nobody's seen her. Oh. Have you tried Craig? Who's Craig? Oh, dear. You better come in. Good morning. Oh, hello, I'd have brought you a cup of tea on you. I thought you needed your rest. How are you feeling, Mrs Bishop? Perfectly fine, thank you. Can I get you an aspirin? <laughs> Whatever for? Well, I thought you might have a bit of air after last night. I don't have a hangover, Mr Sugden, if that's what you're implying. Oh, no, no, far from it. No, you just had a good time, that's all. A very good time. Yes, and I nearly spoiled it by behaving like a silly schoolboy. I'm glad you realise it. Mrs. Clark's happily married to Mr. Turner now. And even if you don't approve, you must accept it. Oh, but I do now have time to think. No, all we had in common was Nobby. Not like you and me, Mrs. Bishop. We could have never been compatible like that. I wouldn't say we're that compatible, Mr. Sugden. What? Two people who lived under the same roof for over five years. It's longer than some people stay married these days. We have our ups and downs. Yes, but the secret is we always acknowledge when we're in the wrong. 
That is why I'm making you slap up lunch today. That's my way of saying sorry for embarrassing you in front of that known out vicar yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sugden. I'm going out. I don't expect to be back till tea time. I see. Somewhere nice. To St. Saviour's, to help Bernard with the floral displays. There's several weddings on tomorrow. Bernard? The no-nout vicar you mentioned. He drives a van for one of the wholesalers I deal with. He seems quite a nice young man. I'm sure you've got... If he's so nice, why hasn't she introduced me to him? Or at least mentioned his existence? Well, you know what they're like. I'm worried their mothers will interfere or embarrass them. As a breed, it seems we have a great capacity for causing embarrassment to our offspring. Of course, it never happens the other way around. So, how long has she been seeing him? A couple of months, I think. Perhaps a bit longer. But it's only an assumption she's with him. I don't think so. <clears throat> hey, I'm sorry I'm wet. Oh, well, don't look so surprised. You might have known I'd come round here. Seeing as I didn't know where else to look for you. What do you want? Look, I'll just go out the back and wash these up. No, no, it's all right. I've disrupted Maggie's shop enough for this morning. Will you come home for some dinner? I don't think so. It's all right. I'm not going to handcuff you to the kitchen table or anything. But I think we should talk. I'm not changing my mind. Let's not take up battle stances just yet, shall we? I know we're not the best of friends at the moment, but I hope we're not enemies. I'll see you about one o'clock. I won't be able to stop long. OK. I'll expect you. It's lovely, is it, Paul? It's for you, you pie can. I mean, Mike did one of his deals for a load of seconds. You know, as soon as I spotted this one, I thought, Phyllis, I think the only thing wrong with it is a missing button. Oh, I'll soon fix that. I'll have to find a special occasion to wear it. Well, I would have thought seeing Percy was occasion enough. I'm not wasting my time trying to impress him. He's a dead loss. You know, Phyllis, I thought the Queen had abdicated before you gave up Percy. Oh, well, let's face it. He'll take a chance with Olive Clark, Emily Bishop. But me, he wouldn't have me, not with a free gold watch. You've been right all these years. Phyllis, my love, it's entirely his loss, silly old fool. No, it's me that's been silly. But thank goodness I'm lucky to have lovely friends like you. What can I get you, love? Oh, I'll have a bacon buddy, please, with a bottle of ketchup on a takeout. Ah, oh, yeah, I thought we'd lost your customs since your hunky brother moved in with his famous fry-ups. Yeah, well, he's moved out again. Oh, you've not been able to bust up with him. I hate families falling out. No, he's just decided it's time to move on. You're Geordie Barman, not in today, love. Colin? No, he's left. Bit sudden, that, wasn't it? I saw him yesterday dinner time. He never said a dicky bird. Family business. He had to go home. Oh, I am sorry. He was always good for a laugh and a bit of a flirt. Even though I knew he never meant it, I used to think, just carry on, mate. We girls all need our morale boosting from time to time. We do indeed. It's a shame he's gone. You'll miss him. Nobody's indispensable, Ali. <laughs> Especially fellas, eh? <laughs> Can we talk? Look, before you start... No, before you start. Don't you think you owe me an apology for just taking off like that? I left you not. Oh, come on, Tracy. I know things have been pretty dismal between us lately, but since when do we communicate by notes? Couldn't you have just told me to my face what you were planning to do? You would have hit the roof. If you'd had good reasons for leaving home, I might have listened. No, you wouldn't. You never do. Oh, what about that time when you wanted to leave school and start work? I seem to remember I listened then, didn't I? Yeah, but you still went on treating me like a little kid. That's why it's been so hard going living with you. Tracy, it's because I accept the fact that you're an adult that I've been asking you to take on adult responsibilities, like helping to share the expenses round here. Well, you won't have to worry about big form bills and things like that now I've left, will you? I'd have thought you'd be glad. Glad? 
to have my only daughter living God knows where. I'm not dossing down in Cardboard City if that's what's bothering you. I'm stopping with a friend. Yeah, and don't try telling me it was Debbie either, because I rang her this morning and she said you've not stopped with her for ages. So? So where were you on the night she should have been stopping there? You see, you do treat me like a kid, always checking up on every little thing. Well, maybe I wouldn't have to if you didn't lie to me in the first place. Were you with Craig? How do you know? Oh, Maggie Big Mouth. Are you ashamed of him? Don't be stupid. Oh, is he such a big secret, then? No reason. I wouldn't have fainted from shock, you know, love. I do know you go out with boys. You don't tell me all the men you go out with. Oh, what men? You know what I mean. No, I don't, actually. You never told me when you were sleeping with Doug Merrill? Oh, we're not going to drag all that embarrassing stuff up again, are we? Look, it wasn't planned. It only happened in the first place because I was so flaming lonely and I certainly didn't think I had to ask permission from you. You didn't. He was a bit gross, though, wasn't he? Awful. I don't know what you ever saw in him. Not what you did. <laughs> so, I take it you stayed with Craig last night? Yes. With his family? No. He's got a flat. I see. And uh, how old is he? 22. Quite an age gap. Not as much as between you and me dad. Tracy, can't we stop all this sniping? You're my daughter and I love you. And I just want to make sure you're all right. Well, I am, so you can stop worrying. Well, the trouble is, I don't know that you are. Look, I accept the fact that you're no longer a child. But at 16, I'm... I'm just not sure if you're capable of making the right decisions about your life. So you want me back here where you can make them far With you! Oh, Tracy, can't we start again on fresh terms? Like what? Like two women living in the same house, leading separate lives. We could have a lot of fun. We used to laugh a lot together. Don't you remember? No, I don't, actually. Look, I've got to get back to work. What about tonight? I'll be at Craig's. And I know you're dying to ask, so I'll save you the bother. Yes, I am sleeping with him. I see. And don't worry, I do know about safe sex. Oh, I'm sure you do. Do you honestly think that's all I'm worried about? Look, I've told you, I'm fine. I'm perfectly capable of looking after myself. And please don't start nagging me to come on, because I won't. I've got to go. You haven't had your lunch. You have it. Oh, sorry to keep you. Bit of a problem with the customer. Said he gave a tenner and I got changed for a fiver. We get those at better buys. Try one all the time. I suppose you wonder why I'm here. Well, I was hoping you'd say you've had second thoughts. Look, Mrs. MacDonald. You can call me Liz. We don't have to be that formal. The thing is, I can see your point of view. In fact, when Andy first said he was leaving college, I was dead against it too. I know. So what's changed your mind? Because it's his decision, and I have to respect that. I don't believe any of us has the right to tell others what to do. And you think that's what me and Jim's doing? Andy hasn't done this off the top of his head, you know. He's really thought it through and... and he's very clear about what he wants. Amy, this isn't just because he's leaving university, though God knows that's bad enough. I know, it's about him tying himself down to an older woman with a kid. He's 19. He's not even begun to live his life yet. How old were you when you got married? That was different. And besides, I... I live to regret it. That doesn't mean Andy will, Mrs MacDonald. Liz, I've got a son too, and I'm sure I'll worry about him just as much as you and your husband do over your boys. But whatever choices Dominic makes, well, I hope I've got the strength to allow him to be the person he wants to be and, and not try and make him into the person I want him to be. If you've come here to give me a lecture on how to be a good parent, then you're wasting both our time. 
I'm here because I know how much you love Andy. And I just don't want you to lose him. You mean you try to keep him from us? Believe me, that's the last thing I'd do. But if he thinks he's being pressured, he won't keep coming back for more. He'll just walk away. Oh, Tyler. Not fell out with Bet then yet. I got on very well with folk me. Listen, I know you've had your crowns done, but you didn't set out about having a personality transplant. Don't be nasty, Rita. I know I could be trouble in the old days, but I'm a reformed character now. Of course you are. That's why you've lumbered us all with this canine garbage disposal. <laughs> Cheers, Al. You know, your usual rare sunshine purse. Has somebody trod on your favourite corn? Loneliness is a terrible thing, Mrs Gilroy. Well, I can't contradict you there, lover. Well, you don't suffer from it, do you, with all your pals? Yes, they've got their own lives to live, haven't they? And when you need them most, they're just not there. I expect you miss Mr. Gilroy for the same reason. Well, I'll try not to let it get me down. Well, at least we know she's OK. I rang the shop and spoke to her. And what did she tell you? Oh, not much. She uh, said she was rather busy. Guess that she was fine and she was meeting you for lunch. And I suppose she made it all sound perfectly reasonable. Mother getting hysterical over nothing, as usual. But didn't she turn up? Oh, yes, she turned up. So did she say where she'd been? With her boyfriend. What boyfriend? You never said anything about a boyfriend. I didn't know anything about it myself till this morning. Although Maggie Redmond seemed fully informed. His name's Craig. He's 22. She's been seeing him for some time and she's just moved into his flat. Moved in? You mean permanent? So I gather. She's 16. How old do you say he is? 22. But she's a child and he's a grown man. Yeah, well, I pointed that out. A bit more diplomatically, of course. And? She said there was a bigger age gap between you and me. Well, it's not the same thing at all. You've been married when we got together. You were a mother, for God's sake. Oh, you don't need to remind me. Oh, well, I'm going to see a solicitor. We'll have her made a ward of court. I think legally she can't leave home until she's 18 what anyway. What good would that do? Except make her hate me even more. Well, what then? Just leave her there with him? We don't know what he's like. <laughs> well, what do you suggest? We're asking him round here for a cup of tea to get acquainted? It's not what I want. But it's a damn sight better than jumping in with the law. Did you have a nice time, Mr. Bishop? Lovely, thanks. It's just one thing I really enjoy, it's flower arranging. I'm seriously thinking of doing a course at night school this winter. Oh, why don't it be very interesting for you? That's supposed to be an apple. Looks more like a conker. <laughs> but the inside will taste good. Oh, and I've got a nice piece of place for starters. You know, I've got it fresh in the market this morning. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sugden. I shan't be in for tea. But you're always in for tea. Not tonight. Bernard's invited me out for a meal. Well, I must say, you've improved from that spotty lad that ran off with Lick's kid sister. And you've improved from the sulky little thing that ran off with somebody else's old man. Not bad. Keep it up, and in another five years, I might just go out with you if I've nothing better to do. The only problem is he's not into older women. Hi, love. Who's she had about? You see, he prefers rich young infects like Vicky does our Stevie. Which is a shame because us older girls still have a lot to offer. I'll uh, put you both on my waiting list. I might have a vacancy one of these days. No! <laughs> <laughs> hey. We're only having a bit of fun. Well, the lad can do what he likes. As long as he doesn't go breaking Vicky's heart into the process. Well, it'll happen sooner or later, unless she goes into a nunnery. Why, you know, I thought I was a cynic for one round here. But what's Derek done? Written a fan letter to Catherine Zeta-Jones. Worse. He's out with another woman. Japanese boot. Oh, well, very exotic. She means Mitzi, Jenny's dog. And it's only under sufferance. <coughs> Come on, Mitzi. Come on.
Yeah. 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 On your own tonight, are you, Phyllis? I'm always on my own, me. You can fetch that over here if you like. I'm all right where I am, Ta. Oh, well, I could do with a bit of company. <laughs> Many's the time I've felt that way out. I haven't noticed you rushing. Stop the yard, then. I'm not begging. <laughs> I'd get you nowhere if you did. Never mind that. Give her rum and blackcurrant. I'd rather have a snowball. Rum makes me a dick. All right, then. Nice blouse. <laughs> New, is it? Are my eyes going? Or is he actually being nice to her? Quick, look outside. The sky must be a couple of flying pigs. <laughs> Haven't she slipped something in his ear? Well, if she has, I'll have some for Derek. It's been very touchy. Oh, help! Help! Uh, call the police, Bet. Derek, what on earth's happened? Derek, I, I've been mugged. Oh, oh, Derek, that's awful. Go and sit down, love. Tanya, fetch him a brandy oh, over. What have they done to you? Did they get your wallet? No. The dog. I'm sorry, Jenny. Got to now. Great slobbering hound. God. I tell you, once trained as a singer, the pair of lungs you've got on you. Listen, if that thing's under my bed, you wear my slippers again. No, she isn't. You'll be delighted to hear she's gone. I would have told you last night, but you were snoring like a good one when I got home from work. What do you mean, gone? Hey, and I don't snore, madam. Oh, well, it must have been the fellas drilling the road then. Well, Derek was out walking her and somebody pinched her. <laughs> he went demented. He thought he was going to end up a battered statistic on Crime Watch. Oh, I'm sorry. Never pretended to be fond of it, but didn't deserve that. What did police say? I didn't call them. Why not? Because I know who took her. Who? Robert. Well, why, for God's sake? For him that gave it to you in the first place. To hurt me. He knows how fond I am of her. You know, I had an idea he'd pull a stunt like this. That's how vindictive he is. Honestly, Rita, why do I have such lousy taste in men? Sorry, it's me. Uh, I didn't really think it'd be Tracy. She's got her own key. Any word? I take it you've heard nothing either. I thought at least she might have brought a dirty washing bag for me. I don't let it get to you, though. Oh, I'm not. On top of the world, me. Thinking of going out to celebrate my freedom. I've got no husband, no daughter, no money. I've never had it so good. You had absolutely no right to put you through this. On the contrary. In her book, I'm the one who's totally in the wrong. This is ridiculous. I'm going to go and see her and get this whole mess sorted out. You're not going to start threatening the law and, and wards of court and all that stuff, are you? I'm just going to try to make her see what she's doing to you. I mean, she might be stubborn, but she's not stupid. Oh, well, you're welcome to try. I doubt if you'll get any further than I did. Oh, flaming it. It only seems five minutes ago she was throwing her arms around me for buying her a dolly that cried. Do you mean she knew she was putting me at risk of being mugged? Oh, Derek, you weren't mugged. The very worst all you got was a slight shove. Thanks for your sympathy. Well, I'm about as sympathetic as you were to me when I told you that I was being followed. Oh, I'm all a goggle. What the heck's been going on? Well, Jenny's ex-boyfriend dog-napped her pooch last night. Yeah, but to hear the fuss that Derek's made, you'd think he'd been set on by a gang of hell's angels, not just a dentist. It gets better. He was a very large dentist. He just loomed up behind me. I mean, for all I knew, he might have had a knife. Or a drill. But if he wanted his dog back, why didn't he just ask for it? Exactly. Instead of behaving like a thug. I mean, you don't expect professional people to behave like that. Mr. Petrie wouldn't have done that. Oh, Derek, do be quiet. Nobody's interested in Mr. Petrie. But Gail's right, Rita. Why didn't he just approach her in the normal way? Because he knew how much Mitzi meant to her. He knew she'd never give it up. So he just took her? Mm. That's wicked. Yeah. Rich chocolate cake, eh? Well, it'll make a change from Victoria Sponge. I'm so 
sorry if my repertoire bores you, Mr. Sugden. I didn't say that. You make a very light sponge, almost as light as my own. You know, a spoonful of strong coffee in that would bring out the flavour beautifully. Thank you, but I prefer vanilla. Ah, oh, well, to each his own, or her own, as the case may be. I see you're making some uh, lemon tarts and all. Yes, uh, it's not your birthday, is it? No, of course it's not. It's the 18th of the month. I never forget a date, unless we're celebrating early. We're not. I've invited Bernard round for tea. You're going to all this bother for a vicar? Well, as far as I know, there's nothing in holy orders to prevent them eating cake. But I'd not appreciate it. I mean, it's all, all preaching and no pleasure with them. The shop bought would have done. Mr. Sugden, I know you don't exactly hit it off with him, so you'll understand why I'd prefer it if you could make alternative arrangements for this afternoon. You're not turning me out, are you? <laughs> Only for a couple of hours. Not asking you to take your bed clothes and sleep on the red wreck. After all, I was very accommodating when you were seeing Mrs. Clark. Yes, but that was different. I was courting Mrs. Clark. You're not caught in this vicar chap, are you? He's just coming round for a quiet cup of tea and a chat on our own. Well, that's not too much to ask, is it? I don't see why she take that attitude. You can invite the Archbishop of Canterbury for all I care. I still said the coffee would be an improvement. Take it off. Put on this black belt which I use throughout everything I wear. This is a very nice black belt. It's fabulous. This is um, a, a quite expensive, but Going it's in for the Queen's Slut title, are we? Item. No, I was and just having a break. Constantly People normally have a break fabulous. after they've got stuck in, um, not before. This is a, a Rita, you are turning into a serious nag. And while you're doing it, you can explain to me the mysterious case of the dog-napping dentist. It's not funny. Oh, I know it isn't, love. That's why I want the whole story, not some comical embroidery. But I told you the whole story. Can't you just leave it alone? No, I can't. Adultery he may be, but from what I saw of your Robert, he didn't strike me as the type to go in for petty spite. He didn't take that dog just to break your heart, Jenny. He took her because Mitzi belonged to him. So it was you who took his dog, not the other way round. Right. Do I get to know why? It was worth a lot of money. Money? Oh, well, now we know we're in spitting distance at truth. How much? About a grand. A thousand pounds? And it were having pups. How much were they expected to fetch? Anything between five and six hundred. Each? That wasn't a dog you nicked. It was a walking gold mine. Oh, for God's sake, Rita! He'd left me to go back to his drippy wife. From having everything I had, sod all. No man, no home. I put everything into that relationship. I was entitled to something. You're not entitled to take other people's property, madam. And certainly not entitled to make me an accessory. It was after only the a case. dog, not flaming gold bullion. A very valuable dog. Do you know, I might have known you'd be on anybody's side but mine. And to think for all those years I was stupid enough to look on you as my mum. I loved you, Rita. You were the only family I had. My real mum gets run over, my dad turns into a psychopath, and I land up with you. When it comes to family, I certainly struck out, didn't I? Hello, love. Hello. I'm uh, just checking you can help me before next Monday. Ah, uh, well, it'll have to be towards the end of the week. I've got a few things of my own to sort out first. Just as long as I can count on, love. <laughs> A lot to do in there, you know. Oh, well, isn't he as pleased as punch about it? Well, it's given me a new lease of life, hasn't it? Something my wife will never understand. Right, we're going for what or what? Oh, you go on, I just want a quick word with Deirdre. Oh, right. Order me a cheese salad, love, oh, would you? Okay, love. Uh, is it all right if I just come yeah, in? Yeah, yeah. It's just that, uh, well, I called into the cafe this morning. And before you start, girl, yeah, I wasn't gossiping. It's just that. Well, she's concerned about your love with the both of us. Well, they've no need to be. I'm fine. Deirdre, I know you think I'm a right bubblehead. <laughs> I dare say I am most of the time. But, lovey, I have got a daughter of my own and I've had plenty of sleepless nights over. At least you two can talk to each other. Well, 
we can now, but I mean, it took long enough, I can tell you. Do you know, for years we hardly even saw each other, let alone speak. What was that? Oh, well, we had this big bust up. It was, well, something in my past that she disapproved of, so she packed her bags. Funny how the past can shatter the present. And they're so quick to make judgments. Oh, yeah. Do you know our girl was 16 at the time, too? We've got more in common than I thought. Do you fancy a cup of tea? Oh, yeah, go on, if you're having one. So, how long was it before you made it up, then? Oh, long enough. I can tell you I went through many soggy pillows. But, you know, in the end, we managed to work it out. And now we get on better than we ever have, thank goodness. I couldn't bear it if I thought it was going to be months before me and Tracy were friends again. We'll be fine as long as you plunge them into a bucket of water up to the next for about an hour when you get there. Right. OK? Yep, thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Oh, you sound very professional. Hello. Maggie in the back? She's gone for lunch. Oh, well, it's nice to know she can leave you to run the place on your own now. Well, some people actually think I can be trusted to do things without making a mess of them. It's not that your mum doesn't trust you, love, but this boyfriend, she doesn't know anything about him, neither do I. Well, I do, and I'm the one that's with him. And Craig's not a boy, he's a man. Yeah, well, that's what gave us all the more cause for concern. <coughs> oh, come on. Can't talk here. How about coming round to the house tonight for a bit of supper and a chat? What, on another lot of air, Rick? Nowhere. So that's it, then? You're going to cut yourself off completely? Don't be stupid. I just want to give it some time. Get her used to the idea without going into hysterics. Look, you walked out without even letting your mum know where you live. Don't you expect her to get upset? If I've not moved to another flipping planet, she knows where I work. You both do. All the same, we'll be a little bit happy if we knew where we could find you after shop hours. Look, Tracy, we need to be able to get in touch. Supposing there's an emergency. All right. But only on the condition that you don't tell her. Now, your mum loves you. She's worried sick about you. Don't think she's the right to know where you are. She can always get a message through you. I mean it, Dad. You either promise me or we can forget it. You're being very unfair. And very unkind. All right. <clears throat> Don't leave me much choice, do you? If you break your word, then that's it. I'm finished with both of you. I mean it, Dad. See you later. Bert, can I have a word after work? Have it now, Flower. We're hardly rushed off our tutsies. I think I'm going to have to give my notice in. Well, I thought you were happy here with us girls and Jack, or... Or is he the problem? <laughs> no, no, um... It's Rita. She doesn't want me here. Has she said so? Well, not in so many words, but it's obvious I'm getting under her feet. You can hardly blame her. It is only a tiny flat. Big enough for her and Ted. Well, all the same, I think it's best if I go. So why give your job up? Find somewhere else to live. You've got nothing I can afford. Rita's been sweet. I mean, she's hardly charged me anything. So where will you go, love? Well, I've got some friends down south. I can crash out on their floor for a bit while I get my bearings. Don't you worry about me. I'll survive. Had to so far. Hi, Alfie. Your old lady got you on a diet again, then, has she? Oh, no, no, that's hers. Had mine ages ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know, women, though. When they get together, what do they find to jabber about? Oh, our failings as husbands, no doubt about it, Alfie. Uh, Things no better between you and Liz, then? Why, should they be? Me, I'm an optimist chicken. I always hope folk will come to the senses and see what they're losing before it's gone. Pint? 
Ah, oh, yes, please. Well, you and Alec didn't know, did you? Ah, but me and Alec were never exactly love story of the century in the first place. Love? Huh, you're better off without it. Causes more problems than it solves, I tell you. My lad's thinking of jumping in the deep end now and he's barely even out of nappies. Vicky's far too sensible to let either of them do out stupid. No, not Steve, the other one, the clever one. Oh, I leave in university thinking about getting married. She's older than him and she's got a five-year-old kid. Well, it says something for the lad that he's willing to take on the responsibility. <sighs> he's only a lad himself, Beth. Is he happy? Happy? What the hell's happiness got to do with he's chucking the rest of his life away? Jim, sweetheart. Even then, what's older and wiser and living palaces can get it wrong. I know if it was my son, I'd wish him luck and let him get on with it. Have you looked in your room? I had it down here yesterday to look up your birthday. But you never forgot a date. I know it's this month. I just wanted to double check. Mr. Sutton, must you have your diary right this very minute? Yes, I must. It's got Herbert Cottrell's phone number in it. I promise to give him a ring. For you to wreak your own brand of magic on. I don't know about magic. It's usually more good luck than good judgment. But thank you, Bernard. They're lovely. Come in. It's happening through here. You remember Mr. Sutton? Ah, yes. We met at Mr. Turner's wedding. <laughs> Mrs. Clark's wedding. Oh, well, whatever. They seem ideally suited. I'm sure they'll be very happy together. Can't you phone your friend tomorrow? I said I'd call him today and I don't break promises. Well, written directory inquiries then. Gosh, Brass these days does that. Besides, I don't know his address. I'll see my diary as well. Aren't you the lucky one? Madam's doling out sweet, so you've got the lovely me. I've been having a few words with young Jenny. Oh, I where about? She tells me you want shut of her. Did she now? Listen, I know the kids have given you plenty of aggro in the past, but you're all she's got. Well, Sup, are you worried you'll have to go to the bother of advertising for a new barmaid? You're right. Now to do with me. Let you bet. I'm sorry. She's got me tied in knots. But I haven't said she has to go. She reckons you're on the verge of it. Well, probably was earlier on, but we'll soldier on a bit longer. Everybody deserves a second chance. Well, from what you've told me, it sounds like a 20-second chance. Look, I know she's taking advantage, only paying peanuts for a keep. But she's a bit of company for you, Rita, especially with winter coming up. Peanuts. She always was a big softy. Sorry to keep you waiting, but quite honestly, if I'd served the tea while Mr Sugden was still here, we'd never have got rid of him. I can't say I'd have blamed him. I'd kill for a slice of that wicked-looking chocolate cake. Hardly a very Christian sentiment. Not meant to be taken literally. It comes under the shamed heading, Confessions of a Greedy Man. There's no shame in enjoying good food, as Mr Sugden's won't to point out if I leave a morsel of his famous shepherd's pie. Wait, not, won't not, Mrs Bishop. <laughs> he sounds more like your keeper than your lodger. Mostly I turn a deaf ear, because basically I feel sorry for him. He's a rather lonely old soul. And you're a caring, compassionate woman. Oh, not that compassionate. I told him to make himself scarce this afternoon. Oh, now who's being unchristian? I wanted to avoid an atmosphere. I'm afraid he's rather taken against you, as I'm sure you must have noticed. Mm. Poor old boy's probably jealous. Of you? Well, I wouldn't find it surprising if he resented anyone else stepping into what he considers to be his territory. But there's nothing like that between us. You may be convinced of that, my dear. But is Mr. Sugden? You're not usually up here at this time? I wanted a word with you. Look, if it's about that dog, I'm sorry. It was a dumb thing to do. No, it's about you. Up to your old tricks again. What tricks? Why did you tell Bet I was going to chuck you out? I never said that. She seems to think you did. 
That's why you handed your notice in. Counting on the sympathy vote, were we? I didn't hand it in. I just said I might have to leave, which I will do if you won't let me stay on. <laughs> why would I want to get shut of such an ideal flatmate? I've said I'll do it and I will. Oh, on the other hand, maybe I shouldn't expect you to do your share of chores, seeing as how you pay me for the privilege of staying oh, here. That, honestly, all I said was I'd give you a token rent. Which you don't. You never asked me to. I don't flame me want to. I just don't like all these lies. I didn't want Bet to think I was sponging off you. Oh, you do have your pride. Funnily enough, I have. Oh, Jenny, if only you'd learn. It's much easier in the long run to tell the truth. We'd get along a lot better. You're absolutely right. I don't know why I'm doing it. I'm sorry, Rita. Oh, don't be sorry. Kick the habit. We'll get along a lot better. I don't deserve a friend like you. Now, that's the first true word you've said. No, I'll tidy up. I'll do the ironing and then I'll cook supper. Oh, don't turn into Pollyanna overnight. I couldn't stand the shock. <laughs> I don't think there's much danger of that. Is the kettle on? She made it very clear my presence wasn't welcome. I'm left to roam the streets while she entertains a fancy man. You roam in no streets, battle. You're coming back to my place. <laughs> To hand it to the old girl. She's living proof, persistent, pays. Mm. There's another saying and all. Be careful what you wish for. You might get it. So it's decided then. I know I'm not much good at making these fancy gattos, but I've got a lovely rice pudding in thumb. I've only got to stop out till he's gone. Uh, and get back in time to wash their dirty dishes. Glad of a few crumbs what they've left. No, you've too much pride for that, Percival. I don't think you'll expect me to wash up. Well, if I were you, I'd stop out till bedtime, or even breakfast time. I can't do that. I mean, I can't stop out late. I and mean, without telling her, she'd worry about me. Listen, Emily Bishop's made it clear she's going to live her own life, and good luck to her. Now, you want to tell her, you want to do the same. Have you put a lump of best butter in this rice pudding? Aye. And brown sugar and plenty of nutmeg up top. It probably wouldn't do any harm to let people know I can't be taken for granted. Well, did you see her? Deidre, calm down. I hate it when you say that. I'm entitled to be upset, aren't I? Well, look, you do yourself no good getting all stressed, and it certainly won't help you to deal with Tracy. So she does want to see me, then? Not yet. She will, but she thinks you both need time to cool off. What she really means is, the longer she stops away, the less chance there is of us ever getting her to come back. I tell you what, I'm on the wrong trade here. Those sign writers must make a fortune out of you. Yeah, well, they would have done if I hadn't had the foresight to put the old sign to one side. Mind you, some people think I should have chucked it on the midden. I used to think he was obsessed before. Now it's shop, 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 morning, noon, and I do not knock it, Audrey. If I still had my wee business, I wouldn't be in this lousy mess I'm in now. Well, yeah, I remember. You ran a motorbike repair place for that gorgeous son of yours. That's right. But he's got a few girls buzzing round him. Uh, his son's romances are a bit of a sore point at the moment, right, Jimbo? Now, there's nothing wrong with a touch of romance. And if a girl who's recently been dumped can say that, then I'm sure a grouchy old dad like you can. You seem to have cheered up since this morning, lady. Oh, yeah, um, I meant to mention, I won't be leaving after all. Rita and I have had a little chat and everything's great. Just hey. look at her. She's smiling as if she ain't got a care in the world. Well, she probably hasn't. She palms them off onto everyone else. Just like she palmed that ridiculous dog off onto me. Oh, no, that's not strictly accurate. It was me asked you to walk Nitsy. Jenny knew nothing about it. Well, be that as it may, the girl is nothing but trouble. And I have every intention of telling her so. Everything okay with the Wiltons? <laughs> Fine, yes, thank you. But if she's not willing to meet us and discuss it, we're no further forward. We don't know the boy, we don't know where she's living. Yes, we do. She gave me the address. She didn't invite me round, it's strictly for emergencies. In fact, I only got it on condition that we both keep away. That's ridiculous. Oh, I agree, love, but that's the way she wants it. And I'm afraid we have to face it that right now she's the one calling the shots. Oh, Ken. How did we ever get to this? She's my daughter. She... 
How did we ever get to this? <laughs> Such things are meant to be. Thought you were a bit old for this. I've already cancelled that. How are you feeling? Well, nobody's waved a magic wand, Ken. No. Look, uh, I've decided I'm going to go around to see her in a flat. And I'm sure you don't want me there. Well, uh, I'll come and report as soon as I get back. When are you going? I thought I'd catch you straight out for the shop. I'll come home, change, and get straight around there. Why do you need to get changed? Well, like a school teacher. Bank manager. It's even worse. Should have a bolt through my nose and green hair. So, why am I going? To see what kind of squalor our daughter's living in. Or otherwise. We can hope. Confidence. The lad might be heir to a huge empire. So why is he driving a florist van? I'm, uh... Relatively youthful, aren't they? Relatively trendy. I mean, they're not worse. No hope, Ken. However relatively we are, we're parents and damned for it. Are you still cross with me? Don't be silly, Jenny. You are, though, aren't you? I'm just wondering what games you're playing now. I'm not playing games. I'm really grateful to you for putting up with me. I know it's difficult. Look, if you don't play games, don't be deceitful. Respect me, respect me flat, you're welcome to stay. What more can I say? You're a lovely person, Rita. I mean it. Well, thank you very much. It's so sad you're alone. If anyone deserves happiness, you do. Who says I'm not happy alone? Well, maybe you are, but... There is more to life, isn't there? If I lack for company, I buy myself hamster. <laughs> You've always had a sense of humour. <laughs> I used to have Jenny. It's been sorely tested these last few years. Why is that? That's when I met your family. Oh, by the way, get shut, will you? Yay! Ah, right. Now, do you want to go with me this morning, or do you want to wait until this afternoon as a delivery due? Oh, well, for what a choice. Here, well, we'll get a clear run at it if we go this morning. Might be better to go this morning. Clear run at what? Well, cleaning round. I mean, there's all the shelves to do. There's the gondola, there's the deep freeze counter. And just think, Audrey, two weeks ago, my only interest was telly. Yeah, well, I think I'll come this afternoon. Hey, now, look. Hot bread, rice, olives, feta cheese. And the garlic sausage. I thought we'd go all continental for breakfast, though. Oh, no, I've got time for that. I've got far too much to do, love. Hey, but I found my sign in the garage. I scrubbed it up and it looked as good as new. Oh, ring out the church bell. Come on, Audrey, it really does. Yes, all right. But now, why do we always have to have bacon and eggs? I buy you a right nice breakfast. Why can't you appreciate a change? Oh, go on, then. If that's the way you feel about it, we'll have your bread and cheese. But what do you think about the sign, eh? What made me put it away, eh? Didn't it give you goose pimples? What? Well, it's clear enough to me. I was guided. It meant to be. Oh, was it, Eck? It's just your meanness. You never took anything out. Oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> anyway, can you blame me? I mean, that thing in that garage, it saved me 200 quid if it saved me a penny. Oh, well, it's Bahamas next week, then, is it? Oh, I give up. <laughs> right, then, you make the sarnies and I'll go uh, show stuff in the car. I suppose you've parked it in the usual place, have you? In the road? In the garage. Oh, for once. Hallelujah. You never have. <sighs> yes, you're making a nice job at that. Thank you. Car boot sale. Low grade sort of activity is that, though. Each to his own. You know, it wasn't for such as yourself working all the hours you do. Form and religion would cease to exist. That's what these clerics bank on, you know. That's true. Church goes by and large are the ones that they can exploit. They are. And some have the patience of saints. Yeah, they do. Others are less tolerant, 
and need time and space to themselves or they're inclined to start screaming. Now she's gone to the wholesalers. Can I help? Well, there's an estate agent wrong. Someone wants to view her house. Well, did you tell them that she'd ring back? Yeah. Oh. Well, she won't be long. I'm sure they'll wait. Can I make you a cup of coffee? No, I don't like coffee at this time of day. But thanks all the same. Look, you will be careful with that, won't you? We do want to be able to sell it. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's no shame she's selling the house. I don't know, is it? Well, it's just so much better than a pokey flat. I mean, there's a garden, garage. She could live in the house and sell the flat. And that's a very nice street it's in. Well, this is a very nice street. This? It does for me. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you wouldn't call it... Well, what I mean is, Oak Hill's a really nice area. I mean, compared to High Bank Avenue, Coronation Street's in a city, isn't it? Look, you're not bending that cover back, are you? And anyway, it's a much better investment. And she doesn't need the money. If she hung on to the next boom, she'd make a killing. Maybe Rita doesn't care about killings. Well, she should. It would cost her very dear to live in that house again, and I don't mean just financially. Why? Because of the unpleasantness. There was a lot of unpleasantness. I thought they got on well, her and Ted. They got on famously. The unpleasantness was after he died. How come? Well, if Rita hasn't told you, I expect it's because she doesn't want you to know. You mean she's protecting me? <laughs> There's nothing to protect you from. The will was contested by the family, that's all. It doesn't concern you. That's awful. So she didn't get his money? Jenny, it's not your business whether she got his money. It was just a very bad time. Nasty things were said, very wicked things, and, and Ted's house and everything like that. It, it's all bound up with it in Rita's mind. That's why she wants to sell. Well, why was it contested? Because he left her everything, and the family didn't like it. They thought she was after his money. You know, I think the law stinks. All that she went through, and then to lose his money. I said there was a court case and that it was nasty. I didn't say she lost. But it was tainted. No matter that she won, I always knew she felt it wasn't worth it. Thanks, love. See you. And I thought the Queen's was boring. Quiet does not necessarily mean boring, Tanya. We're all thinkers in here. Intellectuals, you know. Go oh, on, show me one. <laughs> and don't say Jim MacDonald. Ah, suffering silently is Jim. Mind you, we're wow. used to it, us men. Us men? You've still got your wife. What have you got to complain about? I'll introduce her to her one day. Yes, lovey. How you watch this jack? Well, I get the shirt on this. Thanks, Jim. Uh, just to tonic with ice, Jack. Nice. What have uh, I done to deserve this? Well, uh, listen, I have to admit, uh, it's not entirely without string, so it's not... Uh-uh. No, no, listen, say no if you want to be on your own. Um, look, I'd, I'd value your opinion as a woman. So do you want to sit down for a minute, please? Silently suffering. He was waiting for her. Yeah, but I'll be Hello there. Oh, well, nice to see a cheerful face. Well, we aim to please. Well, you aim right and all. Listen, I want to pint a beer, but most important, hot pot. Oh, no, sorry, love. Betty's off today. Hey, do you fancy cheese butty? Hey. 60 feet, please, Jim. Cheers, Jack. Cheers. You will remember this is my lunch break, Jim. Nothing too heavy. I'll try not to get too heavy. Mm. You. Uh, uh, well. Look, I've just been trying to get my life sorted out at the moment, you know, and, uh, well, between you and me, uh, <laughs> I slept with her, Liz, a couple of weeks ago. Uh-huh. But it just doesn't make any sense, you see. You see, I know it was good, right? And not just for me. 
Not just for me, right? I mean, I know it was good for her as well, right? And then all of a sudden, like, Colin, he ups and, well, he's away back to Toy Town or wherever the hell it is he comes from. And then all of a sudden, it's different, right? I mean, all of a sudden, it's like a one-off thing, you know? She just happened to do it, but she does she doesn't want to do it again, okay? Now, I don't believe her because I know it was good, believe me. Well, she's got to protect herself, hasn't she? What, like, from her feelings? Not just that. I mean, say you were thinking of divorce. Are you thinking of divorce? Oh, for God's sake, sir. One minute's a divorce, the next minute we're sharing a bungalow together. I don't know what the hell I'm thinking anymore at all. Say it was divorce. OK, go on ahead. Well, now you've slept with her, you can't cite adultery against her. Do you think there's a chance you knew that? I'm on a yacht. I'm in the sun. And I'm getting ready for a night out in Cannes. Are you married? Give over. Who needs that? What about you, Denise? What? Ten years today. Run in a backstreet hairdresser in some grotty part of Weatherfield. You could do better. I could. You know, you've got me thinking. Hey, Actually, Dick. more than that, you've got me angry. No, no. Don't you worry your head about it, love. You've done me a favour. OK, so where you be? I said, sweeping up hair clippings. You know where I'll be? Breeding fancy dogs. For a start, it'll be London. Be the suburbs. The wealthy areas. And it'll be two beauty salons. Why not 20? I said 10 years. That's where I'll be. <sighs> 15 years, it'll be a chain. It'll be international. And I'll sell. And then what? I'll have that yacht you were on about. Hey, you're stealing my yacht. I won't steal it. I'll buy it. Well, where did you get these two beauty salons from in the first place? Well, you see, I'm an orphan. <laughs> so? So no one's going to die and leave me money. There's no house coming my way. There's no inheritance. So I've got to do it myself. Poor little orphan, Annie. Most people have to do it for themselves just because they've got parents. Don't mean they get a free house. Yeah, but most people get something. Not anything I get, I've got to fight for. I'm not complaining. It's an advantage. It means I'm less sentimental. Well, it's very nice. I mean, during the war, they had to make do with blackout. At least this has writing on it. Does it take too much light? Oh, it's fine. We'll bask in the radiance of heaven. Thanks ever so much. I'm doing a publicity drive, trying to saturate the area. Well, you've certainly drenched us. Well, it's really for Bernard's sake, the Reverend Morton. He's a little disillusioned with fundraising at present. It'd be wonderful to cheer him up. <laughs> Thanks ever so much. Right. Bye. Bye, Emily. Isn't there a law against fancying a vicar? Oh, I don't think it's like that. Right. Come on. Jenny. Well, she, she was just very interested, that's all. Um, so you hadn't told her about the will business? I haven't told her anything. It's none of her business. Well, exa that's exactly what I said. What? I said it's none of your business. And then what? Well, like I said, she was just very interested. So what did you say? Well, I said it, it wasn't just financial reasons why you were selling Ted's house. It, it was the general unpleasantness, the court case, the will and all that. So, in other words, you told her all about it? Oh, no, no. Oh, it doesn't matter, Mavis. She'll gain nothing from it. Well, exactly. That's exactly what and I thought. I never did say it was a secret, did I? No, never. So, I've only myself to blame, haven't I? You know, Rita, she will thumb through those magazines. Doing? I'm making a phone call. Yeah, Thanks. my time and my bill. Give it here. Hello? Citizens advice. Can I help? No, sorry, wrong number. Citizens advice? That's not an order for brake linings, is it? What's your problem? 
Personal? Yeah? Yeah. Well, take my advice. Forget all that. Get yourself a lawyer. I can't afford one. Well, how do you know? Have you asked him? Might even get legal aid. Yeah. Yeah, hey, look. Brandon Perkins. Good enough for me. Mention my name. Well, thanks very much, Mike. It's all right. You got me in a good mood. Just watch my son win at rugby. Oh, that's good news. Tell me, what would you call it? Rugby or rugger? I'd call it the game that uh, posh kids play. Well, don't ever call it rugger. You get laughed off the field. See you later. Well, I don't suppose we can agree, but uh, at least we can be adult. Well, that is, if you can see it from our point of view. Well, I mean, particularly Tracy's mother's point of view. None of mine, of course. Look, uh, frankly, Craig, we feel she's too young. I mean, this whole business of her leaving school was, uh, well, it was a shock. Not, in my opinion, a waste. Right, kid, and to be stuck in a florist shop, quite frankly, is. Well, she could do better, let's leave it like that. <sighs> and now, to leave home at 16 and shuck up with. Well, it's not what we expected for our daughter, okay? Look, Craig, I uh, haven't come round here to ask you about your intentions or anything like that. I mean, we're not Victorian. For God's sake, don't go thinking that. And I thought she'd been here by now. Yeah, sometimes she goes shopping. All right. Shall we play the guitar? Yeah. I play the trumpet. Well, we used to. Not exactly constant standard, but I used to enjoy it. You play with the group? Locally? Yeah. And you, uh, you drive the florist van. Uh, that's right, isn't it? That's right. Good, very good, very good. It's a decent job. It's a crap job. All oh, right, all right. So, uh, it's a fill-in for you, then. Right. Yeah, well, good for you. Can I ask you something? Please. Would you pick the name, Tracy? Yes, dear, really. Uh, oh, I don't know. It's a bit early, isn't it? I don't think I want a drink. Well, this is the road of return. Um, the Methodist chapel's on Incomer Street. Has Ken been at all? No, look, no. Oh, well, I thought he might have been in by now. I'll look back in about half an hour. Well, do you want me to give a thump on the wall if he turns up? I'll call back anyway. <laughs> the fact of adoption is very powerful. I think it's true to say it. I feel as much, if not more, for Tracy as I do for my own kids. And you know that, don't you know? Mm -hmm. I don't think Tracy's ever felt second rate in my affections. Have you? No. And I'm very proud of that. Right. Nice meeting you, Craig. All right, I'll see you soon, then. Okay. Tracy, look, look, we're determined to avoid losing touch. You don't know how easy it is. I've got two kids that I hardly ever see. That's not my fault. Well, no, no, of course it isn't. But how do you think it feels? We put all this in, all this emotional investment, not to mention your schooling, and then suddenly you go out of our lives. It's unbearable. I saw you on Monday. Tracy, I came to see you on Monday. So? You saw me? Look, look I don't want to get heavy, really, but... Think about your mother, please. You shouldn't have come here. Yeah, I can see that. I'm sorry if I embarrassed you. I'm sorry I'm a bad investment. Oh, Tracy. Well, all I hear about is your feelings. What about my feelings? 
I couldn't stand living in that house. I love my mum, but she's neurotic and I just couldn't stick it anymore. You couldn't stick it and you got out. So how can you criticise me? It wasn't quite like that. No, you had an affair. Why did you have an affair? Not because my mum was great to live with. Okay, love, I came to see where you were, met Craig, that's all I wanted, really. So, you'll go back now and tell her I'm a lost cause? Oh, no, I won't. I'm quite reassured, as a matter of fact. Well, it's a shame you couldn't take my word for it. Can't you see? We care desperately. Then leave me alone. Well, mistake, yeah. Was it foul? Oh, no, fine, fine. Decent enough flat. Shouldn't be, but I wouldn't turn my nose out. But it was a mistake to go. Why? Well, I embarrassed her, let her down. And the lad, well, oh, good grief. You didn't have a row with him. Oh, I defy anyone to have a row with him. They talk about cool, he's bloodless. Totally in charge, gave nothing, just sat and observed. So, he has got something about him, oh, then? He's got lots of things about him. Not sure they're very good. It's a bit unnerving, frankly. I really, seriously couldn't take to him, but he's no fool. Is he nice to Tracy? Couldn't tell, but she seemed OK. She wants her space. And she wants her freedom, I suppose. And uh, I think we're going to have to accept that she's gone. It just seems the wrong time. Well, it's always the wrong time. I know, but think about it. Think how good that area is. And High Bank Avenue is one of the best roads around. How do you know, anyway? I, I just happened to be passing it the other day. I don't need three bedrooms. I don't need the garden. And I don't need the hassle. Anyway, I'm happy where I am. You don't seem wonderfully happy to me. Well, we'll leave out wonderfully. I jog along. I've got a proposition to make to you. What? Well, I think that High Bank Avenue would be perfect for the two of us. And it wouldn't be a hassle because I'd do the housework, I'd do the garden. And with two of us being there, it wouldn't seem too big. You could sell the flat, you'd have a big chunk in the bank, and you wouldn't be alone anymore. I, mean, I could even pay you rent. I just think it would be brilliant for you. Do you know, you frighten me. <laughs> me? Your father tried to get me out of me. Rita, I'm thinking of you. What's best for you? And I know it's what Ted would have wanted. He wouldn't have wanted you to be alone for the rest of your life. You'd never even heard of him. You'd never even heard of him till a week or two ago. How dare you tell me what he would have wanted? All right, all right, I'm sorry. But I am only thinking of you. I'm sorry too, Jenny. I'm sorry I don't believe you. You see yourself in a nice house in Oak Hill, so you pretend it's all for my good. And if it all went to plan, you'd move us in, and one day I'd pop off, and lo and behold, it would be yours. Well, you can forget it, madam. I'm selling that house, and that's my last word on it. You're a Bradley, Jenny. And if I were you, I wouldn't forget it. Cos I never will. Right, this is definitely the last one. You know, I can't get used to the old sailor, though. It's like going to a different world. It's all different stuff these days. Do you know, they've even got pork pies with pickling. Have you ever heard about so daft? Deirdre. What? Pork pie with pickle. Oh, right. Sounds very nice. Yeah, I'm sure it is very nice, but what's the world coming to when people can't even be bothered to undo their own jar of pickle, eh? Beats me, Alf. Oh, can you come and help me with this, look? Because I don't know where I am. I've got blooming rice, I've got all sorts of stuff in here. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. McDonald. It's been one of those days. Have a seat. Thanks. So, what can I do for you? Uh, well, uh, I've come to see about getting a divorce. Take as long as you like. Today's the anniversary of the day we said I do. 
and we saw the bright beginning of our special dream come true. <laughs> you know, I've got a funny one and a, a mucky one or something. Did you know romance is back in fashion? There's no call for muck round here anymore. Thanks, love. How many years is it then since you tied the knot? Seven. Seven? Oh. That's copper. Eh? Well, you know, 25 for silver, 50 for gold, yeah. 7 for copper. Ah. Or is it bronze? Derek and me will be wood in November, that's fine. <laughs> they ask me, it's all wrong anyway, celebrating the day you got wed. I mean, it's a solemn occasion, isn't it? Like Remembrance Day. Oh, <laughs> well, this will have to do, Mavis. All right, that's 95. Thank, Thank you. You, you thanks. Rita. Yeah. I have just had the best afternoon of my life. Hey, he said it on. You only went for a leg wax. No, no, it was a Kathy Dermic face trimming, actually. Can you tell? Anyway, that's not what I'm excited about. What are you doing tonight? Same as every Friday. Rovers, telly, Coco. Good. You and me are going to have a nice, quiet night in, because there's something I want to talk to you about. Mm. Or should I say a proposition I want to put to you? No, oh, what? You'll just have to wait and see, won't you? Mm. But listen, if it's anything to do with Ted's house, I'm telling you... Why should you... it be? Well, no, but... Well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... But what did you mean, then? Forget I spoke. Hey, Jenny, wait! Well, look, it's a wee bit complicated, so it is. A uh, while back, my wife and I separated, OK? And then not very much longer after that, she ended up with another guy, you know? Well, then, um... Look, this here is uh, very difficult for me, Mr Lloyd, you know? Take as long as you like. Uh, right you are. Uh, Right, well, a couple of weeks back, um, we had a sort of like a wee family crisis, you know, and it kind of, um, well, it pushed us together. Do you get my drift? Yeah, right. Well, then, a friend of mine tells me that I can't sue for, uh, it means I can't sue for adultery. Uh, not necessarily, although the fact an estranged couple sleep together in the first place usually suggests the marriage may not be beyond repair. Oh, well, you see, that's what I was hoping for, but it wasn't long before she put me right in that score, you know? Well, in that case, the simplest and most painless way to annul the marriage is by mutual consent. Oh, I, well, I've heard all about that, so I have. The marriage is over, but no-one's to blame. Ah, uh, well, you can forget that, Mr Lloyd, so you can. You see, in this case, someone is very definitely to blame. You know, I have tried everyone to keep this marriage together, but uh, she's destroyed it. Oh, I say. Now, come on, Alfie, don't keep me in suspense. Who's it going to be? What are you on about now? Well, the celebrity that's opening this place. I mean, now, it's the film star. A sporting personality. Daisy Eck is like, <laughs> look, I told you, we'll give a glass of wine to the first couple of dozen oh. customers. That'll do. This is a corner shop, not an hypermarket. Is it all right if I push off now, Alf? Uh, well, Yes, uh... of course it is, dear. Do you never mind him trying to squeeze another few minutes of work out of you? Yeah, well, there's a bit to do yet, you know. Give over. Now, you're not officially out of retirement till Monday, <sighs> anyway. Oh, up. Well. Been to the bargain basement, haven't you? Hey, yeah, leave that be. <laughs> Honestly, Sid, it's like a kid in a sweet shop when it comes to damaged goods. Look, I said leave it be <laughs> and get out at road. Oh. I'll go finish this room off by myself. Oh, come on, Alf. It's nearly six o'clock. Come on. Ooh. Hey, you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Oh. Is this business with Tracy. I'm really at my wit's end over it. Do you know, I can't even go around there. What have I done that's so terrible my own daughter doesn't want to see me? Well, I wouldn't take any notice of that if I were you. She's just trying to appear independent in front of young fella, my lad, that's yeah, all. Maybe. Yes, I was just the same at her age, and so were you, I don't doubt. I mean, look, come on, look at her, look. She's not been out of school uniform five minutes and she's left home and shacked up with a lad. <laughs> Don't remind me. Well, she's just doing it for effect, Deirdre, honestly. I'll tell you something else, I know. I bet she's missing you just as much as you're missing her. Do you think so? Bound to be. If I could just go round there, you know, see how she's living and what this Craig's like. Love it. If it'll put your mind at rest, why don't you? Um, vodka and tonic, Jack, when you have a minute, please. No. Oh, and uh, I'll have a gin and tonic for Jenny. You bring it over. Thank you. Hello. Rita? I think I owe you an apology. I shouldn't jump to conclusions like I do. I am sorry. And I'm sorry for storming out like I did. It's just that sometimes I feel like everyone round here is against me. 
Thank you. Oh, sorry. This, uh, this offer of a quiet night in, is it still on? Yeah, of course it is. In fact, I was going to cook you dinner. I got everything this morning when I was in town and I got a nice bottle of wine. You shouldn't go wasting your wages like that. It's not a waste. It's just my little way of saying thank you for all the kindness you've shown me. Well, it sounds lovely. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. On the basis of what you've told me, I'd say we have a fair chance if we file on the grounds of unreasonable behaviour. Obviously, a lot depends on your wife's reaction. She may wish to challenge the petition. There are two sides to every story. Yeah, well, your guess is as good as mine, not Mr Lloyd. I mean, I've given up trying to fathom the workings of that wee girl's brain a long time since. If she does challenge, we may have quite a fight on our hands. Yeah, well, so be it. Mr. MacDonald, may I give you some advice? Go on ahead. I deal with a lot of divorce cases, and I'd say half the time the marriage could be saved if only the couple would sit down and talk to each other instead of talking to me. Aye, well, I think it's gone a wee bit past that by now. Not yet it hasn't, but once the gloves come off... What I'm trying to say, Mr. MacDonald, I'll only petition your wife for divorce if you're absolutely certain that's what you want. Hi, I'm certain. In that case, your wife will be hearing from me next week. Good night. Cheerio. Bloom, so that must be Sky, mustn't it, Rosie? Can you find another part at Sky? Is this it? Oh, mm -hmm. look after that. You will make a clever girl. You oh, you? come on, Sally. It's over an hour's drive away. You know that. Yeah. All right, I'll be down in a minute. <laughs> Hey, eh? So, where is this place you say you're going to? Well, according to the owner, it's a little Greek island. What? In the middle of Bolton. Oh, <laughs> you daft thing. Yeah. What, and you've been invited free? Yeah, well, it's a customer, isn't it, eh? Oh. The other week, I must have broke the world record for fixing a car. He was dead chuffed, so he invited me and Sally out for a slap-up meal, eh? On the house as oh, well, eh? Nice. Right, so you know where everything is if you need out, don't you? Look, Kevin will be fine, won't we, Rosie? Yeah, well, there's some milk in the fridge if she wakes up wanting a bottle. Oh. But only one, mind you. OK. Right. Hey, I thought you would have brought, don't we? I got some cans in special. Uh, yeah, well, he, he wanted to come. Uh, he did want to come, but uh, he's had to go to this do with his uh, cabbage, you know, and oh. uh, it's been arranged a long time. Oh, God, I hope we're not going to be late. They might give the table away. Sally! Come on! Hey, bye, eh? She don't half scrub up well, though, does I, Sal? I'll say that for her. Oh, hey. well, look at your mummy, Rosie. <laughs> Yeah. I'm looking for Tracy Barlow. Who are you? Her mother. Tracy, it's your mum. I'm Craig, by the way. Yes, I gathered that. I hope you know what you're doing. What's that supposed to mean? You know very well what it's supposed to mean. Tracy's still a kid. In your eyes, maybe. Can't you find a girl your own age to go out with? Well, do me a favour. I had the Spanish Inquisition yesterday. Yeah, well, now comes the official warning. If anything happens to Tracy while she's under this roof, I'm holding you personally responsible. What are you doing here? I just came to see how you are. I was worried about you. Well, you've no need to be. I can take care of myself. Yeah, well, I don't quite see it like that. I don't care how you see it. I told you my dad had opened his big gob, didn't I? Tracy, I couldn't go on not knowing where you were living. I had to... Do you mind if I have a word with Tracy on me off for a few minutes? No, Craig, stay where you are. Yeah, I'd rather not get involved in your little family feud. You've got no right coming here. Look, I don't know what point you think you're making, but it's gone too far. Look at the state of you. Look at the state of this place. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a hovel. Anyway, it's just a place to crash. I beg your pardon? We'd do it up if we were stopping, but it's a short let. Oh, Tracy. I know we've had our differences, but I'm sure we can sort it out. Why don't you come home? I wouldn't come home if you paid me. It'll all end in tears, you know. No, it won't. I mean it, Tracy. 
As soon as a girl his own age turns up, he'll be off like a shot. He can go off with whoever he likes, and so can I. We're both free agents. Oh, are you? And I wonder whose idea that was. I've had just about enough of this. You're coming home with me if I've got to drag you. Get drag off you. me! I never want to see you and me dad ever again. on Monday. Free wine for the first couple of dozen customers. Hey, Art, tell your mother, won't you? Hey, Art, grand opening on Monday. It's like hey, a man Art. possessed wine. Free I wine. ever think he were ready for yeah. retirement, huh? Alf. 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 Mail Pal. You know this grand reopening you're having? Is, is there going to be any ale there for the lads, you see? Because I find this red wine, you know, it gives me heartburn. Oh, yes, there are plenty of uh, ale, yes. Oh, great. Yes. In fact, there'll be free milk. Free beer, free bread, everything's good. I'm just hoping customers will come in, take what they want, and then go away without paying, you know. It's an idea I got from young Vera. <laughs> funny, yeah, they're I mean, not free for you, I'll tell you that. It's paying customers I want. Oh, thank you. Oh. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Give up! <laughs> Woo! Money, these things! Give all that! Get off! <laughs> Jew, what you having? Oh, better of a large whiskey, I think. Coming up. Still feeling a wee bit shaky, you know. Why? Well, I went to see a solicitor. Hey, hang on just a minute. You're not saying that I advised no, you. No, to... whatever. I just went to see a solicitor, that's all. Uh, do you want to take a wee seat? Absolutely delicious. Well, the one thing I'll say about living with Robert, I learned so much about entertaining. You know, I mean, he was forever inviting friends from the Rotary Club and work colleagues round. You couldn't just give them beans on toast. He meant a lot to you, didn't he, Robert? I thought we were forever, Rita, I did. And then he just announced he was going back to his wife. Not me sideways. I still don't think I've completely come to terms with it. You will, love. In time. It was just such a shock. It nearly sent me mad. I mean, all that business with Mitzi and... and not telling you the full story. What was I thinking of? Look, all that's behind you now. Just forget about it. But as long as you know how sorry I am, and that I'll never do anything like that to you ever again, Shall I clear plates now? Oh, no, there's pudding to come yet. Oh, I don't think I manage any more. It's only pavlova, it'll be ever so light. Oh, only a little spoonful then. <laughs> hey, be careful with that, you'll have me tiddly. Oh, get away with you, it's only one bottle. Anyway, tonight's my treat. It's an apology. And a sort of celebration. What are we celebrating? You'll have to wait and see. I was uh, just on my way to the Rovers. I noticed Tracy's light was on. I thought that. Perhaps... No, no, it was just me. Just getting rid of the rest of Tracy's stuff. Might as well, now she's gone for good. Oh, come on, Deirdre. You can't know that for certain. I'm afraid I do, Ken. I know you said I shouldn't, but I went round there. That's a big one, Bill. Large dummy, Yeah, large dummy. That's. You're a right Oh, stop moaning. Have an olive. Oh, my colleagues. Should have found somewhere else, you know. Found ourselves a proper restaurant. Can't afford a proper restaurant. 
I'm sorry it's a quite hard good here. Yeah. This car, what did it, you know? Big Mercedes. Must have been best part of 25 grand. So when he said he had a restaurant, I was expecting, you know, wine waiters, candlelit tables, <laughs> menus bound in leather. I certainly wasn't expecting plastic tablecloths and donna kebabs. <laughs> I'm sorry. Must have spoiled your night. You haven't. I just wanted it to be so special for you. As long as it's you and me, Kev, it is special. Don't matter where we are. Two special mix kebabs with salad and chips for two special people. Thank you. Here you are. Ah, and because this is your special day, I shall offer you my son, Philip, to serenade you. And you are a lucky lady, you are. Kevin is a good man and a great mechanic. Philippe, Ella Peredo Buzuki. <laughs> Take a holiday, go to Cyprus, the island of Aphrodite. Yeah. Eh? Enjoy your meal. You will do. Thank you. Mmm! Hey, do you know what? This is really nice. Hey, you're right. It's really nice, isn't it? It's gorgeous. Mm. Look at the people stood at the counter, staring at us. <laughs> Just like we're members of the royal family travelling round incognito. <laughs> Well, it was the owner of the place where I had my facial done that gave me the idea. You know, we got chatting, and when I told her what I did, she said I should open my own place. She reckoned I'd clean up with my experience. Well, first, you know, I thought she was just out to flatter a customer. But then afterwards, I just happened to be passing the estate agents, and there it was. I just look at it, Rita. It's perfect. It's already kitted out. And the location is fantastic. Slap bang in the middle of one of the wealthiest areas in Lancashire. And make a mint. And you want me to lend you £30,000 to help to buy it? Well, 20 for the deposit on the business and 10 for start-up costs, but I've already told you it wouldn't be a loan. It'd be me and you in a partnership together. A proper business partnership. All worked out by solicitors and everything. I mean, just think what it would mean, Rita. You and me as a team. And I'd be doing what I want to do more than anything else in the world. And I'd be able to put Robert and... All the terrible things that have happened right behind me. Make a new start. So what do you think, Rita? Thanks, yeah, love. Thanks Look, I understand your motives for going round there, but you must have known what kind of reception you'd oh, get. I don't know. I think I've managed to convince myself she'd be glad to see me. I certainly didn't think I'd finish up losing my temper. Yeah, I just came as a bit of a shock when you first walked into the place. When she came in, it was as if she wanted me to know they'd been in bed together. It's all my fault, you know. Oh, come on, dearie. Let's not start talking about blame. Well, what sort of an example have I set her? If anything happens to her, if she, she goes and gets herself pregnant or something, I'll never forgive myself. Well, how long is it going to be before she hears from my solicitor? I don't know. A few days, a week. And what happens when it goes to court? I don't know. Uh, listen, are you going to have another one? On one condition. What? That for the last hour of drinking time we talk about something other than your divorce. All right, right. I'll not go on about it, I promise you. It's a big deal, I know that. I've been through it. But you can't let it rule your life. No, I won't. You're right. What are you going to have? No, I'll get it, Scotch, is it? Oh, go on ahead, then I will lie. Oh, do you know, I am wasted as an hairdresser. I should have been an agony aunt. Dear Denise. Uh, scotch and gin and tonic, please. Right. Here, Denise, come here. Just one more thing. Uh, the business about this affidavit. Oh, I'd forgotten about that. There's even planning permission for another floor. I'm sorry, Jenny. The answer's no. No? Well, I know you mean well, and I'd love to help you out, but it's such a big step. You don't know the first thing about running a business. You, but that's where you come in, Rita. Look, listen, let's just talk straight with each other. Never mind all this talk about partnerships and investment. You want me to lend you £30,000. And you're saying you won't? No. Fine. 
Well, what about if you give me half the money, maybe I could borrow the rest of the bank? No, Jenny. Well, why not? What else are you going to do with it? I think that's my business, don't you? Great. Great. Another brilliant idea down the drain. It's not right, you know. I've had just as much unhappiness as you have. No one's saying you haven't. Yeah, but every time something happens to you, you always manage to profit from it. Jenny, what an awful thing to oh, say. What am I left with? Nothing. Not a penny. Oh, I've got ideas and I've got energy. I've got my whole life ahead of me. But I'm trapped for the one of a few thousand lousy quid. And there's you. All that money and what do you do with it? Nothing. You don't even go on holidays. You don't buy clothes. You just sit on it. Yes. And that's what I'll carry on doing until the day I die, when it'll go to a good cause and you, madam, won't see one penny of it. Oh, but hang on. If it's only money you came back for, can't let you go away empty-handed, can I? What are you doing? I'm writing you a cheque. Oh, not for as much as you would have liked, but enough to set you off somewhere else. Yeah. Take it. I'm going to bed now. When I get up in the morning, you'd better not still be here. You should have one saying under old management. Hey, not so much <laughs> the old. You know, I got up this morning and it felt as if ten years had dropped off me. <laughs> what do you think of the new sign? Yeah, very nice, yeah. Ah, it wants to be the money it cost and all. Oh, there'll be a few drinkies if you want to pop in later on. Oh, right, thanks. I'll see how I yeah, go. Cheers. Well, I've been caught in the time war. Oh, I think that's what I am. That's why I can't cope with all these changes, like my daughter leaving home. Oh. I think I might go and see Maggie, see if she can say any light on things. Maggie? Well, she's an employer. She sees more of Tracy than we do. No? Would you rather I didn't? Oh, I don't suppose it'll do any harm. Enjoy your first day back. <laughs> Thanks. And this is it. This punky little terrace house. Yeah. With no garden. In a rotten, run-down area. Yeah, well, that's not what matters. Well, it's what matters to me. <gasps> this is a dump, Joe. Face it, it's a dump. Yeah, well, look. Mm. Right, bye-bye. Why are you borrowed always there? Oh, wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to go to work? You could just stop at home all day. No. No? We'd get on each other's nerves, wouldn't we? No, we wouldn't. See? We started already. So I went. Hey, and I'm only joking. Mm. See ya. Oh, we've had such bye -bye. a lovely weekend as well. Of course we have. But you can only have weekends oh. if you have weekdays. That's what makes them weekends, isn't That's it? That's true. Are you going to be a good girl for you, ma'am? Hello, hello, Jonathan. Yeah. Come on, down you go. Yeah. Hey, uh, allow me to introduce uh, Sally Hazel. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi there. I'm Kevin. How do you do? Hello. And uh, I'm just going to work, so sorry about that. <laughs> See you now. Bye. See you, mm -hmm. See you later. Yeah. The thing is that I'm going away for a day or two, so Hazel will be bringing John and collecting him. If that's all right by you. Yeah, of course it is. Well, at least tell her who I am. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Hazel's my wife. Oh. Yeah, she went last night. But why? I mean, I know there was that business with the dog, but I thought you'd put that behind you. Well, so did I, but anyway, I didn't feel easy with her. Not anymore. Oh, dear. Because you and Jenny used to be like mother and daughter. Well, they don't always get on, do they, mother and daughter? I suppose not. Anyway, never mind her mother. It were her father she were beginning to remind me of. Oh. Wanting money off me to set her up in business. Well, I couldn't be doing with that, could I? Morning, Al. Oh. Oh, hello, love. Uh, have you got any plastic cups? Uh, yes. How many do you want? Uh, about 100, please. 
Yeah, I used to sell them myself, you know, but I don't have time to get restocked. Well, you won't have. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm putting a few bottles of wine on for the grand reopening, so I thought I'd better give them something to drink out of. Oh, well, <laughs> you had. And are we having a brass band and the such like? <laughs> That's £3.50. No, no, no. No, the Gazette is sending a photographer around, but I don't want to do a summer dance uh -huh. like. You will pop in for a glass, though. A cup. A cup, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Uh, Mavis, um, that about Jenny. It's for your ears only. Oh, of course. Anybody else ask? Uh, she was just visiting anyway, and I was very sorry to see her go. And uh, while I'm out... Yes? What do I say to anybody who wants to give me any rubbish? Oh, why should they do that? Well, to pass on to you, just in case you're having all these car boot sales. Oh, uh, just tell them thank you, but I don't know when the next one will be. Well, you're not very good, then, because you've not said much about it. Not as good as we'd hoped, no. Oh, what a shame, and all that hard work you put in. Well, I was just a helper. You, you really mustn't talk as though I instigated the whole thing. No, but a, a very enthusiastic helper, no less. And, I mean, it's not even your church. I did it as a favour to Bernard. And what was it for? Did you say uh, the church organ fund? It was, yes. Mm, well, happen people think there's more important things they can give their money to these days. Anyway, I'll get off or it's still fine. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thanks, love. Uh, now, Denise, have a glass of wine before you go. Do I have to? <laughs> well, you do unless you've got a doctor's note. Oh, I'm well. sorry, we're supposed to be celebrating. Hey, 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 what are you doing? We're not opening them yet. Because it's not the official opening. We don't open till dinner time. Oh, I can't wait till then. Give mine to somebody else. <gasps> Bye. Right, oh, Alf, don't be so silly. Of course we're all. Do you think we're in a dream, eh? Do you think we're in a dream, dear? Well, I sometimes wouldn't. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right. But look, don't just give it to anybody. Make sure they're spending something first. Oh. Morning. Hi, Morning, dear. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Roberts. <laughs> Councillor Roberts, whatever they call you. Yes. Um. Well, would I be right in thinking that, you know, this debt that Mr Scott bought of ours off yes, you? Yes, yes. You know, when he yeah, bought yeah, this yeah, shop? Yeah, Well, now he's passed over. Does that mean that our debt's passed over and all? Well, I suppose, speaking legally, that could be said to be so. Great. Hey, sir, so we don't owe anybody out then? Well, not unless you feel some sort of moral obligation. I mean, I was out of pocket, after all. I don't worry, love. No, we're going to make it up to you. Oh. Me and our Jack we want you to know we don't owe grudges. We're going to start shopping here again. Do you want a drink, Vera? Oh, cheers. Hey, I wouldn't mind a gin if you've got one. <laughs> you know Joe, who's Jonathan's dad? Oh, the one who, uh... The one who, yes. Oh, the one who what? Well, he turned up this morning with his wife. No! Yes. Oh, and should he not have done? Yeah. No. They're supposed yeah. to be yeah. separated. Oh. Well, happen they're not anymore. Oh, I know. Wouldn't that be marvellous? <laughs> Would it? Well, uh, it's just let me off the hook, that's so. all. Why? Oh, use your imagination, Alma. I haven't got any imagination. He fancies Sally. Oh! That's done for months. Which is why he arranged for us all to go to the Lake District on holiday together. And you've known about this all along? And you've not told me? I was sworn to silence. Do you know, I think that is really mean, is that? I mean, I always tell you everything, no matter what I'm sworn to. So how are you going to find out if she is back with him? Well, she's coming to pick up Jonathan this afternoon. So, I'm going to have a word with her. Pint of orange juice, Jack. Go if you don't mind. I don't mind so as long as I've not got a sup it. What would you like, then? I'll follow your good example and have a slimline. Slimline. Come on. Well, I'll give you my opinion on Jenny, now she's gone. Yeah? yeah. Well, I think she definitely changed. And not for the better. She seemed to me impatient. You know, as if she were eaten up with the desire to have everything all at once. And I don't think she'd be too fussy how she got it. I think you could have been saved a lot of heart there. Yeah. Do you want to sit down? Yeah, go on. <coughs> so, what's going on with them two, then? What? Don and... Uh... The hairdresser. Oh, give over, you're barking up the wrong tree there, lovey. Come on. He's a married lad, he's done, isn't he? Aye, so are you. Now, if you were sitting there having a drink with her, hmm. what'd be going through your mind? Yeah. And it won't be any different for Don. Hmm. There you are. Tell her. Now, you sure you can manage it this month? A lot better than I could manage a bank man. I am grateful, you know. Well, that's what we're here for, isn't it? To help each other. 
You love a glass of wine, won't you, Kevin? Help us celebrate the great day. Well, yeah, go on. I'll have a glass of red wheat, oh, please. Yeah. Quite frankly, I don't think there's a lot of difference. One's as bad as another. Mm. Uh, yeah, I notice you've not been back for a second. I've been rationing myself. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Strong stuff. Yes, well, I think it owes more to the petrochemical industry than to any vineyard. No, it's no good. It says I look daft by myself. Well, yes, I've told you that many a time. No, no, I mean, what we need is a crowd out there, see? Would you mind going outside so we can get this photograph? Yes, I do mind. I'm not making a spectacle of myself going in the newspapers. You're not? No, I'm quite happy where I am, thank you. No, don't look at me, Alf. I'm all right as well, thanks. Deirdre, would you mind? No. Well, she's no choice, has she? I mean, you're paying her. It'll only take a minute. <laughs> oh, what's going on? We were going to do some shopping. Oh, well, you can't yet, cos shop's not open. Of course it's open. It's been open all morning. But not officially. Alf's got to make a speech. Oh, right. Now, you've got to listen to this, you two. Uh, I'm all right here. Oh, hang on. Let's just straighten your time. Oh, come right. here, Bob. Uh, hang on. Right. Uh, oh, right. come I... on, Alf. I'm Get all right, on Terrific. Yeah. Look, I'm not making a proper speech. God! Shh. Uh, it's just for the photographer, this, but if I've got to say something, I may as well tell the truth. And that is that Audrey and I are very happy to be back in harness in this shop, serving the community. Oh, yeah, Alf, for what? No, he's getting, trying to get these pictures here. Come on. What's that you're drinking? Mm, don't ask. I say, do you mind? Look, can we just shut this door for a minute? It won't take a minute. Oh. <sighs> uh, now, we, we've been very grateful for your custom in the past, and we hope it will prove worthy of your support in the future. Well, you will if you're quick. Yeah, and now it's my great pleasure to... to uh, without further ado, I declare this shop well and truly open. Missed her. Oh, well, that's not a bad thing. What I wanted was a private word with you, uh, if you don't mind. What about? Oh, uh, about Tracy, yeah. Oh. Well, you know what's happened. And that her mother and I are very worried. Um, how does she seem to you? Okay. Just okay? Yeah. Has she said anything about what her plans are? Not really, no. Or how she feels about this lad, this uh, Craig. Look, Ken, just hang on a minute. Tracy's my employee. I'm not sure I should be spying on her for you and Deirdre. Nobody's asking you to spy. Well, it's sounding very much like it. No, I'm simply asking if you can help. And would you want Tracy to know we were talking like this? I'd rather she didn't, no. No. Well, I'd rather she didn't either. And you know why? Because she's a very good worker. And I wouldn't like to lose her because she got the idea that everything she said to me was going to go straight back to her parents. See? Sorry. So what you're really saying is, so long as you've got your shop running like a well-oiled clock, you really don't give a damn what might be happening to anybody else. What I'm saying is she's your daughter. If you've got any problems with her, you solve them. Don't come trying to involve me. Don't worry, I won't. Not any more. Good. Oh, cheers then, Alf. Uh, all the best, eh? Cheers. You don't have to pretend to like it, Zom. Uh, no, no, it, it's all right. It's, I uh... think it's very good, is this? There's a lot of snobbery about wine, you know? Oh, well, I think it can be safely said that you are leading the fight against that. Actually, I feel like a cup of tea. Do you feel like a cup of tea? Yes, please. Uh, well, I'll leave it, cos I'm supposed to be driving. Oh. See ya. Bye, Don. 65 feet, please. Next. Yeah, well, I didn't really want to. I only came in to see what was going on. I'll tell you what's going on. We're having an official reopening. So, would you like back to join us a glass of wine? Yes, thank you. Let's change you serving me. Aye, it does, doesn't it? And I'm sure we're all very pleased to hear you're open again. I hope you're going to be so for a long time to come. Oh, that's very nice of you to say so, oh. Now then, Emily, tell us. Have you managed to defrock this vicar of yours yet, then? 
beg your pardon? I've been hearing rumours you've got a vicar in tow. I do have a friendship with a gentleman who happens to be a vicar. I don't think that counts as having him in tow. Oh, so there's no defrocking gone on yet, then? I'm sorry, I'm not continuing this conversation. If you can keep that by for me, I'll collect it later. Of course we will, love. Thank you. Oh, dear. Did I say something delicate? No, no, she's just a bit oversensitive. Uh, she always was, you know. Uh, anyway, get that down your neck. Thank you. So, how does it feel to be back then, Cocker? Oh, great. I don't know why I even thought about retiring. I must have been out of my head. So, you're going to be doing all the fetching and carrying then for the next few days? I will, yes. While Joe's away? Yes. It's quite nice when you can, well, you know, help each other out. Uh, isn't it? And it's nice for Jonathan having both of you instead of just the one. Well, I'm uh, not altogether sure about that. No? I think it's a bit of a shock for him having me around again. Oh, well, he'll get used to it. They're very adaptable, aren't they, children? So, if I have him here for what? Uh, nine o'clock tomorrow? Yeah, any time, because we're always up. Right. Well, thank you. Come on, Jonathan. Hey, I said, come on. Hey, oh, you going? Uh, we are, yes. Oh. I'll, I'll just see you out. Out. Look. Hiya, I'll Rosie. Hiya. Has your man been a good girl today, eh? No. No? Ha <laughs> ha. Fancy you telling me that. You're telling little tales on your mum, eh? Not for well! Nothing. What? Guess who that was? Well, didn't she say a name this morning? Hazel, I'm not talking about a name. That's Joe's wife. Yeah? His wife that he's supposed to be separated from. So? So, he brings her out here this morning and says she's going to be looking after Jonathan for the next few days. So what's wrong with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. I just want to know what it means. Means? Oh, do you know I don't know what you've been doing today, but you've come on really stupid. <laughs> Does it mean they're getting back together again? No, I don't know. Ask her. Well, I can't, can I? Not directly. Why not? Because I can't. Oh, do you know I don't know why they bother talking to you. I get more sense talking to Rosie. Yeah, we'll talk to Rosie then, eh? I've been doing that all day. I want a change. So, anyway, I say to this Hazel, would you like a cup of tea? And she says, no, she can't because she hasn't got time. And then I said to her, well, it must be really nice for Jonathan having you around again. And she doesn't reply to that either. It's like trying to get blood out of a stone. Yeah, well, it's their business, isn't it? It's not to do with us. Well, it's partly ours. I mean, I look after Jonathan, don't I? Yeah, but it doesn't mean to say you're responsible for the state of their marriage. No, but I just want to know, that's all. I was thinking of planting a tree in the front garden. Oh, no, Dickie. Why not? Give a focal point to the front of the house? Yes, and its roots will develop and undermine the foundations and its branches will block out every bit of daylight and plunge us into eternal darkness. If it were a Canadian redwood, yes. But surprisingly enough, I was thinking more on the lines of another dwarf conifer. Don't know why you're thinking of anything at all. No, well, all right, forget it. Let's talk about something else. How was your day? I was all right. Oh, oh except, would you believe Jenny's left? I don't know about believing it. I can't say I'm sorry. No, but Rita said uh, she asked me not to tell anybody, so you won't tell anybody, will you? Who would I tell? But she said that Jenny was after her money, just the way that Alan was. Well, he didn't get very far, did he? A tram car named Bispam North did for him. Oh, you're very cynical all of a sudden. I know you're very fond of Rita. Yes, I am. But I have to say it. For somebody who's supposed to have had such a hard life, she's ended up with more money than the Bank of England. And nothing to spend it on except her own creature comforts. You sound as if you envy her. If I had Rita's money, if I had a third of Rita's money, well, I'd... Well, I'd plant a whole woodland out there for a start. Birch trees, beech trees, the odd oak. But as it is, without Rita's fortune, I'm quite happy to settle for a single dwarf conifer. Hey, I hope you're not opening that for me. Will you drink it? Don't worry. I'm opening this for whoever comes in next. We've nearly an hour before we close. Oh, what was that film, The Longest Day? Was that about the opening of a shop? <laughs> no, it was about Nazi-occupied Europe. Well, they got the title wrong. It should have been about the opening of a shop. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. Here, come on, let me top you up. Um, oh, just a little bit, then. So you're happy to be back, are you, Alf? Oh, I am, love. I am very happy. Well, you would be. I mean, this is the hippopotamus coming back to his warm lagoon. Hi. Hey, Ray. Hey, Ray. Hello. Hey, Ray. Hi. Hello, Ken. Have a glass of wine. Uh, oh, right. Well, thank you. I was really planning on taking your assistant away from me, though, uh, if you don't mind. Well, you can do that. You have a glass of wine as well. Oh. Slip through and oh, get right. me coke. Okay. Um, now, you 
go to evening classes on wine tasting, don't you, Ken? Uh, used to do, yeah. Now, come on. Is this from the north or the south end of the vineyard? Or third option, is it from the north or the south end of some toxic dump reclamation scheme? <laughs> hey, now, give all, but it's not that bad. <laughs> all right, so, Alf, how's it gone then, first day back? Oh, he doesn't know if it's his first or his last day anymore. It's gone very well, Ken. It's amazing the number of people who said they were very glad to see us back here. Oh, I'm sure they are. Ah, right, well, um, we'll be off then. I won't be far behind you, actually. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Oh, do you know, you must have drunk 50% of that. Well, you've got to drink with your customers. You have it to do. And a half a flag of beer. This is kind of you. Oh, bang your drink. Ah, oh, spending time with me. I know I'm not the greatest company right now. Come on, we're not here to tell jokes to one another. So what happened? Did you see my gift? Yeah, I, uh, Let's, uh, wait till we sit down. 197, please. Right, yeah, yeah. And how's that little lad of yours, then? Uh, well, he's hardly little, is he? Anyway, I have his babysitting, you know, to give me a breather, like. Well, I'll hold my hands up to you, Vera. Takes some doing bringing up a kiddie like that. Couldn't do any other, could I? Even now, Hi, uh, can I have a gentleman, please? So, anyway. Yeah, well, I went to see her. It wasn't very cooperative, I'm afraid. It seemed to think we were asking her to spy on Tracy for it. I'd ask her if I thought she'd do it. Yeah. Anyway, said so Tracy was all right. In fact, she was very impressed with her work in the shop. So is that good or bad, do you think? How do you mean? Well, that everyone else finds her OK to deal with. They all find her a, a normal 16-year-old, except me. All Maggie's doing is employing her. It's a much easier relationship than being a mother. Well, can I not employ her, then? Can I not pay her to be nice to me? I'm sorry. I'm stupid. OK. Did Maggie say anything else? No, he told me to my face. He said, look, it was Scott's debt. And now Scott's dead. Well, the debt's gone with him. Well, we're not complaining about that, love. Yeah, but I were thinking, you know, Alf Roberts, well, he's got to retire sometime, hasn't he? So I were thinking, well, we could do it again. Well, run up another debt. Yes, only this time. Well, it could be thousands. It don't matter, does it, if we're not going to pay it? Oh. Oh, hi. Oh, can I have another one, please, sir? Of course you can. That flaming shop. I feel as if I've been there since the beginning of time, dishing out rotten wine and smiling at folk. What are you talking about? You've only just reopened. Oh, no, it were a mistake. What? We should have stayed retired, gone to Lytham. Oh, Audrey. Listen, he has gone straight back to how he was before, obsessed with the place. Oh, I had to get out. I couldn't stand being near him. Oh, bless you, Beth. Cheers. Sorry I couldn't get across earlier, Al. It's always a great pleasure to see you. <laughs> well, I heard you had a bit of an opening ceremony. Well, I said a few words like that. I'll tell you something, though. It means more to me, you being here, than all the others put together. Hey, don't start all that again, Alf. You ended up proposing to me last time we reopened this oh, shop. Did I? What do you say? Well, I think I must have said no. Oh, that's a shame. Why did you? Why did you say no? I don't remember, Alf. It's all a long time ago. Yeah, well, I'll tell you something now, and I mean this in all honesty and sincerity. Actually, I've come to do a bit of shopping, Alf. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you turned me down. I am. Because I'd have been a lot happier with you, Rita. Hey, Alf. I mean, instead of Audrey. You see, Audrey, me. We're just about make a go of it, that's all. Just about make a go of it. Well, that's more than some folk do. Yeah, but it's a miserable sort of a marriage, Rita. Miserable. Whereas you and me... Oh, never mind you and me. It's too late for all that. No, Alf. no, it's never too late. Now then, I could leave Audrey... Hey, why don't I do that? I'll leave Audrey and I'll come and live with you. Yeah. Oh, Talov. Oh, I didn't feel this bad when I woke up this morning. You were still drunk then, that's why. Oh, dear. So no free wine entertainment today, then? Why, what was the entertainment? Oh, you were, Al. Oh. Don't know how much of that wine you gave away. Oh, I don't know. Phyllis had her share. She was in and out of here buying spuds one at a time. Oh, I'm surprised she wasn't inebriated as well, then. Mm. Was pretty far gone, was I? You were completely pie-eyed, wasn't it, Adrian? Yeah, well, I've got the symptoms now, all right. Oh. Well, at least you're still alive to regret it. Uh, je ne regret rien, ah. Don't you? I do. I regret everything. And I haven't even got a hangover. Oh. If he wants to make a fool of himself, he can. Needn't think I'm running after him with the aspirin. Yes, but I thought you were happy the way that things had turned out, Andre. Happy? Oh, I'm lovely. I'm not looking to be happy. I'd settle for not being unhappy. Oh, it sounds a bit dismal, does not that? Sounds to me like your mother's showing signs of maturity at last. <laughs> oh, they can go on. You can laugh. Wasn't laughing. 
I know y'all think that Alf is the down-to-earth one, the practical one, the Mr. How many beans make five one. I'm supposed to have nothing in my head but great paper and fantasies. Can't hear anybody contradicting you. Yeah. <laughs> well, people know nothing. It's all nonsense, is that? Alf is the dreamer. I am the practical one. <laughs> yeah, go, all right. You can laugh. You can laugh. But I mean, come on. Now, this retiring to the seaside, what was all that about? I mean, to do what? Build sandcastles. That, that we're all dreaming. I mean, he hadn't thought about the practicality of that for one minute. But Audrey, I mean, a lot of people do retire to the seaside. Yes, and mostly wish they hadn't, I bet. But they don't admit it, hmm? No. We've had a very lucky escape, and it's all down to me being practical. Look, Alf saw the chance of making a few bob and getting the shop back cheap. Yes, but he wouldn't have done that if it hadn't been for me. Man, you were gobsmacked when he told you. Because I didn't know that I'd got through to him, did I? Eh? I mean, it's all very well chasing dreams, but I mean, you've got to be where you know people. Not sat at the end of the prom waiting for the band to stop playing once and for all. I mean, you've got to be where at least you may have just a little bit of hope of some kind of life after tea time. You know, I thought those places were famous for life after tea time. Look. If they've retired to a bungalow because they can't manage them stairs, they're not going to be gearing up them stairs much, are they? Even if they've got on it. When you think it's very handy as that shop, we'd have missed it. So it seems. You've been over there long enough. Not where I'd call instant coffee. I've been talking to Alf. Oh, dear. Morning after the night before. Bad, is he? I knew he would be. Oh, well, from what I hear, he's every right to be. What did you hear? Well... You saw him yourself. He was well gone. I did, but, I mean, uh, was there anything to hear about especially? No, no. He wasn't dancing naked in the fountains or anything? <laughs> oh, dear. Sights the world could do without. It is cruel, is drink. I mean, one day you've everything to celebrate, the next day you're so afflicted you can't remember what it was. Never believe them when people say they can't remember. It means they can only too well. I've known you to say you couldn't remember that. Mm, now you know why. <laughs> Amnesia born of shame, sickness, horror, self-disgust. The drinker's companions down the ages. Anyone would think you'd signed the pledge, Derek. I believe I did once. It was only so I could go on the Sunday school outing. I think I'm quoting the words of Miss Brocklebank. Well, if Miss Brocklebank were to come by here today, I think she'd have a good chance of signing Alf up. It's a mystery to me why he was celebrating any road. He's only wound up exactly where he was to start with and demonstrated the poverty of his imagination. Uh, Mavis, uh, Derek tells me he's persuaded you to plant a... Uh, what is it? A garden? Oh, yes, a little juniper. What do you think? Or maybe a wall of Lelandii. Hey, that had screen barns out all right. There can be very funereal can evergreens. Well, that's why I thought of a little juniper or a blue cedar. It would be just the thing. I like the tall cypresses in the right setting. Ah, the rolling domains, the acres of park and sward. But not in a little bijou garden like ours. No. Twenty years down the road, you'll be living in perpetual night. Twenty years down the road, we'll all be in perpetual night. I've read about that. I was thinking of the lifespan of a tree. I was thinking of the lifespan of red-haired women in paper shops. You know, she's got eyed like a rhinoceros, that woman. You know what I'm talking about, of course. There's no point in trying to be tactful with her. No point at all. Oh, dear, and tact's usually your strong point, isn't it? Oh, good morning, Vicar. Good morning. By it, you're getting your toe caps on the table, aren't you? Mr Sugden's even developed his own special form of tact. Well, I happen to be passing. What, twice in a week? Yeah, because I think one of us is not long for this world. Born to a different class, he'd have risen in the diplomatic service. Is there any tea left in that pot? I don't believe there is, Mr. Well, Sutton. make some fresh. You needn't bother for us. Uh, you'll be our church yourself, of course. Well, if these distinctions still mean anything. Well, I was always CV on church bread, and Mrs. Bishop here has always been uh, chapel. Yes, I know. It was a lay preacher, you know. That's right, isn't it, Mrs. Bishop? If it's relevant. Yes, ah, uh, yes. Uh, quite a different school of thought. Really? Well, you should know that. Chalk and cheese. Do you know, I don't often meet anyone who's actually interested in theology, Mr. Sugden. Well, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't actually say I was interested, you know, not as such. Well, perhaps without knowing. It's something I'd really appreciate having uh, a good talk about. Well, well, not today. No, I'm afraid not. No, I'm going to pop back in for my library book. If you wanted to take your tea early tonight, Mr. Sugden, that would be quite convenient. 
Oh, would it? Well, Bernard will be coming round this evening, so I should be ignoring tea and having a bit of supper later, when you'll probably be out. Oh, will I? It's your Legion night. Well, I think it'd better be. Uh, you, uh, you left your change this morning. Oh, Alf, you need to come all the way over with it. Oh, well, exercise will do me good, eh? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, morning. Morning, Al. Oh, you are still speaking to me then? I shouldn't tell you. Well, I hope you are anyway. If you're sober. No, listen, look, if, if I embarrassed you... Uh, look, you will if you go on, otherwise... Oh, well, I won't go on then. Promise. I promise. <laughs> oh, by the way, I've got some of that night's uh, ham you like, you know, so I'll put some by for you. Uh, right, yeah. OK. Uh, anyway, i better get off, cos uh, Deirdre will be complaining. Yeah, yeah Al. <clears throat> What was all that about? Oh, so much of nothing. He wasn't rude to you yesterday, was he? Well, sometimes people are, aren't they? You know, without them realising it. There it go, Mavis. You're a mile away. Oh, sorry, I am. It's nature's way. What? They're paying us back. For all the times we had our mothers tearing their hair out. Remember? We did, didn't we? If you reminded me what I was like at that age, it isn't necessarily encouraging. No. But what's encouraging is, we're all still here. Is that encouraging? Well, will you, Luke? He's on his feet again. I heard all about you yesterday. Yeah, I heard all about you and all. Oh, well, I was as sober as a judge all day. Me tell well gone closing time, any road. Yeah, hi. But you're warning about me giving free wine away. Who told you that? Ah, uh, never mind. Ah, that was just early on when I thought you were giving away the good stuff. Once they started coming in for something to take the taste away, I forgave you entirely. <sighs> I know it's probably awkward for you. No, it's all right. But the hours I work, it's difficult to know when I'll drop him off. And today it was better for me to bring in that bit later. No, honestly, just as long as I knew. And I've had more time with him. Well, I'm certainly glad to see you doing that. I know. Everybody thinks I'm terrible. Well, I'm not passing comments. Nobody has to write it on a placard for me. I'm unnatural. I know that. It's just something that I don't understand, that's all. No. You think walking out on your kid? I couldn't do that. I could never do that. Look, you don't have to explain all this to me. Oh, yes, I do. Well, I want to. I'm not so weird I don't want to, you know. Thank you for everything you've done for him. Well, I'm just keeping him in out of the rain, that's all. No. You've been very good for him. I'm glad. Thanks. So does this all mean that <coughs> well, you and Joe might be getting back together again? <laughs> it couldn't happen. Oh. Well, you never know. You might surprise yourself. Are you claustrophobic? You know, where you go balmy, if you like, in a little tunnel or a cave or anywhere sort of confined. Because if you were, you wouldn't go back to live in a wardrobe, would you? No, I don't suppose I would. He's got himself a girlfriend at last, anyway. I'm glad of that. Has he? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm really pleased for him. Oh, he's been going on about her since we've been talking again. Oh, I hope she's nice. Oh, she's wonderful. Well, he's never mentioned her. They probably just met. Oh, they're a bit past holding hands, far as I can make out. Do you think it might be serious? Oh, it already is. He went up to the Lake District with her on holiday when he went. So, I mean. That looks pretty steady, doesn't it? And he's obviously besotted with her, you know, and she's wonderful with Jonathan and everything. I mean, you've got a rival there. <laughs> No, it's a very good tree. Why are you spanking it? I'm not spanking it. I'm planting it. This is a very, very good tree. And one day, it'll be as tall as you are. That's not big for the tree. It's big for this tree, because it's a dwarf tree. It's a very special kind of tree, this. In fact, can you keep a secret? This is a magic tree. Why is it magic? Well, because it's a dwarf tree. And if you're very nice to it, 
and don't upset it in any way. You might find treasure here. What kind of treasure? Oh, dolly mixtures, diamonds, anything. <laughs> Children. You know, when you get onto their level, they're surprisingly grown up, really. Maybe. Didn't quite catch your opinion of you. <laughs> you might have something there. Didn't know I was an electrical genius, did you? I didn't know I had a way with children. I used to believe in something once, I think, didn't I? Well, the only thing I've ever believed in was having a good time. Oh, well, maybe that's as good as hotels. Oh, no, there must be something more to life. Times are certainly an hell of a lot less. Oh, there is, if you go chucking it all away. Oh, Deidre, come on. Well, it's all right. You're not going to get the story of my life. You know my daughter's left home. Well, they do. I was running away from home by the minute. She's 16. They know nothing. More than you think. Well, yes, she does know one thing, and that's that she doesn't want me telling her what to do. Do you know what that's like? I was that age myself once. We've all been kids. Yeah, well, maybe it's when you've had them yourself. I once had a fling with a fella who had horses. Oh, well, that'd be relevant. Nouveau riche, I suppose you call him. <laughs> oh, I, I thought he was a gypsy. No, and he never told me my fortune either, but he did tell me something about catching horses in a field. Do I need to know? Yes. And the main thing is, you don't go rushing about after them. Show them the sugar lump, not the halter. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. I am not rushing about after her, and I'm sick of doling out the bloody sugar lumps. She's had it, as far as I'm concerned. Had it. She can do what she likes. I've done my best with that girl, and if that's not good enough, well, it's not good enough. She can damn well stew. Not the first, not the last. He was a lay preacher, then, your husband? Yes. And when he wasn't preaching? He was a photographer. <laughs> not exactly Cecil Beaton, but he was a good photographer. Just not a wonderful businessman. That's why, in the end, he was working in a wages office. There must be times when you still feel angry, I should think. Mm. Sometimes very bitter rage against the stupidity of it. The stupidity? It wasn't much money. It wouldn't have lasted them very long. They stole what they couldn't take away, couldn't use, what was no use to them. It was so much. All the years we might have had together. It's the stupidity of it. I begin to think we should call it that, instead of evil. I mean, the idea of evil with a capital E has a certain glamour, and after all, it's just really stupidity. Aren't they different things? You might have some hope of forgiving the stupidity. I'm still trying, but only God could forgive the evil. I know I never will. Nothing evil has ever happened to me. I remember the bombing during the war. Not far from Coventry was where we lived. We thought that was the work of evil and... Does it matter? Well, it does if you wanted to do some good with your life. And then you approach retirement and you find that, after all, you've just been an old-fashioned sort of bells and smells vicar, as your lodger would no doubt say if he weren't so conspicuously tactful. And you haven't even been tackling the right enemy. I wouldn't let Mr. Sugden pass judgment on your life and work. No, I do. And what's it all add up to? An awful lot of turning up at the expected time and place and saying the expected thing. And saying it very well. And very movingly in the instance I heard. That's the job. Young people need it and appreciate it. I heard what people were saying afterwards. It's all part of the job. Yes, it is. And you do it very well. No. Too easily. And to a rapidly shrinking audience. Is this a crisis of faith? Or just of confidence? Oh, I'm not sure. 
I mean, every Christian can imagine himself on his deathbed saying, Oh, God, I've been really bad. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. But I don't want to find myself on my deathbed saying, Oh, God, I've been really stupid. <laughs> Oh, you need help. <laughs> yes. Yes. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good See you later. Don't forget our windows this week. That's life, isn't it? Are you stopping? Mind if I don't, love. I'm up early in the morning. Another time, love. Good night, Elf. Night, God bless you. Good night. Good night, night everybody. You. Thank you. Good night, Rich. Good night, Alf. Night, Alf. Alf, I said good night. Good night, Alf. Hey? Good night. Oh, all right. All right. How are we done, Jack? We are that love, I time to skip. You in a rush? That is a wet on. Tanya? Yeah? You having one with us? I thought you wanted to get off the bed. You don't have to rub it in, love. Ah, oh, well, I know what you mean. No, you don't, love. Not yet. And I hope you never do. Is this going to be a very jolly drink, is it? You know, I don't know why he's asking. He doesn't mind whether he drinks at a wake or a wedding, <coughs> as long as he's got a drink. Am I right, Jack? You've got a very low opinion of me, haven't you? Yeah. Help yourself to a whiskey and stop asking daft questions. I've had a bar full of miseries and no opers in here tonight. Aye, well, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Oh, aye. And where do us no opers go then? No, oh, you are down tonight. You're not a no oper, you're somebody. I mean, you're a landlady, you've got your own pub. You're famous around here, you are. Am I? Yes, you certainly are. Oh, I, I mean, when I go out and about and folk ask me where I work and I say at Rover's Return, if they don't know, I just describe the landlady and, mm. all, and they know right away. Mm. Spare me the description. All right, Jacko. No, no, I mean, dead flattering, you know. You're a liar. But I don't want to know. We're all a bunch of new opers, a lot of us. It's the last days of Pompey, is this, you know? The world's collapsing. Communism doesn't work. Capitalism doesn't work. Marriage doesn't work. Work doesn't work. No. I wonder if this'll work. Then as you'll get. <sighs> well, my hopes are fading. Give over. <laughs> they must be. They used to be ambitions. No. Well, I'm an optimist, me. Don't put me down as a no -oper. I think that's the saddest thing I've heard all night. Have another. No. Yeah. Now, uh, now, don't blame you. I haven't. Listen, if you can tell me you forgot what happened last night, I'll do a deal with you. I'll believe you. Forget it, Al. No, no, I embarrassed you. I imposed on our friendship. You got a bit maudlin. Comes with getting older. Oh, don't say that. Well, we all have to face it. Ah, there's no fool like an old fool, unless it's a drunken old fool, eh? But I would never have said what I said last night unless I'd been drunk. So let's forget last night. Yes. Yes, but I'm sober tonight. And I meant every word. Do you mind? No, no, say if you do, because I don't really know what I want to say. And I know there's nothing you can say. Nothing you haven't already said, that is. Of course I mean it. Oh, just... Tracy and everything, it just keeps going round and round in my head. And, oh, I think... You know, I, I, I don't just so much want to talk about it as let it out. Hang, hang on a minute. No, no, it's all right. I was just getting me drink. <laughs> no, I don't think that's a bad sign. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. But anyway, I appreciate it. Well, after everything, I, I've got no right to ask you for anything. You shouldn't really have to be listening to me now. But, ta, anyway, Ken. What's bothering you today? Hmm? Come on. Nothing's bothering me. Yes, there is. I'm tired, that's all. You've been thinking all day. All right, I've been thinking. It's not unusual, is it? Hmm. OK. Don't tell me then. Oh, Kevin. You're thinking about us, aren't you? Why do you say that? 
Because you just look like something's really bothering you. Not about us. Oh, OK. That's good. Why? Have you been thinking about us? No, of course I haven't. But there again, I'm not married to someone who's got us in a load of trouble. Someone who's up in front of court and everything. Kevin, don't talk like that. <laughs> well, it's got to worry you, though, hasn't it? Well, sometimes you can't help but think about things. You can't help worrying. I'm sorry, Sam. You've got enough on your plate without all this. Oh, I'm sorry I brought it all on you. You haven't? Yeah, I have. If I ever thought you was going off me, they could do what they want to me. They could send me to dart, but the longer the better. Don't talk daft. Who is it? It's me, Ken. I wanted to know if you were all right. Of course I'm not. I know how you feel, but... Uh, well, she's working in a florist. It's not Needle City, it isn't King's Cross. No. No. I know it's not. I know it's not. But... I'm glad you've come. Neither did you. It sounded as though you needed a bit of company. Yeah. It'll work out, you see. Will it? Things could be a lot worse, you know. At least we know where she is and who she's with. Some kids walk out and that's the last anybody ever sees of them. I suppose so. Just so long as we can keep up some sort of contact. <laughs> that's precisely what she doesn't want. Oh, well, while Craig's around, yeah, but he'll get bored. There's no shortage of impressionable girls in this town. That's what makes me so angry. I mean, we've always brought her up to think, to ask questions. Can't she see she's being used? She's in love. She's 16. That's when has age got anything to do with falling she's in love? She's a child, Ken. Not as far as he's concerned. Oh, don't, please. Can't even bear to think about that. I know, it's difficult, but it's happening. I know it's happening. Just don't want to think about it. Well, you're going to have to face it if you ever want her back. I do want her back. <laughs> I want her back now, with me, in this house. I want her safe. Yeah, well, that's just not an option at the moment, is it? No. I can't help it, though. I want to go down there and I want to drag her back, whether she wants to come or not. I want to tell her what she's doing to herself and to me. I want to tell her how stupid and selfish she's been. And never see her again. I know. I know. That's what's so frustrating about it. It's no comfort, I know, but she would have to go sometime. Yeah, but not like this. Not with him. I agree. I'm as upset as you are. So what do we do about it? Wait. That's all we can do. Wait and see what happens. You brought her up. She's an adult and she's spreading her wings. We've got to trust her, let her fly. And what if she falls? Then we pick her up. Oh. Oh. Right then, Frankie. Ciao, mate. Have a good night. Yeah. See you later. Look at them all, eh? Locked away in their little boxes, tucked up and sleeping. Sounds like a good idea to me. Does it? Yeah, you go mad, you know, if you don't have enough sleep. 
Who says so? That's one of the facts, isn't it? Sleep deprivation makes folks act in a logical way. In a logical way? Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Just not too sure you do. Oh, give it Ah, a few more people are acting in a more logical way around here. Yeah, you're a bit first to complain. <sighs> oh, I don't know. Yeah. Felt like peace and quiet, though. Eh? Oh, yeah, especially around here. Yeah. You're very philosophical tonight. Yeah, well, you have a good night, bit of a chat, bit of excitement. As soon as you come home, the shutters start to come down. Yeah, well, can't argue with that. <laughs> At least you've got a wife you can crawl into bed next to. Yeah. What's over there for me? Nothing but three days washing up. A lot of men had settled for that, you know. <laughs> yeah. I suppose you're right. I'll see you, dog. Yeah, I see you, Des. This isn't just about Tracy, is it? No. Oh, I shouldn't care. I'm working in the morning. One won't do any harm. I feel a failure, Ken. Don't be silly. It's true. You're not a failure. What have I got to show for a lifetime? Ray, you, Tracy, nothing's gone right. I can't just blame fate. Like I said, Tracy would have gone sometime. Yeah, but she could have gone with a smile. She could have gone with my blessing. I could have waved her off. It was just married, sprayed on the side of the car. Maybe. What's wrong with that? Nothing. I feel bereaved, Ken. I feel as if I've lost something really precious and I'm never going to get it back. And it's not just this. It's been happening all my life. Ray, you, now Tracy. You were all part of my future. Now, I can't see a future. There'll be a future. There's always a future. <laughs> oh, yeah. What kind of future? I don't want to finish up like Phyllis, just popping in and out of places, helping out where she's, when she's needed. I can't see that happening. Well, oh, I bet she couldn't at my age. No, there'd be something better than that. Oh, I wish I could believe that. You can. I'm telling you, and I know. You always did bounce back, Ken. It's in your nature. Is it? You remember that time when the Wendy Crozier thing was over, New Year's Eve? That was like this. You didn't want me. She didn't want me. Tracy didn't want me. I didn't want me. I sat at this table where you were elsewhere. I poured a large scotch into a glass and a large quantity of pills onto this table. I uh, moved them around for quite a long time with every intention. Until Beck came in and straightened me out. I had no idea. That was part of the deal. We weren't supposed to. I'm only telling you now because I'm glad Beck came in when she did. I didn't want it at the time, but I'm glad now. Because there's always something around the corner, wherever there's a corner. I don't know what to say. Well, the point is, I learned to realise that You've got to live for yourself. You've got to like yourself, look after yourself. That's the first half of the battle. And what's the rest of it? Keeping going. Just keeping going. Sounds like hard work. <laughs> Friends help. I'll help if you want me to. Thanks. You already have. I'm always there, Deirdre. I want you to know that. Whatever's happened in the past, I'm always there.
Oh, he's in your ear. He's in your ear. Have you got it? Yeah, you've got oh, it. Well, that's Open. really helping, that is, isn't it? What? Well, what sort of table manners is she going to grow up with if you carry on doing that? Well, we're only playing a game open. Yeah, and I'll be one who will have to sort you out, not to mention clearing up all the mess. Well, I'll clear the mess if it bothers you. Yeah. What are these out for? Well, we've we'll been looking at them. Yeah, well, you'd be better getting your breakfast and going off to work. Are you trying to get rid of me or something? No, I just okay. don't want you to be late. Look, Sally, I've got half an hour yet. Look, calm down, we're not expecting royalty. I just oh. want everything right. Yeah, well, we've all got to live here. I'd just like me breakfast in peace, if you don't mind. You can't wait to get out to work, usually. Sally, what is the matter with you? You're like a cat or not bricked. Has that Hazel said something to you? What do you mean? I mean, has she been upsetting you? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the house. If she doesn't think we're good enough for her, then she knows what she can do. I'll get it. No, I'll get that. I'll go. I said I'll get Kevin, it. Kevin, don't say anything to her, will you? We need the money. I won't. I may as well go to work myself. I'll see you, sweetheart. You be good girl for your mum. I'll see you, look. Hey, and stop worrying what people think. It doesn't matter, OK? All right, I'm coming. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Hiya there. Hiya there. I'm just going. See you now. See Hello, you, Hello, Jonathan. Oh, thanks for letting me bring him over. Oh, it's all right. He seems to be getting a bit more used to me, I think. Oh, good. Well, it does take time, I know. Mm. Oh, careful, love. <laughs> Don't want to spoil the holiday snacks. Thanks. Anywhere nice? Oh, nowhere special. Oh, still. Memories are precious, aren't they? Yeah. Morning, right. Please. Well, then, see you later. And thanks again. Well, I don't know, sir. Louise, perhaps you better ask him, eh? Derek? Yes? There's a young lady visitor for you. For me? Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> Sarah Louise wants to know if you're coming out to play. Oh, does she now? Did you cross that street on your own? No, Mum, Mum showed me across. She's dropping David off at a Stanley's. You've got a few minutes to spare, then, have you? Yeah. Well, I'm very flattered you want to spend them with me. I just came to tell you nothing's happened to that tree. Oh? And you said it was magic. Well, yes, so it is. Uh, but nothing's happened. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. We'd better see about that, haven't we? Come on. You see, with magic, things are not always what they seem. Sometimes the magic happens and you don't notice any difference. Until you look very carefully. It doesn't look any different to me. Well, you see, the tree takes all its strength from the ground. Does it? Yes, it sucks all the goodness from the ground. So I think that's where you should look. The ground? Look, you take this and dig in the ground. Did the fairies leave this here? Yes, I think they did. Now, you dig very carefully. You don't want to damage the magic tree, do we? No. Oh, what's that? Treasure, Mrs. Wilton. Treasure? Let me see. Oh, oh, Mrs. Wilson. oh, how exciting! Treasure dead. Yeah, your lucky day. Magic coins. <laughs> can I go and show him the map? Of course you can. But first of all, I think you should fill in the hole so that we can keep the tree all warm and cosy. Nice one, Derek. Oh, that was a kind thing to do, Derek. Bringing a little bit of magic into a little girl's life. Well, as one not so little girl has brought so much magic into mine, <laughs> I thought I should pass it on a bit, don't you? Oh, Derek. Oh. oh, my heart was in my mouth when she picked them up. She only had to look at one of those photographs and she would have known straight away that was a Lake District. There's even one photograph of me joining the kids. Well, you're going to have to have it out with him, Sally. There's no reason why you should have to go through all this just because he's left his wife. That man found some treasure. Uh, just a minute, darling. I'm talking to Sally. That's it. Hey, did you cross that road on your own? No, Derek showed me across. But look, I found some tre treasure under Derek's magic tree. He said the fairies left them. Amazing. Hey, I, do you know, I think you can eat them and all. Can you? You yeah. should think so, yeah. Turn into a fairy, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's much danger of that. Well, if you do, I'll have one. A pair of wings might come in useful in the next few days. <laughs> okay, then.
them. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hi. What do you want? Do you want to see that you're OK? I thought you'd prefer me to stay away from the flat after last week. Yeah. I'm sorry if I embarrassed you. That wasn't the intention. OK. No, it's just that I was very worried. I mean, it's a big step. You've no need to be. Good. Anyway, you weren't half as embarrassing as my mum. Yeah, well, she worried too. Doesn't she realise I left because she kept going on like that? Is that really the reason you left? I needed some space. I needed to go somewhere. Well, where I wasn't going to get hassled all the time. I can understand that. I know she's worried. And I know she thinks she's doing it all for my own good. But I'm not a kid. I need to get on with my own life. And does Craig let you do that? Yeah. OK. Well, that's good, then. It's good for my mum as well. It'll make her realise that I'm not there forever. And that... Well, then she can start living her own life instead of trying to live mine. Yeah, well, she's mainly worried about keeping in touch. She doesn't want to lose you for good. Well, that's up to her. Mm, I want to see you as well, if you agree to it. Well, yeah. But, no, I'm not talking about your flat. That's your domain. I don't want to encroach on that. No, I think it may be we could meet on neutral territory, say, uh, a meal one night a week. Just you? To start with. Yeah, OK. That sounds good. When? Oh, right. I was wanting to be a cowboy. Riding planes without a care in the world. Oh. You don't see cowboys anymore. What do you mean? I was married to one. <laughs> Which is why I have to go back and earn a crust. You don't have to go back so soon. Oh. Hello, Dan. Ivy. Oh, don't let me break up the happy hope. No, I'm due back now anyway, Ivy. See you, Dan. Hello. You are allowed to buy me a drink if you want. Aren't you at work? Uh, oh, yes, yes, please. I'm on mornings. Not to expect you to remember. And will you put a gin in that orange, please, Tanya? Bit early for that, isn't it? Yeah. I expect you've forgotten already, but uh, today it would have been Brian's 35th birthday. Oh. Oh, I expected that sort of response from you. You know what I think, Ivy? Life is for the living. Yes, well, some people do have memories done. Thanks for the drink. Sitting in here on your own is not going to solve any problems, is it? I sit in here because you don't want to sit with me. I've got time. Welcome to the Hello, Don. <laughs> Lost your partner? Uh, yes, you could say so, and uh, oh, maybe we could join you then. Well, well, well. And what can we do you for? Right, too, but, uh, I must warn you, Tanya, I'm not very good company. That doesn't sound like you. No. Uh, uh, today would have been Brian's 35th birthday, you know. That's if he'd have lived. Oh, Ivy. I am sorry. I just can't tell one what it would have turned out like. Nothing. Is there anything like that? No, no, I'm all right. I don't want to spoil your day. I'm You're go. doing no such thing. Now you just stay where you are. Ivy's son, Brian, it would have been his birthday today. He would have been 35 if he'd lived. I see. I'm very sorry, Ivy. Look, uh, I'm sorry. I'd better go out there. I don't want to embarrass you. I, I don't even know you. You're not embarrassing me at all. I'm Bernard Morton. <laughs> Bernard was the vicar officiating at the wedding of Mr. Sugden's friend. Vicar? Yes. And if you still want to go, I'll understand. No, no, it's very reassuring to have you here, um... Bernard. You see, it's funny, you know, calling a priest by his first name, because uh, I'm a Catholic. All one in the eyes of God. Uh, yes, well, I expect you've got business to discuss. I don't want to interrupt oh, you. Please, don't go. Tell me about your son. Ryan? Yes. I'd like to know, if you'd like to tell me. Derek, what are you doing home at this time? Well, I sat in my boiler house, I took up my sandwiches, and I thought, why am I doing this? 
when with a little effort and an extra half hour, I could be enjoying the company of my wife and one of Betty's hot pots. There you old romantic. Uh, not so much of the old, thank you, Rita. I'm surprised you didn't just straddle your yard broom and take to the earth. Ah, you've heard about the magic we weave in our lives, have well, you? Well, I've heard about little Sarah Louise. Uh, Is there anything else you shouldn't be telling me? Oh, Rita! Well, you never know, you two. I mean, it's a passionate man that rushes home to take his wife out for lunch. And he's already got sandwiches packed by her own fair little hands. Uh, what's life without a little magic, Rita? Oh, you couldn't put some in my life, could you? You know, say a few words, waft me off to the Seychelles or the mountains of the moon. <laughs> oh, now, the mountains of the moon. That's just what I'm looking for. Look no further than your imagination, Audrey. Everything's possible in your imagination. Oh, hi. Oh, you can never meet them two, huh? I mean, one minute they're walking about with their chins hitting the ground. The next they're waltzing out of here like Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy. Hello, oh, I don't know which I prefer. Oh, and talk about chins hitting the floor. Deirdre arrived at work this morning looking like death warmed up. Oh. Do you know, I think this Tracy thing is really taking it out of her. Well, it must be a worry, Audrey. I don't think she should be bearing it all on her own. I think Ken should do a lot more for her in this situation. Well, I'm sure Ken's doing all he can, Audrey. Uh, look, um, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm expecting a delivery and I've got to clear the shelves. What is it that you wanted? Oh, right. Hi. Hiya. Jonathan, Hiya. come on, it's time to go. Come here. Hiya, monster. Mwah. You miss me, eh? Jonathan, go and get your coat. Something wrong? Yes. What do you Hazel hasn't been having a go at you, has she? No, but she will when she finds out I went to the Lake District for my holidays. Lake District? Oh, come on, Joe. You told her you are in love with another woman and you took to the Lake District on holiday. Yeah, well, I can explain that. Good, because I thought I'd made my position very clear to you. Yes, you did. So what's this cheap stunt you're trying to pull now, Listen, then? Listen, Sally, it's not what you think. Really, it's not. I do have an explanation. Right. Well, I'll sort this lot out and I want to hear it and I want you, Joe. It better be good. Four, one's five, and five's ten. Uh, what? It was a twenty, Deirdre. Are you sure? Positive. Oh, oh. I'm sorry, Denise. I don't know where my head's at today. Are you feeling OK? You're looking a bit peaky. No, no, I'm all right. Must be a bug. Yeah, well, there's all sorts flying around this time of year. And what's that? Bugs. Oh. Deirdre's not feeling too good. Oh, dear. I'll get yourself home into bed if I were you. See ya. Uh, Ta-da. Oh, I've only here with that simple. <clears throat> I've been to see her. And? She's OK. We had a good chat, made some real progress. She's coming home? No, no, but she's agreed to meet me once a week on neutral ground. And what about me? I think that'll take a bit longer. But she's prepared to meet you? Yeah, for a meal. I thought I'd suggest after a few weeks that I bring you along as well. Oh, right, thanks. Oh, come on, Deirdre, this is progress. Might not be an overnight solution, but it's a step in the right direction. She must really hate me. She just wants a bit of space, time to sort herself out. She's actually being very adult about oh, it. Pity I missed it. Yeah, it is. You know, if you don't change your approach to the whole thing, you're going to miss out altogether. You're serious? Yes, I am. And I meant what I said about progress. <laughs> oh, OK. I'm sorry. Thanks, Ken. I just wish I could make it easier. No, no, it's OK. If that's the way it is, we'll just have to go with it for now. At least one of us has got contact. Well, go on. It's difficult. It's difficult for me! OK. Look, I know it sounds pathetic, but I told her I was seeing another woman to save face. What? It's humiliating when the woman that you live with walks out on you like she did. I just wanted to show her that I could get somebody else. So you dragged me into all this to save your pride? I never mentioned the name. As good as. When she finds out I went to the Lake District, all she's got to do is put two and two together. Well, she won't. I promise. Well, she better not. When is she going? Going? Well, she won't want to stick around now, will she? I mean, what's the point? Well, things aren't quite as simple as that, Sally. She is going, isn't she? You told me she was just around when you did your course. Yeah, and that was true at the time. You must believe that. Oh, what's going on? Look, I think she's trying to get Jonathan back. What? She's after custody. I know she is. And according to my solicitor, if I don't let her see Jonathan regularly, then she might have grounds. So she could be around for some time to come, then? Yes. 
Look, I'm sorry, Sally. I mean, I'd get rid of her, I could, but I can't risk losing Jonathan. And you can see that, can't you? What are you doing? Looking for some treasure. There may not be any this morning. But it's a magic tree. I know it's a magic tree. I found some yesterday. Even magic trees can't work every day, you know. Vicky, I won't tell you again. You want to live, shape yourself. Sarah? Got to go now, Derek. Please, can you keep looking? All right. Treasure. Hey. Under the magic tree. Oh, I see. Well, I don't suppose it can work every day, can it? Hey. That's what Derek said. Oh, is it? Well, come on, sit yourself in the back. She's daft, her. Yeah, that's enough from you. Come on. Well, if she reckons it's a magic tree, she is. Oh, right. So you're some kind of expert on this subject, are you? Yeah, but there's no such thing. Well, that's what Derek reckons. Lisa's daft, as she is, isn't it? Yeah. Come on. Where you got to? Yeah, well, he had a really bad night last night. Oh? No, he's very restless. It took him ages to settle. Oh, well, do you think he's got a temperature or is he sick now for anything? No, I don't think it's anything like that. I heard him call for his mum during the night. Oh, I see. I mean, why does she have to come back into his life? I don't know. We're getting on so well together. Well, she is his mother. Well, it's a pity she didn't think of that when she walked out on him, isn't it? And Jonathan didn't understand what was going on then, and he certainly doesn't understand now. I mean, no wonder the lad's confused. Well, don't worry, Joe. I'll keep my eye on him today. Oh, thanks, Sally. I don't know what we'd do without you. Um, same time tonight, then? Hmm? Yeah, right. I'll tell you one thing. If she tries for custody, she's got a hell of a fight on her hands. I'm not imagining it, Mavis. I'm telling you, that tree has shrunk. Can't have shrunk, Terry. It has. It's definitely shrunk. I have a good mind to take it back to the garden centre. What do you expect them to do about it? I paid for a healthy, thriving conifer. Well, it is a healthy, thriving conifer. Not as healthy and as thriving as when I bought it. Well, that's not surprising, is it? It hasn't had a chance to get established yet, has it? It's had Sarah Louise digging about its roots. <sighs> Well, you, you can't blame the garden centre for that, can you now? Look, I've got to go, Derry. Mm. See you later. Bye. Have you ever wondered how the heck we managed to end up in a place like this? Oh, I don't have to wonder. You see, I was walking on this beach and I saw this lamp and I picked it up and I rubbed it. And there was this little fat confectioner by the name of Jim Sedgwick. And he said that I could have three wishes. So, naturally, I married him. Who wouldn't? Mind you, you know, he wasn't all that fat in those days. He was quite good looking, really. And he had plenty of money. And he thought that I was the best thing that he'd ever set eyes on. So what brought this on, then? Mm, I was just thinking about Derek and Sarah Louise. Oh, forget it. Maybe I'll never let him go. Anyway, he's far too old for her. <laughs> he has a really good way with kids, you know. You know this tale about magic tree? Mm. She really does believe it. Well, so did I, to her age. Just like I believed I could be a film star or a ballet dancer. Yeah, me, you know. So how come we ended slapping butter on balm cakes for a living? Well, we had to grow up, didn't we? Become fully paid-up members of the real world. <laughs> At least some of us did. Some of us? Well, there's still plenty around, you know, that believe in magic trees. My husband, for one. Mike? Mm. Especially the sort that money grows on. Oh. At least when it comes to Mark and that new school he sent him to. Well, must think it's worth it. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I'm still not convinced, though. <laughs> not by a long joke.
That's the escort finished. Do you want an hand with everything? Yeah, but I tell you what, you go and get us a pint. The coach has dried a sawmill, so does. Alright, see you later, Jim. Alright, see ya. And we've been motors. Ah, oh, Mr. Price. Sorry, mate. Just missed him for you. Huh? Better than I can do for you. Ah, oh, hold on. So we look. Uh, well, look tomorrow. I right, bring her in tomorrow. I'll sort you out. Okay. Right, no problem. All the best. Bye. Liz. Brings you here. This does. Well, I don't think I'm the one with the explaining to do, do you? Thanks very much, and I'll stop the papers from Thursday onwards. Ta ra. Hey, Mavis. I'm going to put kettle on. I could murder a brew. Rita, you know a bit about gardening, don't you? Me? Well, you used to help Ted in his garden. Well, yes, but it hardly makes me an expert, does it? Well, I was just wondering. Wondering what? <laughs> well, if a tree can actually shrink. Shrink? Uh, you know, this tree that Derek's just put in the front garden. His magic tree? Well, the one he told Sarah Louise was a magic tree. It shrunk? Uh, well, I don't think it's possible, but Derek's adamant. Oh, well, who knows, maybe. I mean, with the magic tree. Oh. There's no point in talking to hey, you. Hey, now, come on. It was Derek that started all this. <laughs> yeah, for Sarah Louise's benefit, which I thought was a charming thing to do. Agreed. But if you ask me, now he's letting his imagination run riot. So you don't think it can have shrunk? Well, if it has, Mavis, it's the first I've ever heard of it happening. Well, that's what I thought. Mm. Hey, I tell you what. You put kettle on, I'll nip over to because we've run out of chocolate digestives. Unless you fancy something else for a change. Berry cakes. Mm. Unreasonable behaviour. Me. Oh, that's a good one, that is. It was me who laid one on Wilmore, was it? Me who got myself banned from the Queen's. Me who resented you making anything of your life. But it was you, Liz, who chased after your man to get yourself a boozer. You, you, you encouraged him and you, you slept with him. I did not sleep with him. No. Well, you walked out in 20 years of marriage, that's for sure. Come on, Liz, that boozer became more important to you than your old family. That is not true. No. Well, you could have walked out of there any time you wanted, but you didn't. You didn't because you got what you wanted. And you were going to hold on to it as long as you could. End of story. You weren't even prepared to discuss it. Oh, that's a good one coming from you, isn't it? You're a real master in the art of communication, aren't you? Me? Me? Yeah, you. It was you who landed me with this without even a word, not even a flaming phone call. So, would it have made any difference if I had tried to discuss it? Not a lot. Exactly. I mean, that became obvious when your second fancy man, he packed his bags and he took off. And whose fault was that? Well, it wasn't mine, love. You knew how much getting the Queen's meant to me. No. No, I didn't, but I do now. More than your husband, more than your family, more than 20 years of marriage. I mean, what, what kind of a wife puts a, a, a public house in front of all that? The kind of wife who brought up two kids single-handed while you played soldiers. Big Jim McDonald, life and soul of the NCO's mess. The kind of wife who gave everything to you and those boys for all those years. Going where you wanted to go, doing what you wanted to do, never a thought for what I wanted. But then, when I do find something I want to do for myself, all I wanted you to do was share it with me. But oh no, you couldn't bear to see me being successful, could you? No, you weren't happy till you wrecked it for me and put me back in my place. And you accuse me of unreasonable behaviour. Liz, you didn't leave me with any choice. No. Well, you haven't left me with any either.
Right, Jacko, please. You're not working today, then, sir? Day off, and I'd sent to make the most of it. Yeah, some folk have all the luck here. Yeah. So where do you go from here? Well, I haven't much choice, really, have I? I mean, now the divorce papers have been served, you know what I mean? I've started the clock, so I suppose I'll just sit back and let things take their course. Well, best of luck. Hey, I don't need luck. I've got right on my side, OK? Oh, I've heard that before, I know. It could be a very nasty business, can divorce Jim, believe me. Whether you've got right on your side or not, you're going to have to dig in for a long battle. Ah, uh, look, let me get you another, OK? No time, I've got to get back. Well, uh, thanks anyway, OK? I've done nothing. Sure. Thanks for letting me bend your ear. It's, um... It's meant an awful lot to me, so it has, yeah. See you, Jim. See you, Done. I will do right there. You're going to be very careful you don't spill that, Jonathan, all right? Tea, was it? Oh, uh, yeah, please. So nothing's changed, then? Eh? What? You've still got him, me laddo. Yeah, I've still got him. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. Look, I've had a chat with Joe, and it's not as it seems. He made up this tale about a girlfriend for his wife's benefit. Well, you know, to try to keep some dignity, some pride in himself. I see. Well, if that's what he said, then that's all right, isn't it? Look, girl, she ran off with another fella. I mean, how do you think he feels? I can imagine how he feels. I can imagine how he'd want to invent a mythical girlfriend for his wife's benefit. But he happens to be you, doesn't it? The girl he's declared his undying love for. The girl he wants to be far more than a childminder for his son. Look, this is my problem, all right? And I'll sort it out. I've got to. For Jonathan's sake. So, you're going to be seeing Tracy once a week, then? That's the arrangement that we came to, yes. Yeah. Mm. But she doesn't want to see Deirdre? For the moment, no. She will. In time, I'm sure she will. Well, I think that's disgraceful, treating a mother like that. After all, she's done for her. Well, you both have. Yes, but I'm sure that's not a decision that Tracy took lightly. You're not defending her, surely? No, 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 I'm not. But uh, in my experience, if we're ever going to come to terms with the younger generation, we must at least try to see things from their point of view. Uh, Ken, if there's anything I can do to help Deirdre... Oh, you know, thanks. Okay. Well, she's not going to find it easy. I mean, Tracy wasn't just a daughter. She was the biggest part of her life. Uh, but she's only the other side of the red wreck, you know. She's not the other side of the world. Well, I should think the way that Deirdre feels right now, she might as well be. Look, if it's about you and this girl... She does have a name, you know, Mum. Yes. Well, you couldn't have picked a worse time. Well, I can't pick a good time as far as you're concerned, can I? Andy, please. I just want you to know, no matter what you and me Dad think, we're getting married. I see. When? Uh, as soon as Amy and Dominic get back from Trinidad. They're off with the Mum this weekend to go and see all the folks. Well, I suppose if you've made your minds up, there's not a lot we can do to stop you, is there? It doesn't have to be like this, you know. I mean, if you just go meet your mum and dad and Dominic. Not now, Andy. All I'm asking is for you both to go and see him. You and me dad. Me and your dad? We're a shining example of married bliss, aren't we? But that's not the point. All I'm asking is for you to behave like a couple of human beings towards each other just for a few hours. I think it's just a bit late in the day for that. Oh, now, come on, mum got this through my letterbox this morning. Your dad wants a divorce. So, have you heard from that brother of yours since he went back? Not a word. It wouldn't bother me if I didn't hear from him for another ten years. Ah. Well, I hear it runs in the family. What does? This yearning. The passion behind the pumps. Oh, yeah. Dead right. Really? Well, me granddad had a soft <clears> spot for barmaids and all. If you get desperate, I could always give you his phone number. Cheers. I still think it's a shame. What is it? Well, that Nicky and Mark don't see as much of each other as he used to, because they used to be really good friends. Oh, yeah, that's before he had his eyes open, though, wasn't it? His eyes open? His eyes open for what? But there's a great big world out there that stretches further than Weatherfield Comprehensive. Oh. So you don't think Nicky and his mates are good enough for him now, is that it? 
Did I say that? You didn't have to. I think that is a terrible thing to say. No, no one's forcing him to avoid Nicky. He's a free agent, as far as his friends are concerned. No, if he's not seeing as much as Nicky as he used to, that's because he's met some lads he has a bit more in common with. I, for one, can't say I'm sorry. You're a snob, you are. Do you know that? I'm just thinking what's in the best interest of my son. I happen to think he's better off in an educational system that teaches the lads to think for themselves, right? It's going to open doors for him in the future. Yes, mm. Derek. Uh, just half, please, Jack. Right. Um, I'll get that, Derek. Oh, right, thanks. Well, it's the least I can do for a man who's brought so much happiness into a little girl's life. You know, I'm beginning to regret I ever started all that. Oh, surely not. It's a charming little tale you told Sarah Louise. So pleased when she found those gold coins. Yes, I know. But it's playing havoc with the tree. How do you mean, Derek? Well, when I got up this morning, I could have sworn the tree had shrunk. Shrunk? Mm. Never heard of that before, have you, Jack? What? Well, Derek reckons his conifers have shrunk. What do you think? How the hell would I know? Well, cheers. Yes, cheers. Hey, it sounds odd, I know, but I reckon it must have shrunk about three inches. Shrunk by about three inches, he reckons. Could be nasty. We are still talking about the conifers, I take it. Do you mind, Jack? We're trying to be serious. So what do you think's brought all this about, then, Derek? Well, I can only think it hasn't rooted properly. Mm. You know, with Sarah Louise digging there. For a treasure? Yes. Mm. Anyway, I've dug it in again, put some fertiliser down and watered it well in. So that should do the trick, should it? I certainly hope so. You say you only think it shrunk. Well, yeah, I mean, short of measuring it. Conifer. What else? Do you mind? Well, I would if I was you, Derek. Oh, come on. No, I would do it as soon as I got home tonight. Because if what you say is correct, well, you could have a botanical phenomenon on your hands. And you being a gardener, you don't need me to tell you what that might mean. Just exactly what do you think you're playing at? Hey, You heard. Ah, I see. You've got a chat with your mother then, have you? Yeah, I have. And a right state she's in and all. Andy, I didn't want any of this, you know. Look, it wasn't me who wanted a boozer more than her own family. So you just slap her with divorce papers? Without any warning? Without even a discussion? Discussion? What, with your mum? Oh, come on, Dad. You could have at least tried. What point was there in that, eh? Your mother made it crystal clear our marriage was over, dead and buried. Oh, is it now? And that's for sure, is it? Have you any idea how she felt when them divorce papers landed through the letterbox? Yes, I do, actually. She made that very clear as well. But tell me this. Have you any idea how I felt when she slammed the door in my face, eh? Have you? Well, she did. She's not the one that's soon for divorce, mate. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the night she came and she stayed here, eh? That's what I'm talking about. And I've done a lot of thinking, Andy. All I needed was one word of encouragement. One word. And I'd have swallowed my pride. I'd have turned a blind eye on everything that's happened. And what does she do? She slams the door in my face. So you just drop divorce papers on a light like that, eh? I mean, come on, Dad, you could have said something. There was nothing more to be said. I had taken everything any man could be expected to take. Don't you understand that? But you didn't even say anything to me, Dad. Or to Steve. We live under the same roof, for God's sake. You decide to divorce our mum, but you don't think you'll mention it. Now, just hold on a minute. Don't you start giving me a lecture in communication, son. Who the hell did you talk to, eh? Who the hell did you talk to when you decided to pack up university, eh? Who did you talk to when you decided that wee girl was more important than you finishing your exams and getting your qualifications, eh? Dad, that was nobody else's business except mine and Amy's. Yes, well, as far as I'm concerned, this is nobody else's business apart from me and your mother. So don't come round here shouting the odds because you're wasting your time. Yeah, all right, Dad, don't worry. I've got the message. Do you ever get fed up with this hairdressing? You know? On your feet all day, cutting, styling. I mean, it's not much variety, is it? Hairdresser? Me. <laughs> and the rest. Eh? Psychiatrist, marriage guidance counsellor, social worker, you name it. I know enough about folk round here and their relationships to keep me in clover for the rest of my life. All oh, right, so, uh... Can you tell me about her at number two Marjorie Street? Husbands away on our roads. And it's a very nasty habit of turning up unexpected and all from what I am. And if you want confirmation, check with casualty at weather from the general. Oh, yeah. Fighting hot pod, please, Jago. Jim? Where's he? 
Can't you give him a 501? No, thanks. Sure. Oh, go on, I'm no, feeling... Look... No, 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 no. Hey. I've got a government health warning stamped on my head. Hey? Being seen, this man can seriously damage your health. I thought you said you were feeling lucky tonight. Yeah, I did. <coughs> well, he still could be. Hey? If you started chatting up the right people. Oh, aye. And I don't suppose you'd have uh, anyone in mind, would you? I might have. How long have we known each other? Long enough. I never even realised. Realised what? Well, that you could even play darts. <laughs> you damn beggar! Is that it? For now, yes. Hi, Doc. Hi, Hi. Uh, listen, do you mind if we have a quiet word? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I suppose so. Ah, uh, Don, look, I'm sorry. I oh, didn't mean my guest. Don, fancy game of 501? <laughs> Ask a silly question. So? So I've just had Andy round, he's been to see his mother. And you're not exactly pick of the week with him either. Oh, you're dead right, I'm not. So it goes without saying I'm going to be about as popular as a toothache with Steve, you know what I mean? I mean, well, I thought when I, when I got the solicitor to organise this petition, I mean, for God's sake, I didn't think it was going to make me popular, but this here... Well, I did warn you. And this is only the start. That makes me feel a whole lot better. Look, you were always having to go through this, no matter how you went about it. And I know exactly how you must feel right now, but... you soon see things differently. You'll find it's a great relief just to know it's out in the open, believe me. Yeah, I suppose you're right. It's just... <laughs> thank you. You've got nothing to thank me for. I've got more to thank you for than you'll ever know, Denise. Hey, hang on a minute, no, Jim. No, 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 look, without you, I probably wouldn't have got into all this anyway, you know what I mean? Me? Now, come on. There's no way you can blame me for this. I'm not blaming you, love. I'm trying to thank you, you know? There is no way that this is down to me, Jim. No way. No, no, no. Look, you were there when I needed you, OK? Yeah, I've been around when you needed an ear to bend, sir. But the way you're talking, you make it sound as though it's all my fault, as if no. you'd never have put no, him no, for no, a divorce no. if I hadn't no. put you up for it. That's not what I'm saying at all. Do us a favour, Jim. From now on, just leave me out of it, OK? I'll see you. Cutting bits off this tree. Derek, don't speak to her like that. What are you on about, anyway? I knew it. This tree is three inches shorter than it was yesterday. Well, that's not Sarah Louise's fault, is it? What do you mean it's three inches shorter? Well, the same thing happened yesterday as well. Well, are you measuring it right? Gail, I'm telling oh, you, that right, tree is. Don't shout at me! No, I'm sorry. I only wanted to walk to some desert. It's all right, darling. I think Derek's just worried about the magic tree. He, he didn't want it to get hurt. He didn't mean to be angry, did you, Derek? I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, well, all right. Well, remind me to stay away until you do. Because the good fairy's turned into a wicked old troll from where I'm standing. Come on, darling. It's all right. Well, only four more days and we've got dark evenings to look forward to. That's what I like to hear, Mavis. Something to cheer me up before my breakfast. Well, it's going to happen. There's no point in running away from it. So, look what we'd be gaining. Winter mornings would be even darker if we didn't put them clocks back. Think how grumpy folk would be then. Pitch black till nine o'clock in France and Germany. No wonder they're always falling out with each other. Um, I think you miss the light more in the evenings. The dusk just creeps up on you somehow. It's only trying to frighten you, Mavis. I'd ignore it if I were you. Mavis. 
Have you seen that conifer? No, why? It's shrunk again. Oh, Derek, you're imagining it. Trees don't shrink. I'm not imagining it. It lost three inches yesterday, three inches the day before. I measured it. If you're taking the trouble to look, you'd have seen for yourself. Well, it was dark when I left the house this morning. See, you wouldn't have had that problem next week. Look, perhaps its branches are just settling down after planting or it's sunk into the soil more. Maybe that fox has come back looking for bait and found out and started on tree. I'm serious. Look, there could be all sorts of explanations. Perhaps it's not getting enough light. That doesn't explain a shrink rate of three inches a day. <sighs> Happen furries are collecting wood for bonfire mm. night. Did they celebrate Guy Fawkes Day? Listen, perhaps you should get one of them tree doctors to talk to it. I mean, they say plants need affection. I should have known better, shouldn't I? To expect a serious response about a horticultural phenomenon from people around here. I'll see you later, Mavis. Right. Oh, dear. Well, she didn't take things so seriously. You mustn't fret, Mavis. It'll all be over in a couple of weeks. Why do you say that? Well, if it's shrinking at the rate of three inches a day, there'll be no left of it be then. And he'll stop worrying about it. Oh. I'll see you, lady. Morning. How's Jonathan today? Great. Seems to be over that unsettled patch that he had. Oh, it's amazing how quickly change, isn't it? <laughs> Getting very attached to your mum now, aren't you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Even been coming round to Tony in the last few days. Tony? Oh, my boyfriend. Oh, yeah, right, Tony. He gets very crotchety if he doesn't have his whoop and tumble in the evening, don't you, eh? <laughs> I wonder how he gets on with Joe's girlfriend. I've no idea. Uh, he's never said anything. No, why should he? Just be interesting to know, that's all. Who he gets on best with. Well, he doesn't really talk about his private life with me. <laughs> no. Oh, well. Just a thought. I'll love you and leave you. Give us a kiss, sweetheart. Mummy's going now. Mm -hmm. Oh, little darling. I'll see you later, all right? <laughs> see you, Sally. Yeah. Goodbye, Hazel. Oh, here it comes. Place your bets. What excuse will it be for a rest this time? He's back. Oh, love, it was his back yesterday. There's something else today. Short of breath, he's not tried that oh. for a bit. Another three to bring up yet, Jack. Oh, come on, look, give us half a chance, I'm sure. Them cellar steps are getting steep, you know. Both wrong. You know, Jack, it might not be the cellar steps getting steeper. It could be you getting smaller. Eh? Uh, Folks shrink with age, you know. I'm not that old. You weren't a tree in your previous life, were you? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, Derek Wilton's got this dwarf conifer and he swears blind it's shrinking three inches a day. Yes, I know. What's that got to do with me? If it carries on like that, there'll be no left of it. So? So, it's like you, Jack. Because if you don't stop complaining and get some work done, you two will shortly disappear. All right? Stella. Stella. We have a bit of fun of now tells, don't we, love? Aye, well, we needed after last night. Why? What's happened? I only heard Jim MacDonald saying he was divorcing Liz. You're joking? No. Tanya, are you sure? <laughs> I heard him say it, and I heard Denise Osborne say she didn't want to know. She stormed out. Now, have them two got a thing going or what? I've no idea. It's not what they've got going that bothers me. He gets her all worked up with tales about buried treasure. Then when he's not in the mood, he bites her head off. Well, they don't think, do they? Especially when they don't have kids of their own. Mm, I think I'll get Martin to go around tonight and have a word. Oh, Mike's just the same with Mark, you know. I mean, I was trying to tell him last night, he doesn't seem to have any friends anymore since he was well and truly ensconced in that school that Mike's made him go to. Mm. Did you get through? Oh, talk sense, Gail. I mean, if Mark is sitting there looking like the world is falling in on his head, that is a good sign, because that means he is settling into his new school and growing out of his old friends. Oh, of course. Silly me. <laughs> ah, I mean, you've got to remember, Gail, that women pay far too much attention to emotion in these matters. I mean, they overlook the really important things. Mm, so I suppose being desperately unhappy in your teens is a small price to pay for the right education. You see, you've got to learn to bottle things up if you're going to succeed in life, so he may as well start now. Mm, then he can pass it on to his son. Do you know what? I think I will go on sticking my oar in. I mean, I swore I wouldn't, but, well, somebody's got to look after that kid's feelings. I mean, Mike won't. 
You dripping ketchup. Oh! Oh, so I am. Hey, do you think that's because I didn't learn to bottle things up when I was at school? <laughs> <laughs> that's the best you can do. I think we better change the subject. Oh, I think you're right. Okay, it's quite nice, this, you know. Hey, do you want to try a bit? <laughs> Emily not with you today, Mr. Sugden. She's where she always is these days. Oh, where's that? Not because she's taken up with. Well, I thought he seemed very nice when I saw him. Yes, he's a bit of a liberal, if you ask me. The sort that takes the mystery out of everything. Oh, perhaps you'd better talk to Derek then about his tree. What tree? Well, he's planted this dwarf conifer recently and he's convinced it's shrinking. He's not going to rest till he finds out why. Has he had his eyes tested? Ridiculous, there's nothing wrong with his eyesight. Well, maybe it's his brains then. Oh, Mr. Sultan, do you mind? Well, let's face it, get some daft ideas in his head, does your husband? I think he should have a talk to the vicar. In fact, I think they'd have a lot in common. Uh, uh, look, I'm really sorry I loaded all my problems onto you last night. No, it's me who should apologize reacting like I did. You touched a nerve, that's mm. all. In what way? You've never been through a divorce, have you? No, but I think I'm learning fast. They take years to get over. In fact, I'm not sure you ever do get over them in the end. You still feel something for Neil, then? No. No, I shan't be sorry if I never see him again. But it still hurts. The process. Even a second time round, it's like a stab wound. Well, listen, I'm really sorry I reminded you, OK? Oh, it's not just my pain I'm worried about. It's the idea I might have encouraged you to go the same way. Look, hold on a wee minute here. Can we just get something straight? This here was my idea. You didn't do any prompting at all, OK? And I'm, I'm really sorry if I've given you that impression. All right. But let me ask you something. Are you sure this is what you want? Not divorce? Mm-hmm. Well, why else would I be going through it? I mean, it'd be a bit of a waste of time, wouldn't it? I don't know, Jim. That's why I'm asking. You tell me. Well, this is a nice surprise. How are you, kid? Fine. So, are we just passing, or...? Not exactly, love. Not in the middle of the day. You've heard. So... It's true, is it? What did he tell you? Oh, I didn't get it from him. I got it from Radar Lugs. Tanya? How does she know? She must have heard Jim talking about it. I'm sorry, Liz. Yeah. What's he citing? Unreasonable behaviour. Unreasonable? You? Dirty game, isn't it? Divorce. Were you expecting it? No, I wasn't. We weren't getting on any worse than we have last four months. In fact, in some ways, we were getting on better. I just don't know what's brought it on. So what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm still in shock. I've never been here before. What do you do? Well, you've got a choice. You either do nout and let him walk all over you in court with his version of the events, or you get yourself a solicitor and fight back. Pretty nasty either way. Like you say, divorce is. But if the dirt's going to be flying, it might as well be the right dirt. It's up to you, Liz. But I know what I'd do. <laughs> I'm not here to pry. I know. And I do appreciate it. I haven't been able to talk to anybody apart from Tell Andy. That's the beggar with divorce. The one person you usually turn to in a crisis is the one putting the knife in. I can't believe he'd stoop this low. What's he saying you've done? He says that by staying here when he left, I've put my job before my family. 
can't be serious. Oh, it's all there in black and white. Of course, there's nothing about him hitting Wilmore or trying to get us both sacked because he couldn't stand playing second fiddle to me. Anyway, if he wants to start spilling poison, I've got plenty of that. Best not to let it get poisonous if you can help. But you're right. I can't just sit back and let him get away with it. It doesn't mean that you have to go below the belt yourself. Your first priority is to make sure the truth gets told. Your second is to come out of this with a clean conscience if you can. Lower your stoop, muckier you'll feel. Why is he doing it? I don't know, love. It's so unfair. I can only be practical. What you've got to decide is whether you're going to cross petition. And if you are, how far do you want to go? Now, you've got to make your mind up about that before you see a solicitor. Because once you hand it over to them, all hell really does get let loose. I know it's not easy, Liz. That's why you've got to be sure you want it. Ah, Derek. Oh, hello. I've got a bone to pick with you. Ah, Sarah Louise. Yeah, I mean, what you're up to, eh? You get her all excited about this uh, magic treasure lark. She comes to look for it, you start shouting at her. I know, I'm sorry. I'll, um, I'll put something down for her tonight, shall Well, I? we'd soon need him put anything down if we're going to get this commotion every time. Well, I was preoccupied this morning, you see, with my tree. It's shrinking. Hey. Well, didn't Gail tell you? It's losing three inches a day. Sounds odd, I know. Sounds crackers to me, Derek. Fair lads, it do any good, Derek? Unfortunately, no. It shrank another three inches last night. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm trying a windbreak round it tonight, see if that helps. Yeah, good idea. Don't think these cold nights do it any good. No, of course. All right, Martin. Yeah, all right, mate. Uh, are you sure these stories about magic trees aren't going to your head, Derek? Don't be absurd. Well, anyway, it's your own garden. Do as you please. It's a free country. Just don't go upsetting Sarah Louise again, OK? Uh, it won't happen again, I promise. OK. Well, um, let me know how it goes, Derek. Yeah, I will, Des. Thanks for your interest. Oh, don't mention it. That Crawford seems a complete psycho, if you ask me. It'd help if you learnt our names. If I hear one more squeak out of your class, one more squeak. Sir, my name's Platt, not Platt. Never mind the name, boy, just cut the rabbit. Ah, oh, say, he's balmy. Is this his new maths teacher? Yeah, Crawford, but you don't know him. Oh, have you seen that spot on his chin? It's moving round to his neck now. And have you noticed he tries to squeeze it when he thinks you're not looking? Oh. Oops. Splat! No, sir! Splat! <laughs> We've got a teacher with spots. Spotty dick, we call him. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Come on, lads. Do you want to go to the wreck? No. Before I get stuck? Yeah, go on, yeah. Okay. Come on, then. See you, Matt. Yeah. Oops. See ya. Come on. Come on. Come on. They're in a bit of a hurry. You're not going with them? Nah. Oh. Got better things to do now, I suppose, eh? Anything wrong? No, I'm fine. Good lad. Look, uh, I was thinking, I'll take you and your new powers out tomorrow night. What do you think? Yeah, OK. Great. See you here, what, half past four? Yeah. Right. Now do you see what I mean? What do you mean? I just asked him if anything was wrong, and he said no. Well, he's not going to admit it to you, is he? Oh, it's just a phase he's going through, that's all. Give him a couple of weeks with his new pals, he'll be as right as rain. He'll have forgotten that old school ever existed. Now then, did I hear a cup of tea going begging? I think I'll. Mr Armstrong, anywhere? Taxi for Armstrong. He's over the moon, Don. American fella in a space suit. Oh, Armstrong. I... Yeah, that's it, yeah. Should be on like Tommy Handley's show, you know that. Who? Twice that's happened this week. Somebody's got it in for you, Dom. They're probably outside this very minute, driving your car away. Oh, well, I need a wooden leg to do it. Uh, listen, what are you drinking? I might as well have an orange juice while I'm here. No, I'm finishing this up, then I'm home. I'm shattered. Oh, well, I won't bother. Uh, get back to work. See you later. See you, Tom. Listen, Bet, who's Tommy Handley? Ooh, big entertainment star. You know, like Michael Barrymore. Really? Ah, uh, 50 years ago. 
Hey, Derek. Is that right? Is what right? Get out with your tree. <laughs> Ignorance. Still, what can you expect from a man who puts stone cladding on his house? Well, people are beginning to find it a bit odd. Well, of course it's odd. Who ever heard of a shrinking tree? The point is, it's happening. Mocking my interest in it won't alter that. Anyway, I'm determined to find out the reason. I'm going to stay up tonight and keep an eye on it. Oh, Derek, you're not serious. Oh, yes, I am. What do you mean, outside? No, I'm going to watch from the sitting room window. What do you hope to achieve by that? There's something weird and wonderful going on in our front garden, Mavis. And I intend to find out what. Come on. Bye. 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 Any more news on Tracy? Yes, I'm seeing her on Friday, as a matter of fact, our weekly meeting on neutral ground. Softly, softly, eh? Yeah. Will Deirdre be there? I'm afraid Tracy's still not too keen on seeing her mother at the moment. Well, I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. Thanks. I'll need it. You ready for another? Oh, I am popular this evening. Pity I'm off for an early night, isn't it? Yeah. There's a penny. Why? Nothing. Come on. Well, I've just been thinking about what you said, you know. Will I really want a divorce or what? And? Well, the truth is, I don't really know what the hell I want to tell. Thank goodness we got that sorted. You knew? I suspected. Most people don't know what they want in your position. But by then, it's too late. Well, I don't know what I'm getting into. Apart from the unholy mess. Come on, we can't talk in here. I thought you had to get away. It can wait. This one. Two weeks, eh? Don't know how I'm gonna stand it. Still, it'll give me time to sort out where we're gonna live. And then it's not long after you get back, I'll start my training course. Let's see, November, December, start January, that's two months. Yeah, I'll give us time to settle in wherever we find. Then it's all systems go, innit? Can't wait making you. Well, don't sound so enthusiastic. I know I keep saying this, but are you absolutely sure you know what you're doing? Of course I'm sure. Look, we've been through this a thousand times. You don't think I'm going to pack in university and go through with all this if I wasn't absolutely sure, do you? I don't know if I get boring here when you say that to me all the time. Too much more and I might start having doubts. Believe me, that's the last thing I'd do. Yeah, well, that's all right then. I'll tell you something, though. Even if you did, I'd still be potty about you. Well, so, uh, if I don't want this divorce, then why am I doing it? Only you can answer that. Do you hate her that much? No, no. How do you feel about her? Well, that's a ridiculous thing. I mean, I still love her. So then why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe I want to punish her. You've done that already. There's no point in starting divorce proceedings to try that out. Yet each man kills the thing he loves. Do you know that poem? Uh, funny, you know, I never really did much work at school at all, but... For some reason, I always remember that. Is that what you want? To kill her? No. No wonder, back. Then you have a very strange way of going about it. See, uh, you know, maybe I just want her to be so shaken that she's going to run back to me, like, with with open arms, and then we can sit down and say how daft we've both been and, I don't know, live happily ever after again. If that's true, it's one hell of a dangerous game you're playing. Yeah, I know. And if you don't mind my saying so, very stupid.
Well, that's no surprise we run from the truth, then, if it's that bad, you know what I mean? Better than floundering in dark and making things worse, which is what you've been doing. Yeah. It sounds quite positive to me. You found out what you really want. What's to stop you from getting there? Well, that's going to have to wait for another day, for I have to be away home to my bed. This is true. <sighs> Listen, thanks very much. You've helped me be able to look at how I feel, you know, and that's not very easy for me, I'll tell you. I don't think it's easy for any of us. No, you don't do so bad. All I've done is listen. Well, you did very well, Denise. I should do. I get enough practice downstairs. Sit down. Come on, come and have your flakes. He's talking to Jack Duckworth. They're looking at the tree. They're laughing. Oh, no, now the postman's here. You'll make yourself ill. Yes, Barnes will make me ill. Mm. The man's off his head. Well, just try and forget about it. Forget about it? Well, it's the talking point of the street. Derek Wilton and his magic tree. Ho, ho, ho. You know what he's trying to do, don't you? He's trying to drive me into an institution. Oh. Send me round the twist. I don't think he's being malicious. Don't think he's being malicious. It's his whole purpose in life. We've had a, a boat through the fence, a rusting hook of a van in the ornamental pond. Every time we get the garden looking nice, he goes and vandalises it. He hasn't cut his grass all summer, and why? So the seeds can float over the fence into our perennial border. He hasn't done it on purpose. He's just not interested in gardening. Then why has he got a garden, eh? Why have a house with a garden if you're not going to accept responsibility? Mm. I mean, look at Emily Bishop. She'd give her eye teeth for a garden like his. Well, perhaps we should offer him our strimmer. Offer him our strimmer? He'd laugh in your face. Well, everybody hasn't got green fingers. He knows his way round a garden centre well enough to buy a set of Camisipolis Lawsoniana columnaruses. Derek, don't upset yourself. He's the silly one. He's the one who spent all the money. Yes, exactly. And why? To humiliate me. Yeah, I'm sorry we're late. We had a bit of a tantrum this morning. Oh, dear. Well, never mind. Yeah. Come here, Jonathan. Let's get this coat off. Mummy says I don't have to wear any socks. Have you had any breakfast? Or no. eat breakfast. Oh, I see. It's going to be one of them days, is it? Yeah. Hey, ask Rosie to show you a new book. Which is all right for Mummy, but not for Daddy, who's trying his best to keep him in a routine. I mean, you take this evening, for example. Every Friday we go swimming. Is that with um, Peter? Yeah, his, yeah. his dad's a mate of mine. It, sorry, it's a standing arrangement. You know, the four of us will go down to the leisure centre. So, what do you think she does this morning? Hey, Rosie, show him that diplodocus. She phones up and she says I want to take him round to some friends of mine tonight. Sorry, they don't have any kids. There's nobody of his own age to play with. Oh, Rosie, show him. He's not going to spoil it. So, I know what they'll do. They'll just stuff him full of crisps, stick him in front of the video. It's just selfishness. And she's not thinking of what's best for him. Oh, well, who's picking him up? I am. Oh, right. But I've had to agree to let her have him next Friday. What do you think, Sally? Well, oh, Joe, I'm not a marriage guidance counsellor, am I? <laughs> no, I meant about Jonathan, about keeping him to a routine. Well, yes, I agree. I think you do have to keep him to a routine, especially when, well, you know, you're separated. Well, that's exactly how I feel. Well, yeah, but don't go quoting me, will you? I mean, you've got to sort this out for yourselves, you and Hazel. You've got to come to a decision and try and cooperate with each other. She doesn't know the meaning of the word. I mean, she'll have him if it suits her, but as soon as something crops up, throws it back at me. Poor lad doesn't know whether he's coming or going. Yeah, well, as I say, you've got to sort it out between you, for his sake. Hmm. All right, well, I'll see you at five o'clock, then. All right. Say goodbye to your daddy, Jonathan. Hey. Bye. Bye. How do you fancy going on a water slide? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you. Bye. 
Des Barnes. He's been swapping them in the middle of the night. What? I didn't know he realised. <laughs> He's mystified. He's tried everything. Fertilisers, windbreaks. Oh, dear poor Derek. <laughs> now, listen. Don't forget, I won't be in for dinner. Oh, you're going to my night? No, I told you I'm taking Mark and his mates out. You can come as well if you want. What, are you going to the pictures? No, he wants to try this new laser game thing. Oh, I've got to book that up, so i better get it done smartish. Then we'll go out for a pizza. Lasers? I mean, it isn't dangerous, is no, it? No, Nicky's been telling us about him. Martin's promised to take him for his birthday. Hmm? Yeah, Mark says some of the Oakville lads get there on a the Friday, so we're going to meet up with them. But he's meeting me here after school, so if he comes in with a couple of his mates, uh, give him some grub, will you? All right, see you later. Lasers. Never happened to Catapult. Oh, they went out long ago with Stanley Matthews and Ricketts. <laughs> you can laugh. I've heard Ricketts is making a comeback. Hey, don't let Mike know we'll try anything to keep up to date. <laughs> yes, John. Cup of tea? Get um... Oh, hey, uh, have you seen Derek's tree this morning? <laughs> it's shrunk again. <laughs> Do you know who's been doing it? There's Jack Duckworth said. Oh. You all right, Doc? I'm fine. Hi, Hi. Uh, what can I get you? Um, well, nothing, actually. I just wanted a quick word. It's about the flat. Is it still empty? Yes, why? Are you interested? Well, yeah. Well, fine by me. Great, brilliant. Only, we do us a favour and keep it to yourselves? Oh, you don't want Liz and Jim to know? No, no, no. Amy and Dominic. My girlfriend and the little boy. Well, I want it to be a bit of a surprise, you see, when they come back off holiday, so... It is all right if there's three of us, isn't it? Yeah, it's all right with me, but don't you think you ought to see it first? Well, I'll have a look tomorrow morning if that's all right. I said I'd meet him in town because I don't want to open park, so... Uh -huh. And how old's the little kid? Dominic is five, and as bright as a button, just like his mum. <laughs> right, is that OK? I'll see you tomorrow. Right, Fine. see you. Bye. Well, I've heard of shrinking violets, but never a shrinking conifer. Ha, ha. Well, you should have known it, one of Des Barnes's tricks. Take the notice. Oh, Derek thinks everybody's sniggering about him behind his back. I've told him they're better things to do than that. Of course they have. Ah, oh, Derek. How are you? Uh, listen, what's this I hear about you taking up bonsai gardening, eh? I'm going to work. No, no, hold on. I wonder how we were. It's Japanese, isn't it? Uh, I was talking to Jack away. He says he's seen you talking to wee trees, you know. Tell me, do you speak to them in English or does it have to be Japanese? All right. We'll see who has the last laugh, shall we? There's a man with vengeance in his heart, Mavis. Oh, dear, thank <laughs> you. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry about last night. Oh, forget it. I promise I won't mention D-I-V-O-R-C ever again. Mavis, I'll see you. I've seen him in the Rovers with a girl from Better Buys, but I didn't know she had a kid, did you? Well, she wouldn't have him with her in the Rovers, would she? Not if he's only five. What do you say he was called? Dominic? Hmm, Dominic and Amy. Oh, do you not think that's dead romantic, don't you? What is? Well, getting a flat without them knowing for when they come back. I suppose so. But don't you think it's dead romantic? Well, who for? For Dominic, it's not. Why not? Well, cos that flat's not suitable for kiddies. Well, what's wrong with it? Well, it's upstairs for a start. It doesn't have a garden, doesn't even have a backyard. I mean, where's it going to play out? Kids of that age need fresh air. Anyway, it's only got one bedroom. Where's he going to sleep? I've said they could have it now. And how long have you been married? Nearly 20 years. Can I see the documents? And how do you feel about these accusations about your behaviour? There's not a word of truth in them. I see, but presumably his solicitor has encouraged him to believe that he's got reasonable grounds for divorce. I don't care. It's all a pack of lies. But you do want a divorce? That's why I'm here. Hmm. Well, on the face of it, I'd say you've got strong grounds. But I'd better warn you that if you do decide to cross-petition, it can be a rather complicated way of getting a divorce. Expensive, too. So you're saying if I accept his lies, I'll save myself a few quid? No, thank you. If you feel that strongly? Of course I do. And so would you in my place. Very well. We'll file a cross-petition. You're quite sure. Not only can it be quite expensive, it could be very painful. It's a risk I'll take. He's not going to blacken my name. I'll make sure of that, whatever it costs. Half a lager and a cheese, Sarney. Hi, Don. You ready for another? No, thanks. How's Ivy? Same as usual. 
Tell her I'm asking her for. Hey, I'll speak to her. I'll get you a cheese bottle. Okay. See you, Dom. Hi. Hi. Uh, I guess a pint in a hot pot, please, Jacko. Right. right on. No, that's bad. No, that's all right, Dom. Join you? Sure. What the hell's the matter with it? Quite honestly, Jack, I couldn't give him monkeys. Oh, what a morning. Never thought I'd get away. If every day were like Friday, I'd be quitting. The trouble is, it's not. Hey, did you hear about Des and Derek's trip? Yeah, he's told me. I nearly wet myself. Mavis? He's a ripe fruitcake, eh? <gasps> Sorry, who's that? Des. Oh, we. Yeah. You all right? What's up? Look, I know I said I wouldn't burden you with my problems, but... Come uh, on. What's up now? I've just had a phone call from Liz. She's only been to see a solicitor. She's issuing me with a petition. She reckons I'm the guilty party. Not bluffing, is she? Yeah. What? As a way of getting me to withdraw? Is that what you reckon it is? Well, you know her better than me. Is that the kind of thing she'd do? No, she's dead serious. Well, if she wants a fight, she's got one. Hello. Oh, <laughs> oh that for me. Mm. Cheers. Mm. Sorry I'm a bit late. I had to see the PE teacher. Whose bag is it? The tennis rackets? Uh, uh, I borrowed them. But who are you expecting to play with? Not me, out. No, Des Barnes, in a manner of speaking. Oh, Derek, you're up to something. I certainly am. The perfect repost. So just let sleeping dogs lie. What are you going to do? Ah, ah, ah. Uh, can I have a word? Mm, of course. Uh, no. In private. Wait a minute. Dom, what's up? Well, it's a bit embarrassing, really. Uh, you know that money I lent you? Well, I'm not as flush as I thought I was. I've got to have it back. What? Look, I'm sorry, but I've got to have it by next week. <laughs> Last week you said you weren't in a hurry for it. Yeah, no. But, Don, I haven't got it. It's in the business. If I'd known you'd want it back in a few months, I wouldn't have taken it. Oh, and if I out this morning. I thought my accountant said that I'll clear a tax, but I'm not. I've got a demand, so I've got to pay off. What, all of it? That's two and a half grand. Look, I'm sorry if it puts you in an awkward position. More than that, it puts me out of business. Look, well, we'll surely you'll find somewhere. Eh? I don't make enough to pay it all back in one go. Surely you knew that. Well, can't you go to a bank? If I'd been able to go to a bank, I wouldn't have taken it off you in the first place. Look, I'm sorry, but I've got to have it back. I'll just leave it for another five minutes, OK? Oh. I'm sorry, I'm late. I forgot what time you said. It's all right, I've only just got here myself. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, waiter, look, would you like to order right away? I've got to be back at school at quarter past. Um, spaghetti carbonara. Oh, uh, spaghetti carbonara. Right. No problem. And, uh, I'll have the, uh, let's see now, the, uh, yeah, the risotto milanese and uh, mineral water and uh, fizzy orange. Um, glass of red wine. No problem. And a glass of house red. Thanks. He's called Mario. He plays five-a-side football with one of Craig's mates. The carbonara's gorgeous, sir. You've been here before. <laughs> oh, and that's Alberto. Hiya. He's having a party next week. So, how are you getting on at school, then? Well, taking the A-level English to the Royal Exchange next week. Should be good. The head's off at the moment, so Mr Wales is in charge. It's Alberto's birthday next week. Um, next Tuesday. How's Craig? He's got a gig coming up sometime. Well, that's if they can find a drummer. He's advertising in NME. Let's hope he finds one. He's picking me up in half an hour. Your mum sends a love. Right. I'll tell her you were asking after her. I thought she might have been here. That wasn't the arrangement. I know it wasn't. But still, I thought she might have been here. She does understand your feelings, you know. She does. I'm not saying it's easy for her. And I don't think you'll ever fully accept how difficult it is for her until you've got a daughter of your own. Yeah, well, as long as you see it from my point of view as well. Oh, don't worry, I do. 
She's not going to come back round to the flat again, is she? No. I mean, anyone would think I've done something criminal the way she went on. Just give her a bit of time. She'll be all right. Thank you. Oh, Thanks. red wine? Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, how are you fixed for next Wednesday? Yeah, OK. Good. Cheers, Dad. Cheers, Tracy. You're very good at help. <laughs> <laughs> his name's Jeremy, his father's an estate agent, and he's into radio-controlled aeroplanes. Jeremy is? No, his father's into whiskey. Makes oh. Mike look like a novice. You've met him then, his dad? He brought them both round the other day. Yes, Nicky. Can I have some money for the machine? No. Oh, we're all skin. That's hard luck. Oh, go on. Well, come on, some drinks in. Last ones. Oh, they get burgers. Who have them? Them too. Do you mean Mark and his friend? Yeah, but they didn't have to pay either. Oh, go on, give him a burger. It's all right with me. I don't want him taking things for granted. Now, half a Weatherfield company, isn't it? Mm. Ah, right, lads, you ready? Did you play the game? All systems go and get your gear. Let's be going. You're sure you won't change your mind? It's going to be great. Jeremy's been telling me all about it. He's been before. Good for Jeremy. Oh, hello, Nicky. I didn't see you there. Now, listen, don't know what time we'll be in because we might go for something to eat after the shootout if we're still alive. <laughs> Some other time then, eh, Nicky? Right, come on in, boys. How'd you get in the car? I tell you, that laser thing's really naff. Right, I'll push it down. See if you can do the catches there. Yeah. There you go, no problem. Thanks, Andy. Right, anything else? Would you mind booking us a cab to the airport for the morning? Yeah, erm. Um... What time? Mm, better make it six o'clock just to be on the safe side. Right. While you're doing that, I'll get the tea on. Okay. Amy will be back from the hairdressers any minute now. Uh, hang on. I want to ask you a favour. Go on. Well, I've got something for Amy. Will you give it to her for me? I'll just open for your tea. You can give it to yourself. No, no, I mean tomorrow. On the plane. Here. <sighs> it's a ring. Am I right? Mm-hmm. I thought she made you promise not to spend all your money on a ring. Yeah, well, it just didn't seem right. I mean, being engaged and not having a ring. I know my daughter. She didn't expect one. She know you don't have money to chuck around. Yeah, well, I wanted to. And she's worth every penny. Oh, shall I tell her that when I give it to her? Mm. <laughs> but not until you're in the air, OK? Promise? OK. Can I see? Mm. Oh, Andy. It's beautiful. She'll be thrilled. I know she will. Well, that's her now. Kev, the very man, do us a favour. Listen, the alternator's not charging properly. Have a look at it for us, will you? Yeah, I'm just going into town. Bring it round in about half an hour. Oh, brilliant. Cheers, mate. Cheers. See ya. Hello, Derek. What's happened? The tree's not shrunk again, has it? No, no. Something much more extraordinary has happened. In your garden this time. Has it? Why didn't you go and have a look? Is that Peter? Has he got black hair? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's very, very good. Should we put it up over here while well, you go and get washed? Because your daddy's going to be here in a minute. And you'll be changing that swimming pool a funny colour, you, won't you? Oh, that'll be him. Go and get a wash, Jonathan. Oh, how's he been? Hi, I'm fine, but... Is um, he ready? Yeah, well, yeah, but Joe's collecting him. No, I am. I told him this morning. Jonathan, Mummy's here. Um, uh, hang on a minute. Look, he told me quite clearly he was coming to pick him up and he's taking him swimming. Really? Yeah, he's going with his friend, Peter. It's been arranged all day. They've been looking forward to it. And Joe tells you all his arrangements, does he? <laughs> yes, I expect he does. I beg your pardon. I expect he gets a bit of a kick painting himself in such a good light. But there's more than one side to this, you know. I'm sure there is, but I'm paid to look after Jonathan, not to sort out your problems. <sighs> and if you don't mind me saying, this is not doing him any good. It's stability he needs, not all this confusion. How? <sighs> 
dare you tell me what's best for my child? Just who do you think you are? I'll tell you who I am. I'm employed by Joe, not you, to look after Jonathan. And I do that as well as I can. And I'm, believe me, this has not been easy. But he's made friends and he's very happy here. I know why you're taking Joe's side against me. Oh, the only side I'm on is Jonathan's. Side. Ooh, right, little Miss Goody Two Shoes, aren't you? But don't think I don't know what's going on. Because you don't fool me. And I'll see to it you don't fool anyone else. Well? Well, what? Explain that if you can. Explain what? The grass. What about it? Well, you know what you've got, don't you? You've got a crop circle. Have I? Two concentric circles and a triangle. Had a whim, man, Derek. Though this is a first for Weatherfield, is this? And it's in your garden, Desmond. Oh, yeah. You're right. I can see it now. You don't think it's aliens? Don't see how else it could have happened. It's got me baffled as this. I mean, it could be a hoax. Damn clever hoax if it is. No footprints. Better phone the police. What? Well, get them to investigate, just in case it is aliens. You've got to report aliens, Derek. Ah, um... As you say, it, it could have been a hoax. You stand guard over the evidence. I'll phone 999. No, no, wait. Actually, it, it, it was me. I, I did it. You're kidding me on. It was a joke. <laughs> just, just to get me on back. You came into my garden, made a crop circle, no footprints, two perfect circles. Never. Honest, Des. It was me. Well, I'm sorry, Derek. I just don't believe you. I mean, I'm not even sure I'm in my rights telling a mother she can't take her own child. Well, I can only say I'm sorry, but uh, well, I didn't foresee that happening. Well, I'm not so sure. I think you expect far too much of me. Having to referee your quarrels with your wife. You neither of you seem to know what the other one's doing. As long as you can shove Jonathan onto me when it suits you. It's not fair on the poor mm. child. Well, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Yeah, well, I hope not. I think that you and Hazel should come to some sort of agreement. You know, who collects him, what day and what time. Look, um, this is the money that I owe you and... Uh, we're a little bit extra for the hassle. Oh, Joe, it's not about money. This is about two people facing up to the responsibilities towards their child. And being fair with me. Right, I'll go and get Jonathan for you. Jonathan, come on, it's time to go. Telling you, I'm going to go on the electric. What's up? Quick, both of you, in here, upstairs. Come on, Don. Leave me sponge. <laughs> and there was me thinking it was aliens. How do you believe me? I haven't expected you then? No, but it's all right. I'll hang on for him. Well, are you sure you wouldn't like me to make you a cup of tea while you're waiting? No, thanks. Fine. You're not the only one. You then? I just wondered if you knew what was going on. Going on? What are you talking about? You haven't suspected it. 
Who what? Suspected what? Right under your nose. Sally and Joe. What is? They're having an affair. <laughs> if you don't believe me, ask her yourself. Have you get off to work? Has Jonathan come in today? Yeah, as far as I know, why? Well, just start, you know, after what happened yesterday. Yeah, well, it was a misunderstanding and it won't happen again. How can you be so sure? Because I've told him, Joe, I've said to him straight, get things sorted out with Hazel or else. So will Joe be dropping him off as usual? Yeah, I'll be here in a minute. Shouldn't you be opening up the garage? What do you make of her, that Hazel? Well, if you must know, I think she's barmy. She knows that Joe always takes Jonathan swimming on a Friday, and yet she turns up and swears blind she knew nothing about it. If you ask me, she's got a slate loose, that one. Mm. That's what happened. Well, it is what happened. Joe told me. Well, how do you know he's telling the truth? Well, why shouldn't he be? Well, maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's her who's telling the truth. I doubt it. And anyway, he's the one paying me the money, isn't he? I'm bound to go along with his instructions, aren't I? Yeah. I suppose you are. Are you going to sit there all day? Well, just thought I'd have another brew, unless I'm going to be in your way. I can't go back on my word. I've said you could have it now. You've not even discussed the rent. It's not as though you've come to an agreement with him. Yes, but I mean, what am I going to say? I mean, are you sure it's the wrong thing? Anyone with kids the same age would agree. He's calling in on his way to work. I mean, what am I going to say to him? Daft idea anyway. Has he taken on a flat without showing it your girlfriend first? Oh, I don't know. I think it's rather romantic, sort of impetuous. You know, I can imagine Mike doing something like that. Yeah? Well, it'll backfire on him, believe me. Oh, do you know, I wish I'd never agreed to let him have it now. Hiya. Oh, hi. Uh, that's me still on the loose for a couple of weeks. Oh, you don't mean that, do you? No, of course not. I'm missing him already. Can you take him to the airport? Certainly did. I wish I'd have gone with him, really. Three weeks in Trinidad can't be bad, can mm. it? Right, now, can we talk rent? Oh, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how to put this. There's not a problem, is there? It's something I said. Alma's only too keen for you to have the flat. And, I mean, I'd feel the same if it was just you and Amy. But are you sure it's the right place for a five-year-old? I mean, it's only got one bedroom. Yeah, well, I can build him a bunk bed. Upstairs flat, no garden, busy street. You know, I think girls, I mean, she's only saying this because she's got kids herself. Yeah, and I think it's how Amy might feel as well. Hmm. Have you tried the Housing Association on Inkerman Street? No, but wouldn't there be a waiting list? Oh, I don't know, but they've got loads of flats all over Weatherfield. Yeah, you know, I think girls probably right. Right, well, maybe I'll try there first. I don't know where it is, do you? Yeah, Inkerman Street, next to the DIY. Sorry, Andy. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. I'll see you soon, all right? Don't worry, Derek. It's still there. Just checking. Can't be too sure when you've got a joker living next door to you, as I have. And me, Derek. And me. I surprised you, didn't I? Oh, you certainly did. Thought I was one for practical jokes, but that one of yours was brilliant. Nearly had me believing I'd been visited by spacemen. Don't worry, Desmond. You took it on the chin. <laughs> well, you know what they say, Derek. You play with fire, you expect to get burnt. Let's just call it quits, eh? If you insist. <laughs> Deuce! <laughs> Oh, stranger. Haven't seen you for ages. Well, I fancied getting my hair done, but she's not open yet. Denise, no, she will be in a minute, though. Is that it? Yeah. I hear you've had more trouble from your neighbour. It's a bit much into that. Oh, well, everybody thought it was very funny except Dev. <laughs> oh, do you know? He's not so bad as Des Barnes once you get the measure of him. A madcap, that's all, but quite harmless. Well, you've changed your tune. But the thing to do is to pay him back in his own kind. Do you know, Audrey, I had him believing he'd had a visitor from outer space. Uh, there, there. <laughs> I won't let him leave that one down in a hurry. <laughs> I'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, Audrey. Bye. Bye. <laughs> well, he seems to be taking it in very good part. What's all this about outer space? Oh, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. I'd never have guessed he played tennis. Do you know there's more to your Derek than meets the eye, isn't there? Oh, Kevin, look what Jonathan's bought me. They are lovely. 
Now let's take your coat off and you can go in the front room and play with Rosie and David, all right? Go on then. That's it. See ya. What are these for? It's not my birthday. Well, for yesterday. Did she tell you about the mix-up? Yeah, she did. Yeah, well and truly marked my card for me. Oh, honestly, you needn't have bothered. Have you sorted it out with your wife now? Well, that's what I was going to tell you. I went round to where she's living and it sounds like she's gone away for a few days. What would you make of that? I don't know. Well, it's obvious to me she wanted to take Jonathan away without me knowing. Oh. And that's not legal. At least I don't think it is. Well, no. well, it can't be. I mean, she left us. She can't suddenly decide to take him off me. And it was a neighbour who said, you know, that she'd seen her putting suitcases in the car. And I, I, I don't, know, don't know how long she's gone for. Oh, listen, <laughs> pal, we've had it up to here with your problems. We don't want to wear them, understand? Well, that's not quite true. Yes, it is. Sally don't want to wear your problems morning, noon and night. She's better things to do, you know, like looking after your son, which is what you pay her to do. OK, point eight, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, as long as you understand, right? I think what Kevin's trying to say is that we're not really in a position to advise you. What Kevin's way, trying to say is if he wants you to carry on looking after Jonathan, he better get his private life sorted out so we don't cause any more hassle. Understood. I'll see myself out. Well, what was that all about? Oh, you said yourself you're sick of all the aggravation. He needed telling himself. I know he did, but I'm the one who's doing the job. It's up to me to sort it out if things go wrong. I don't need you to do it for me. And anyway, I've said all that to him yesterday. Yeah, but did he get the message? Yes, he did. He said he was Thank sorry. You. Look, he brought me some flowers. Somebody's birthday? Very festive. It's a promotion, Mr. Watts. Is it? It must have slipped my mind. I must have completely forgotten it was wine week. A uh, day. What? Just today. Well, I thought I'd give it a try for one day and see if it improves sales. Oh, did you? Well, don't look so surprised. You said yourself last week we'd have to do something to give wine a push. 8% down. Well, your figures, not mine. Yes, but I didn't know anything about this, Miss Fenwick. You know, I thought we were always being exhorted to use our own initiative. Obviously, I was wrong. Subject to authorisation, not to mention consultation. Just how much of this stuff are you giving away? About this much. Well, oh, times 3,000. How many bottles is that? You do exaggerate sometimes. Do I? When the word gets round this precinct, you'll have every Tom, Dick and Harry, dogs on strings, school children. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, send me the bill. If it teaches you to respect my authority, maybe I just will. You see that woman last night? What woman? Oh, hi. What woman? He says, all right, Kev, I never saw her. What are you talking about? Woman last night was looking for you. I turned me back. Next thing I turned around, she was gone. Anyway, she particularly wanted to speak to you. Yeah. Sally looks after the kid for her. She's causing us a bit of hassle. Oh. No problem. So Sally's doing her a favor, eh? And she starts creating hassle. Would you credit it? Let's just get these wheels back on, eh? Fiona, get that for me, will you, please? If it's Alfred, tell him I left two hours ago, please. <laughs> Wouldn't put it past him. Checking on how much money I'm spending. Oh, hey, butch. Mrs. Coates, cancelling for this afternoon. My mother's been taken into hospital. Did you make another appointment? No. Next time, ask, OK? Alfie thinks anything over a five is daylight robbery. He wants to see my electricity bill. I must have 500 quid's worth of stock in their waxes, tints, conditioners, have her wages, the mortgage. Do you know how much a set of scissors costs? You don't have to tell me, lover. You're talking to another hairdresser, remember? I have my own salon. Sorry. Well, most people haven't the first idea. Alfred, for one. He's just bothered about his own overhead. Do you know, you spend all afternoon running around trying to find a garage with tuppence off a gallon of petrol. It's got any amount of money stuck in the bank, but will he buy a new trilby, will he, Eckersline? He's not sure, then. Well, you know he bought the shop back for less than he sold it for, don't you, eh? Never. Mm -hmm. oh, probably shouldn't tell you that, but... Oh, what the heck? Do you know I shall never see any of it? Oh. I'm telling you... That nag has been knocking on door for the last two outings. Oh, ah, yeah. Well, if it's that easy to make money on horses, how come Jack Duckworth's always skint? Hey? And Des Barnes can afford to be playing silly beggars down the garden centre every other day. I'm telling you. There's no such thing as a dead cert, is there? Is there Ivy? Hey? Oh, never mind. What can I get you, love? Uh, 
Do you want a light ale, please? Right. Don? I'm off. Down betting shop, actually. Right. I'll see you later. Hi, Don. Hey, we're not driving you away, are we? Aren't you going to stop and have a drink with us? No, thanks. I don't. Oh, dear. What's up with him all of a sudden? Don't ask. Come on, now. What are you going to have? Uh, no, this is on me. I insist. Oh, right. A gin and tonic, please. Two, please. Hi, Ivy. Hey, what do you think? About what? Well, my hair. I've had a facial and all. In fact, I've had the whole works. I've been in there all morning. Do you know, I love being pampered. It makes you feel so special. I'll sit here. The way I feel now, Emily, I might never see her again. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure things will turn out. She's got a lot of adjusting to do, what with having a job and a new boyfriend and living away from home first time. Just give her time to come to terms with the situation. Then she'll be around to see you. I'm sure she will. But will I know her or even want to? I'm sure things can't be that bad. Emily, it's times like this I'm glad I live where I do. I mean, suppose I would no job or I was stuck in a flat on my own somewhere. <laughs> Might not be much around here, but at least I know everybody. Oh, right. Thanks, love. Anyway, when I come back, her hair had turned orange. <laughs> we had to pay a compensation. So, um, how long is it since you packed in? Oh, that's it. Seven, eight years. Do you not miss it? Mm, sometimes. Well, why don't you take it up again? Oh, no. Do you think I could? I should think you'd be very good. What, turn everybody orange, you mean? <laughs> well, I had my moments. Mm, I'm tempted, but I mean not seriously. I am being serious. Think about it. With you, you mean? Are you offering me a job? More than that. I'm offering you a partnership. Uh. <laughs> so, what do you think? Oh, hang on. Well, you don't have to decide right now. I, I could give you a couple of days. You say I wouldn't have to do any work? Not if you didn't want to. It would be an investment, just like having shares in BT. Only if you put enough in, you'd have a say in the running of the business. Oh. Well, uh, what's the minimum you're looking for? 3,000. Oh, Denise, love it. I haven't got that kind of money. Not to me own, anywhere. What about Alf? Alf? Well, you want me to ask Alf? You said he's got money doing nothing. Yeah, I meant nothing as far as I'm concerned. Oh, he's got it in one of them building society accounts where you can't get at it when you want it. At least that's what he tells me. All I know is I have my work cut out trying to get my housekeeping. He might find he gets a better return off it than he does now. It's not his style, lovely, no. It's not into speculating in town, no. He likes it where he knows exactly how much it's going to be worth this time next year and the year after that till doomsday. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm sorry, Denise, love. Honestly, it's, it's not worth asking him, honestly, love. Her. I mean, he'd rather spend it than put it in an hairdresser's. Well, he's done that before, you know, with me. Well, I was in the area, so I thought I'd pay you a visit. Well, you're always welcome here, Mrs Rogers, you know that. <clears throat> it's not a spot check. I don't believe in underhand tactics, though there are some who encourage that kind of thing. Ah, that was one of Mr Scott's tricks. Oh, not that we need tricks. I mean, we've got nothing to hide here. Oh, it wasn't Mr Scott I was thinking of. Oh, no, somebody much closer to home. Ah, an ex-incumbent of my uh, present position here. Mr Holesworth believes in the poacher-turned-gamekeeper ethos. Claims he can spot a discrepancy at a hundred yards. Mm. Uh, would you like to inspect the delicatessen counter? Is he having a wine promotion? Um, yeah, yeah, just for today. Really? Yes, you see, I noticed an 8% downturn in the sales of wine against the same week last year. And you decided to do something about it? Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Shows initiative, Mr Watts. In fact, you're one step ahead of us at head office. Hadn't escaped our notice either. We were going to suggest something along just these lines. May I? Join me? Cheers. Hello. Hello, Elaine. Just restocking. Selling like hot cakes. So you're helping Mr. Watts with his wine promotion? His wine promotion? Well, actually, Miss Fennick did put in a fair amount of um, input. Well, as a matter of fact, um, it was 
Miss Fenwick's idea, not mine. I see. So the uh, plaudits are all yours, then? Yes, I think we'll get all the stores to do something similar. Well done, Elaine. Well done, you. Cheers. I've been meaning to have it done for ages. Ah, oh, we're nothing if not convenient. Yes, I know, and it's easy to take it for granted, you know, being on doorstep. Just uh, shampoo and set, was it, this time? Yeah, I haven't got time for anything else. And I haven't got Audrey Roberts as a money. Next time. Have a facial, eh? Mm. I'll have to save up, won't I? I'll get Don to treat you. Huh? He can't be short of a couple of bob, surely. Don? <laughs> he works every hour, God sends, I know that. Because I suppose he'll be self-employed, same as me. I dare say he's got a lot of overheads. Mm, well, he's got his radio time and his uh, petrol and his insurance. His tags. I expect to be on schedule D, same as me. Yes. Which is okay until you get a demand for a lump sum and you have to find it from somewhere. Then comes a bit of a shock and that. Uh, look, Denise, I don't ask Don about what he earns or his tax. He keeps all that side of it to himself. How are you doing? Look, I'm uh, just nipping home. Something I forgot to say to Sally. Oh, he's been no bother, have you? I have, though, haven't I? This morning. Oh, that, well, not really. It's just Kevin, he's dead protective. Thinks I can't stand up for myself. Oh, whereas I know you can, don't I? Yeah. He just overreacts, that's all. Could get him into bother one of these days. Right, come on then, Jonathan, we're off. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye, see you tomorrow. Bye. Hi, Kev. So what was all that about? What? That. Him running off like a frightened rabbit. If you must know, I was just explaining to him how you were backing me up this morning, that's all. Oh, you mean apologising? Sorry about me husband who goes off at the deep end for no reason. It's a bit new today. Nothing, why? I didn't say anything like that. And anyway, you're on too soon for your tea. Hey? We don't usually knock off at this time. No, I, uh, Come on to tell you I'll be back at six. What, the usual time? Yeah, the, uh, usual time. I'm going back to work. See you later. Hi. Uh, Hi. Just thought I'd let you know, I've been down to the Housing Association. And? And I've got an appointment to see somewhere on Friday. Oh, oh great. Thanks, Gail. I'm sure you were right. I just, well, I didn't think about it properly, really, did I? It wouldn't have worked out. No hard feelings? No, not at all. <laughs> I'll see you sooner. Thanks again. All right. Bye. Bye. You know, I was beginning to feel awful. I think I owe you a drink. You owe me a drink? I've just lost your lodger. Still, if you insist. <laughs> oh. Okay. Aye, aye. Over here, Tanya. Fine, please. Right, Jim. Uh, well, I'm compared to Kevin, that's for sure. You know, there's something getting that wee man's back and he's not letting on what. Here, yeah, Tanya, love. Put what? this behind the bar, will you? What have you got there? Sterry, what's he got on his feet? Uh, tennis rackets. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> what a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hey, it's all right for you to laugh. Yeah. I live next door to that. Uh, yeah. I'll put it over here. How's yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> no, Don. You got your hair done? Oh, you've noticed. Do you like it? Where'd you go? Denise as well. No. Oh. She said you should treat me to the next one. All right. What else did she say? About what? About me treating you, like. Nothing. We were talking about tax. What did she say? Well, if you ask me, she's had one of those big demands for tax. Because I was the only one in the job. And the business, I think, Don, is not doing well at all. Hey, <sighs> Emily. I hate going back to an empty house. Mm, to tell you the truth, I'm the opposite. Mr. Sugden's issued me with strict instructions that I'm to be back for a sandwich and a hot drink at 9.45. <laughs> Couldn't offer you a timeshare, could I? Don't you mean a house swap? No, that's what I mean. Percy Sugden or an empty house? Believe it or not, I'm very tempted. Believe it or not, so am I. All right, Kev. Hi, Kev. Oh, not really, no. No. All oh, right. Jim said he seemed a bit worried about something. Yeah, there. Excuse me a minute. See you later. Yeah, see you later. To be honest, he's the last person I'll discuss it with, you know, the way things are with him and Liz. But you, uh, you won't say anything to anyone, will you? Well, no, but I mean, uh, you don't have to tell me if you don't want Kev. If someone said 
If Sally was having an affair, what would you say? <laughs> well, I'd say they were lying. Same as me. I can't believe that, Kev. Where have you got this from? <laughs> the fella's wife. It's little Jonathan's dad. Well, yeah. she wants to be Yeah. Had a bit of a row with Sally the other day. Yeah. She come round to try and collect the kid when she wants a post to. Went crackers with Sally, then come and told me her husband's having an affair nah, with her. What? Well, that's what it is, isn't it? She's just trying to get her own back, isn't she? Yeah, that's what I thought. Mm, well, don't worry yourself, kid. Have you told Sally what she said? You think I should? Well, talking from experience. Yeah. Suppose that's why I'm having a chat with you, really. Mm. Well, I did nothing out of order, and luckily, me and Gail are fine now, but... Well, I did make one mistake. I didn't tell her at the time. So whatever you do, Kev, tell her. Now, well, tonight, before it's too late. I mean, otherwise it could look as if you took it seriously. Yeah, I'll do that. Cheers, Martin, thanks. Right. Evening, Desmond. Oh, oh evening, Derek. Oh, Derek. Derek. Any more for tennis? <laughs> yeah, okay. I like your picture, love. What picture's that, then? That one, oh, oh, yeah, very good. Pity it's framed. I could have signed it. Ah, yeah, it's very good. Now, let me buy you a drink, this one. No, no, definitely my shot. I insist. No, put your money away. I insist. Pint and a half, please. Right. About the tree, Derek. Let's just call it a truce, eh? Deuce, we said. <laughs> yeah. I played a joke on you, and you played a joke on me. <laughs> Aliens. Aliens, yeah, that was a good one, that. Anyway, tomorrow I'm going to go down to the garden centre, get a replacement. Proper size, how's that? Oh, no, you don't. The little one stays there. Symbol of our mutual sense of humour and a living proof of our newfound bond, eh? <laughs> <laughs> good health, Desmond. Yes, cheers. Oh! What's that in your beer? <laughs> My God, it's a spider. I hate spiders. Look, everyone, Desmond's got a spider in his beer. I wish I'd never started this now. He certainly knows how to get his own back. Do you know it's not a real one, though? I'd be terrified, that Derek. <laughs> Advantage, Wilton. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good. Good. Got to the stage now where I've fallen off the footpath. So I'm trying to help in the grass. And on winter nights, I've walked up the streets. I know I've walked in the Who's he asleep? Yeah. Night. Should be all right. Come and sit down, Kev. I want to talk to you. Sorry, mate. Not talking to Martin. Oh, it's all right. I've got an apology to make. Go on. Well, you know when you had a go at Joe this morning? Well, you were right. He does take advantage. And I know I ought to deal with it myself. And I thought I had. But it was just the same, wasn't it, going on about all his problems. That's what I told him. I know, well, I didn't thank you for it earlier. So I want to thank you now. Thanks, Kev. I suppose I did get a bit heavy with him, didn't I? Well, it's given him something to think about, isn't it? I do love you, Kevin. Love you too. You all right? You seem a bit fed up. You're not fed up with me, are you? Don't be daft. Of course I'm not. Good. I expect you're just a bit worried about this court case, aren't you? Yeah. That's what it is. The court case. Hiya. Oh, hiya. I'm sorry we're late. Oh, it's all right. The car wouldn't start. Would you be leaving? Oh. It's that time of year. Yeah. Come on. In you go. Good morning, Jonathan. Yeah, it needs a service. I should take it in. Well, Kevin will have a look at it for you, won't you, Kev? Yeah, sure. No, I'll take it to where I normally go. It has some kind of warranty. Oh. Suit yourself. But thanks for offering. Right, uh, look, I must stash. I'm, uh, I'm late as it is. I'll see you later. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye. Well, that was short and sweet. Uh, so that was a man who got the message, would you? Well, you could have been a bit more enthusiastic about his car. Why? He didn't want me to do it any more than I did. No, I know, but... Look, so I'm not having a row over him. From now on, we keep it strictly formal, OK? Yeah, I suppose you are. I know I'm right. Right, I'm going to work. See you later. All right. Mm -hmm. See you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good girl for you, ma'am. Yeah. See you, pal. See ya. 
Yep. Have a good day. I'll try. See you later. Open it up. Well, sounds like your starter motor. Is that serious? No, but you won't get to work in it. I could have a lift off Don if I was you before he goes back to bed. Don, fancy a bit of overtime, mate? Yeah, why not? Right. Well, I'll get somebody over to fix it. Nah, I'll have a look at it for you. Don't be daft. Now, look, Kevin, I don't want to put you to any trouble, OK? Well, it's no trouble. You'll be paying for it, so I won't exactly be doing you a favour, will I? Well, thanks a lot. I'll leave the keys in the ignition. Better grab that lift. I've seen the sign in the window. Half price haircuts? Yes. Right then, I'll have one. You're, uh, what they call, um, a unisex or whatever they call it, aren't you? Yes. Huh. Well, uh, I'll have it now if you're not busy. Well, we're certainly not that. Ah, yes. I take it there is a discount for pensioners. I'm sorry, Percy. Half price is as low as I can go. Ooh, I thought you'd knock a bit off for OAPs. Not off these prices. Evening. So, Percy, what's it to be? Well, I'm not sure I can afford it if it's only half price. I mean, chap in Rotherman Street's cheaper than that. And it's not as if there's that much to cut. Look, Percy, you've seen the deal. Take it or leave it. But if you want to pay peanuts, I suggest you go see a monkey. All right, if that's your attitude. I'm sorry I bothered. That's not fair, you know. They don't have much money, pensioners. Yes, I do know, which is why I do a deal for them already. I draw the line at charity. And if you're so concerned about value for money, I suggest you try getting in on time. I pay you from nine o'clock, not five past, all right. Sorry. Morning. Well, morning. Any other bright ideas for today? Well, yes, I have, as a matter of fact. I think we should do wine promotions like that more often. Yes, I think the staff prefer wearing fancy dress rather than the nitty-gritty of real selling. I think it is real selling. You know, we shifted double the amount of wine yesterday than we normally do. I was thinking next time we could do the red wines of Spain. Oh, why stop with the wines? Why not do the food as well? Why don't we get Mr Holdsworth selling tapas, wearing a big sombrero and a red cape? You'd look pretty Hispanic yourself in that get-up. I was being sarcastic. And I'm being serious. Well, about the wine, anyway. I'll think about it. Yeah, well, don't think too long. I've already faxed Mrs Rogers with the idea and, well, judging from her reaction yesterday, I think she'll be favourable, even if you're not. See ya. Well, I won't say I never give you anything. All right, what are you doing here? Oh, boy, he's having a cleaning blitz, so he sent me out to get this lot. Oh, I thought I'd give you a mail at the same time. That's on the good news. Which is? Dad got a cross petition for a divorce from Mum this morning. Oh, great. And he took it in his usual calm and reasonable way, I suppose. Oh, I didn't hear the tremors this morning. There's a big fault wine opened up on the living room floor since breakfast. Sounds like I'm best out of it. Yeah, after having aggravated it in the first place. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you're not exactly helping Matt as much, are you? I mean, walking out and shacking up right now. Well, he should have showed a bit more understanding, shouldn't he? No wonder his marriage is falling a bit. Oh, you missed a little lecture, by the way, on the perils of falling in love. It all ends in tears, in case you're wondering. Well, he can speak for himself. I'm going to put me off just because he made a mess of it. And I can do without your snide remarks and all come to think of it. What? What do you mean, what? If you're going to start getting at me as well, sounds like I really am best out of it, doesn't it? Oh, well, thanks for the letters. Hey, well, I'm sorry I'm late, Kev. Oh, you're all right, Jim. Right. Whoa. 
Trouble. Yeah, I've been speaking to the solicitor. Got the divorce papers through from Liz this morning. Yeah. And what she said you've been doing? Probably is that private. What hasn't she been saying? Assaulting her boss, restricting her career prospects. True. Not the way they're saying it'll tell you. Of course they dress it all up in the legal jargon and I come out of it looking like a psychopath, you know? So what's your solicitor said? Well, he reckons it's gonna get really messy now she's done this, you know? And expensive. Cross petitions, cross decrees. I'm getting cross-eyed just trying to get my head around it to be telling you the truth. Whose car is this in? Uh, Joe Broughton's starter motor. Right, well, you want me to have a look at it? Well, I'll do it later. Finish the gearbox on that if you want. Uh, is everyone OK between you and this Joe Broughton character? Yeah. Why shouldn't it be? I don't know. I was just asking, mate. Everything's fine, Jim. I'll give you the lift with that box when I've done this, all right? Yeah, OK. Sorry, I spoke. Late breakfast? Yeah, I was up till three this morning. Oh, doing your marking. It's all right, Ken. No need to apologise. Oh, I felt like something special this morning. I couldn't seem to find it. If this was France, I'd be having fresh croissant with Normandy butter, blackcurrant jam and a large cup of dark brown coffee. But as it's Weatherfield. As it's dear old Weatherfield, yeah. Why is English food so pedestrian? Now you can get fresh croissants in town. Oh, yeah, exactly. Drive to some dinky little shop and pay a fortune and fancy just walk around the corner. Anyway, you're looking a bit more cheerful. Well, you get no thanks for being miserable. No. I'm uh, seeing Trace this lunchtime for our weekly meal. Oh, hope it goes all right. Any messages? Even if I had, I doubt if she'd want to hear them. No, right. Well, I'll let you know how I get on. Good luck. Thanks. Ken. You could give her my love. Yeah, will do. Yes, Tom, what can we get you? I'd like a nice mug of hot chocolate, please, please. This time of day? Yeah, well, I want to drink with that and then go back to bed for a couple of hours. Oh, you're on nights. Yeah, don't half mess up your sleep. Perhaps you got taxi, lad. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, I can tell you. <laughs> Coffee, please. Well, supper she bowled you out as well. Put it this way, if I had my coffee over there, I need a hammer to chip ice off at the top. See? It's not me. What the heck's up with that woman? I ain't got a clue. She better sort it out soon, whatever it is, cos it's driving me crackers. <laughs> That may be. Well, you didn't say anything last week when I had one with my pizza. Oh, that was in a restaurant. You can drink beer and cider there, providing you're 16. Oh, and porter, I believe. Well, that's stupid. Oh, I agree, I agree. But until they make our licensing laws more civilised, like in the rest of Europe... Craig's always talking about Europe. Has he been? He lived in a squat in Paris. He knows it really well. How long did he live there? Um, three weeks. He says that English food is rubbish compared with French. You know, this bread we're eating is full of preservatives. I think you find the French use just as many preservatives as us in their cooking. Yeah, but theirs tastes better. Does it? Well, that's what Craig says. I thought you liked French food. In moderation, yes. It's too rich to eat regularly. Oh, give me good old plain English cooking any day. Well, we're going there anywhere next year. Your mum sounds a lot. How is she? She's well. Life goes on. God. No, actually, uh, that's not true. She's still very upset about what happened. Well, if she hadn't have come barging in that day... Yeah, she knows that. She's only got herself to blame. Well, you needn't worry there. She does blame herself. She regrets what she did enormously. Has she told you to say this? 
on the contrary, she'd be furious if she knew. She doesn't want to do anything to make matters worse. I mean, she can't even apologise because it might aggravate things. I'm not asking her to. No, I know, I know. Well, she just doesn't like the way everything's been left. She doesn't want to turn the clock back, love, not anymore. She accepts that she has no right over the way you live your life. But that doesn't mean that she doesn't miss you. I mean, if she could only hear from you now and again, let her know that you haven't forgotten her, it would mean a lot. Anyway, it's up to you. Just sort of let you know. You know, it's really weird, Kev. What? Well, you see, you just keep merrily rolling along through life without realising that there are dozens of cracks appearing in your marriage. Then when you do realise, it's all too late, of course. I thought you was really happy. Oh, God, I would weren't loads of ways. But Liz always wanted something else. What? Well, something else apart from just looking after the kids and fitting them with my job all the time, you know? She must have talked about it, Jim. No, not really. Still, I'll tell you, it's amazing how they keep their secrets from you. One day you think everything in the garden's rosy, the next day... It's all gone. That, that sort of no surely, Jim. Yeah, well, I mean, like, there's telltale signs and all that. If you bother looking for them, I didn't. Just turned a blind eye, pretending nothing was wrong. <laughs> if only I hadn't, I might not be in this mess I'm in now, I'll tell you. <laughs> You are talking to someone who nearly became an entrepreneur, Dan. I hope you realise that. Why is that? Denise. She asked me yesterday if I'd like to go into partnership with her. Oh, really? Yeah. Can't think why she asked me, because I haven't exactly had any recent business experience, have I? Unless, of course, uh, you count keeping Alfie under control. Eh? So, uh, <laughs> what did you say? Why do you think I said nearly? To be honest, if I had any money to invest, I think I'd put it in something safer than a back street hairdresser's. Hey! Maybe that's why she asked me. Perhaps she is short of cash. You don't know how to about it, do you? No. Well, if she does want money, she'd be better off asking a bloke. I mean, there must be plenty around here who'd be happy to oblige. <laughs> There's a pile over there needs sweeping up in case you hadn't noticed. I was waiting until you'd finished. It was all this because I was late this morning. Or what? You've done nothing but bite my head off all day. What's going on? Nothing. And you're really horrible to Percy. I'm telling everybody in the cafe. I'm sorry. Things aren't that wonderful at the moment. I shouldn't be taking it out on you, though. Well, you're not in trouble, are you? Financially? No. All this cost cutting that's going on. I'm not in trouble, Fiona. So I've still got my job. Don't be morbid, of course you have. Listen, do what you've got to do here and then pop over the cafe and get us a sticky bun each and I'll promise to behave. And stop worrying, all right? Not disturbing you, am I? <laughs> yeah, but any excuse to knock off. <laughs> Just gonna brew up. Not Mum. No, I'm all right, thanks. Don't look all right. Did you have that word? No. Thought there's been a development in the situation. Yeah? Fixing Joe Broughton's car this morning. Found that. So? <laughs> so? A bit weird, don't you think? Carrying a photo of another man's wife. Come on, look, there's got to be an explanation. I mean, think about it. If they were having an affair, how would they go about it, eh? I mean, you're working in the garage over the road. So where's Hazel got the idea from? I don't know. She's just trying to mix it, isn't she? I mean, she wants a kid back. The more mud she can sling at her husband, the better. <sighs> Look, Kev, don't jump to conclusions because of this. Hey? <laughs> I mean, look what happened to Jim McDonald that time when he got wrong end at stick over that brewery fella. But what's he doing with a picture of her in his car? I don't know. <sighs> well, one way to find out, though, isn't there? Ask him. Where are you going? Come on! 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 Come on!
It's half term, Percy. You've caught us at a bad time. Half term? When I was a kid, we were out in fields tater picking in fine weather, enjoying the fresh air, not in the earth, spoiling other people's pleasure. Not a lot of taters to pick round here anymore, unfortunately. Have they got any youth club to go to? Not every day, no. I don't know about them being cooped up, but you've been there nearly all day. Mm, when I was a kid, they had old men's shelters to go to. Oh, oh, they're not the more oh, they built the more oh, you've done it. You can do it. Two vanilla slices, please. Take away, please. You're not stopping then this afternoon? No, temperature's gone up a bit in there, thank goodness. Oh, I might get my hair cut then. No, I don't quite think it's going to go Well, that's it. I'm off. What have I just told you lot? It's no good talking to them. They've no consideration for anybody these days. There's going to be a bit of give and take, person. Look, I'll go read my book in the bus shelter, eh? It'll be a lot more peaceful in there than it is in here. Percy! Hiya. You get it fixed? Yeah, uh, no problem. It was your starter motor. Got your belly. Right. Thanks. Ooh. Will I check then? Uh, yeah. MVB motors. But, uh, hope it didn't put you out too much. No, no, I'll get used to it. I uh, noticed you had a nice picture of Sally in your car. What? Ah, couldn't help noticing it, like. Nice picture of Sally and Jonathan. On top of your dashboard. All right. Yeah, well, I've had it in there for some time, actually. I keep meaning to drop it off of my mother's, you know. She's wanted a, a recent picture of Jonathan, and uh, I didn't have one of him on his own, you know. <clears throat> but funny you should mention it. There are some in there for you and Sally, come to think of it. Do you see the others? No. Just let me give you this. There you go. Come on. There we go. Some of Sally. Some others. Yeah, I meant to give you them weeks ago, but I just kept forgetting. I forgot they were in there, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Wonder what you were on about at first. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> these are great, these. Oh, thanks very much. I'll make sure Sally gets them. That's a pleasure. I'm sorry they're so late. Anyway, thanks for doing the car. Uh, at least I won't be late in the morning. Uh, oh, you want your key? Cheers. Thanks, Kev. Hello. Tracy. How are you? Oh, I'm uh, bearing up, you know. How are you? All right. Nice to hear you. I'm ringing about my red sweater. What, your woolly one? Yeah. It's getting a bit cold in the evenings now. I think I might need it. Well, uh, do you want to come round and get it? No. Could you look for it for me? I think it's in my chest of drawers somewhere. I could fetch it round for you if you like. No, don't do that. I don't need it yet. Oh. Right, well, I'll have it ready for you. I'll wash it through if you like. Yeah, OK. You need warmer clothes, don't you? When winter comes on. Aye, you do that. So, how are you keeping them? I'm fine. I'm going to have to go. My money's running out. All right, love, well, take care. And you'll be in touch about the jumper? Yeah. Thanks for ringing. Bye. Bye. Bye, love. What's that, Jack? Fortune telling, mate. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, guaranteed to tell you all you want to know about tall, dark strangers. Hey, I've had one dark stranger in my life this year already. I'll tell you, that's enough. <laughs> Can't you tell you what a tall, dark Gigi is going to win three fortunes <laughs> hey, <laughs> next Wednesday? I, I hope not. You've know. put me out of business. <laughs> uh, so, what's it in aid of, Jack? I don't know. Stella Rigby's had one now. Bet wants one. All proceeds to charity, that's all I know about it. Yeah, yeah you'll be pocket. I'll be a lot in You seem a bit more cheerful anyway. Yeah, well, that falter turned out it was one of a set. He's got some there for his mother and uh, some for us, so 
Come on, what did I tell you? Hey? Yeah, it's a good job I didn't smack him, on it? I tell you, Kev, it's that hazel. She's got caramel written all over her. You steer well clear there. Yeah. Evening. Oh, oh hello, Denise. Hello, Lady, eh? Yeah. I'll tell you what. She kept me seeing these last couple of weeks, so she has. You know, listen to my problems and all that, look. She's a lovely lady in other ways, too. What do you mean? You know what I mean. If I wasn't off in the box clever with Liz, I'll tell you, I wouldn't mind a crack about myself, so wouldn't you? What do you mean? You mean you haven't? Are you joking, Don? I wouldn't have a leg to stand on if Liz found out about anything like that. Oh, no. Nice idea, but that's the way it stays, you know? You're an enigma, you, you know that? And I'd mind my language if I were you. The style of a millionaire's wife, yet you work in a pub. Well, perhaps that's what I am. Perhaps I like a rough edge to things. Oh, I. You're a bookie, aren't you? That's right. <laughs> so if I was looking for something a bit rough... Well, you do far worse than a bookie. Mm. Pity I'm not looking at it. Hey. Are you busy tomorrow, Percy? It depends. Why? Half-price haircut, plus discount. Oh, you've seen reason, have you? I'm sorry, I were a bit right here. Had a lot on my plate. Yes, well, seeing as you've had the decency to apologise, I accept. I can be a bit forward at times, you know. Sometime in the morning, Sue? Yes, fine. Would it be all right if I tell my mates down at Legion about your office? Like you said, Percy, you can be a bit forward. Yeah, well, I'll keep it to myself this time. See you, Percy. Bye. Hello there. Look, Don, if it's about the money... No, no, listen, it's all right now. I talked to my accountant this afternoon. I don't have to pay that tax demand until January. What? You can relax. I'll sort of sum it out by then. Are you saying I don't need to pay it back? No! Well, that's a relief. Uh, well, it's for me and all, I can tell you. Uh, look, I've got to get back to work, but uh, I was thinking, look, uh, I've messed you about. Let me take you out to a meal and make oh, it up to Oh, no, no, Come on, sorry. come on, it's only fair. How come you only spoke to your accountant this afternoon? I thought you said... Uh, well, uh, it was off sick, you see. <coughs> I panicked when I saw it. It seemed so definite. And then he rang me this afternoon. Look, anyway. What do you say? Yeah, sure, why not? Tomorrow. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I'll, I'll pop over and fix it up. Fine, I look forward to it. Me too. Uh, see you then. See you, Don. What? What? So you relented then? <laughs> eh? Percy. Get him. Oh, Discount. Yeah. Mm. Made his day, I bet. <laughs> I should say so. Generous offer. No strings attached. No strings attached? How could there be? Very easily with some folk, love. Very easily. Ready for the game? Got some spare change, please. Ready for the game? Got some spare change, please. There you go. Penny for the guy. Got some spare change, please. No, uh, no, I haven't. But catch me when I come out, OK? I'll have to change that. Them for me and all, if you like. Yeah. Hiya, Don. Uh, I just want a quick word with boss. Denise, Don, what's wrong? Yeah, I heard. Excuse me, just a minute. Hi, Don. Just checking that everything's all right for tonight, love. Yeah, it is for me. But it did occur to me. I... Oh, be a bit subtle. At least pretend to be doing summer. It did occur to me. Aren't you running a bit of a risk in all this? How do you mean? Well. Somebody sees us, word gets back to the wine. No, I don't care who word gets back to. Look, we can take a table into Middle of the Street and have dinner there if you like. Oh, no, I don't. I'm a free man, me. I do what I want, with who I want, when I want. OK, OK. So what shall we say? Seven o'clock? Perfect. See you there. See you, Dan. Going for the older man now, are we? 
Yeah, well, I've heard toy boys have had their day and older men are going to become quite fashionable again. I'm so sorry about that. Did you tell her to do it? No. Oh, come on, Ken, be honest. I am being honest. Well, I might have said you'd love to hear from her, something like that, but I definitely did not tell Tracy to phone. Well, she did. Good. Supposedly about a jumper that she couldn't find, and had I seen it? Supposedly? Well, I got the impression that she might have been trying to mend one or two bridges. Oh, well, not before time. Mm. I said no, and I mean no. Wouldn't you think the parents would stop them, eh? Everywhere you go, there's kids no older than nine or ten begging on street corners. It's worse than Cairo. Well, it's only a bonfire night, penny for the guy. Guy? It's nothing like a guy. No, it's outright begging. And I'm surprised that you condoning it. No, I was doing. And what are foreigners going to think? What foreigners? Any that are visiting, with these little ragamuffins sticking their hand at them every which way they turn. They're going to go back home and they say, England, it's overrun with beggars. <clears throat> that reminds me, um, could you change that? Oh, yeah, I did promise. Afternoon, <laughs> love. Hiya. Oh, Ivy. You'll know the uh, Burton Crescent, Crescent, won't you? Part of the Ridge Estate. Oh, yeah, but I'd sooner I didn't, love. And it must be the most dirtiest and neglected part of Weatherfield. I'm just surprised they haven't condemned it and swept it away long ago. Why, anyway? Oh, nothing. I was just uh, thinking of getting a flat there, that's all. Oh, you weren't, were you? Yes. Oh, well, oh, take no notice of me and my big mouth, love. It's years since I went down there. I mean, it might be lovely now. They could have changed it beyond all recognition. Yes, well, I'm very grateful for your honest opinion, anyway. Yeah. And look at it this way, Andy. We must be folk go down Coronation Street and say, phew, what a dump. And look how happy we all are there. Uh, yeah, well... Anyway, thanks, Ivy. All right, I'll see you. Ta. It won't take me a minute to make you a sandwich. Well, I've got sandwiches at work, so. Well, have a cup of tea, then. I mean, you don't have to have it with us. Have it in front. Mm. Sorry, I haven't got time. Right, well, there's no chocolate mousse with licorice all sorts for you, then. Is that what they're having? <laughs> yeah. Hey, tough old <laughs> kids, aren't they? They're <laughs> like vacuum cleaners. Yeah, look, I've come home just to tell you I won't be finishing until about 7 o'clock tonight. You know, we've got a load of work on. Oh, right, well, don't overdo it. No, I won't. But I just wondered, is it OK oh. if you invite Jim for tea? Oh, yeah. Because they'll be working late with me, and I just thought, what sort of prospects has he got, eh, going back to that house? Oh, that's a nice thought, Kev. Yeah, well. I don't have them that often, do I? <laughs> of course you can invite him round. I haven't done any shopping yet, so getting in for three is no problem. Oh, that's good. I'll All see right. you later. Mm, I'll see you later. Right, see you, little monsters, eh? You enjoy your little tea party, eh? <laughs> I'll see you later. See you, beautiful. Mwah. Bye. See ya. Right, who's finished the mousse? Me. Where is he? <laughs> All on your own, then? Seem to be, yeah. Mm, not for long, though. I hear your girlfriend's coming back tomorrow. Vicky, yeah. Yeah, Bet was saying, you know, it surprised me, a man about town like you going for someone as young as that. Yeah, well, I'm hoping that she'll catch me up as she gets old, easy. All right. I believe she's got, you know, a bit of money behind her. Has that got something to do with it? Yeah, well, that's all I'm after, you see. I mean, as soon as I get my hands on that and land with a couple of babies, then I'll be on my way. Hey, I wouldn't let Betty you saying that. Well, I don't need to, do I? I can always rely on you to tell her. What do you think about this tarot evening? Ah, it's the sort of thing people enjoy, isn't it? Oh, when you say people, though, you really mean women. I mean, it's a woman's event, isn't it? I suppose it is. I wonder why, though. Do you think men don't want to know about the future? Oh, I should think they do. It's just that they don't think they're going to get to know it just by turning a few cards over. Oh, I'm sure they're right. I think it's all very silly. And I don't think it does the cause of women any good to be so susceptible to it. Well, it might do the cause of women no good, but it doesn't half buck you up to be told you're going to have a romantic encounter with a tall, dark stranger. <laughs> I'd pay a few quid to hear that. All right, mate. Yeah, well, what's up with you, then? Your canteen closed down or something? No, but it's about time it did. Um, two pints of lager, please, Tanya. Cheers, mate. Oh, you're right. I've just been viewing a flat, actually. Penthouse. Penthouse? Housing Association, mate. So what's this going to be, then, uh, your new little pad for you and Amy, then, is it? Pad for no-one, this one, mate. Not unless you count cockroaches. No, it was really bad. Possibly worse than living at home. Worse than that? It's joking, aren't you? Yeah, well... So, anyway, I'm still looking. So, if you know anywhere that's cheap, furnished and available... 240. 240. So, uh, when should you do that, then? Amy, uh, week in a bit. So, now I've had a letter from her solicitor, which is telling me that she's going to divorce me which in my book makes us no better than children blaming one another. A cross petition? Yeah, well, it makes me cross, I can tell you. No, I mean... A... I, I know. I know what you mean. 
And I do believe you're right, that's what it's called, a cross petition. So, now we've established that we're both trying to divorce each other. Who knows? Which makes you think, doesn't it? One of these days, one of us is bound to succeed. Wouldn't you think so, Mavis, eh? Well, I, I think it's a tragedy. Well, sometimes late at night, I would tend to agree with you. But most of the time during the day, I tend to think it's a farce. Anyway, who cares? I'm holding up commerce. You get on with it. No, you first. I've got to choose me magazines, pay for me papers. That could be a week in here. All right. Well, I just want a packet of mints. I'll tell you what, I'll have two. Save me calling oh, back, eh? That's 36, please. Oh, yeah, Mavis. See all these magazines you have up here, you know, brides and weddings and all that lot? Uh, 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 uh. You should have one on divorce, I'll tell you. It'd be a bestseller, so it would. I think it would. Oh, I Make your fortune, so it would. You could have articles like what to wear on that special day in court. That's right, yeah, and you could have you could have you could have those lists, couldn't you? You know the lists. Wedding lists. Wedding lists, except you'd have to make them divorce lists. With his and hers columns of handy tips to break up the happy home, eh? I could have done with one of those. Uh, I'll tell you what, Mavis, I'll leave it with you, eh? And we'll split it 50-50 if it takes off, all right? Well, uh, we only sell them. Cheerio. Bye. Bye. Right. <laughs> You know, I can't think of anything worse than getting divorced. How about getting divorced twice? Oh. Uh, this and and paper papers, was it? Yes, nice. Yes. A cup of tea and a vanilla slice, please. Uh, don't you want a piece of pumpkin pie, Emily? Pumpkin. Oh. <laughs> so I've got a whole load of insides left over. It will not be wasted. I'll take it home. So the children are going to be celebrating Halloween, are they? Mm, a bit early as it happens. They're going to a party tonight. Well, if you'd like to come round, I could do them some toffee to take along. Oh, thanks, Emily. Um, excuse me, can I just... Oh, yes. Oh, hi. Oh, ah, yeah. Um, just about the flat. Is it... Well, is it still there? Yeah, well, of course, it's still there. It's stuck onto the cafe with cement. Um, and still available? Mm. Only I know we talked about it and we said it wasn't suitable. Yeah, well, not for kiddies. I know, no. but I really am getting desperate. So do you think I could just have a quick look and see? OK, but do you think you could come back when I've had a chance to tidy up a bit? Oh, well, that doesn't matter. Well, it does to me. <laughs> is, uh, is Kevin not in? No. Has he said anything to you about us? What do you mean about us? Hazel told him that we were having an affair. No. Yeah, I only found out today. Well, I hope you told her that we're not. Well, of course I did. She can get into very serious trouble saying things like yeah, that. Yeah, well, I made that pretty clear to her. Well, when did she say this to Kevin? Last Friday. Apparently, she went over to his garage. A week ago? Yeah. Well, he hasn't said a word. Well, maybe he doesn't believe it or uh, he's choosing to ignore it. <laughs> well, you can't ignore something like that, can you? Well, Kevin couldn't. I know he couldn't. Look, do you want me to have a word? Well, no. No, I, I just... Well, what's that going to prove? Well, no, I... Well, I mean, supposing that you do go over there and you say to him, oh, by the way, I'm not having a, an affair with your wife, and what is he going to say? He's going to say, oh, well, that's all right then, is he? No, oh, no. that's just going to make matters worse. No, I'm sorry, Sally, I'm just not thinking very clear. No, well, you haven't been doing that all along, have you? Well, I'm sorry. Do you think she's telling the truth, Hazel, when she says she went round and said this to Kevin? Well, I'd like to say no, but it sounded true to me. And if you remember, last Friday's when I had that row with her, I said that she couldn't pick up Jonathan anymore. Well, yeah. Well, so this would be a revenge on me, wouldn't it? Yeah, but it's not harming you, though, is it? This is us that this is harming. I know. You must believe her. Why? Well, that's the only explanation I can think of. Why has not said anything to me? Oh, well, you know him better than I do, Sally. Or else he's, he's not made up his mind and he's, he's watching us and he's waiting. Maybe he's watching us now and he's just seen how long you're staying. Oh, come on, Sally knows I come in here to pick up Jonathan. Well, would you pick Jonathan up, please, and just go? Yeah, of course. Jonathan. I suppose I better give you a treat then. Means I have to give you something, yeah? 
Oh! There you are. Okay. There you are. You have to share that with him. Okay. All right, you have that as well then. See you later. Hiya. Well, you're on time. Well, that's the ring you can always count on with a cabbie. Yeah, and I suppose the other advantage is that if anybody sees you picking me up, they just think, I booked you to take me someplace. I've told you, I don't care who sees me. No, but I might. Ah, well, yes. Saving our houses now. You can't catch us on corner at three, so you come knocking at the door. Well, you're getting out here, so go on, up it before I call the police. Come on. That's your coffee, right? Mm. Do I have to make it? <laughs> hey, do you ever? <laughs> yes, I'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a Percy something. Hey. What's up with you now? He went round, like Mum said, and he just came out, just started showing us. Hang on, slow down. You've been round where? Emily said they were to call. You've been to Mrs Bishop's, been round there? Yeah, but only it went here, it was Sugden. Uh, Mr Sugden? Yeah, and as soon as Mum went there, he just came out, just started showing us. Tell us to get a lost, we'd call the police. The police? What have you been saying to him? No! We'll just trick or treat, didn't we, Sarah? Isn't that all we said? Yeah. And he shouted at you? Yeah, he held his head off. And all you said was trick or treat. You've not been winding him up, have you, Nicky? You've not been being rude to him, have you? No, we weren't rude, were we, Sarah? No. We didn't get a chance to be as soon as soon as he went mad. Oh, right, well, we're not having this, are we? Where are you going? I'm going to go over there and have a word with him, aren't I? Can I come? No, you can't. And are you sure you're telling Martin the whole story? Yeah! Right, well, we're going to have to have words about this. And I'm sorry, Gail, I know he's an old fella and all that. Can't grant satisfying little kids, can he? I hope you're telling the truth. Yeah, I am. Hiya. Hi. Where's Jim? Is he not coming? Yeah, he left about ten minutes ago. He's just gone home for a wash, get changed. Rosie in bed? Yeah. But you know what she's like? She won't go to sleep till you've been up there. Mm, let's go up and see her then, man. Okay. Mm. What? Not to have a word. I'll tell you later. Oh, I'm going home. Yep. Yeah. One, three, Jim. Hi. Hi, right, sorry. Listen, I want to thank you for this because I realised it was him who invited me, but it's you who's going to have to do all the work, you know? Oh, it's no bother. You're always welcome. Good. I'll just go and have a quick word with Rosie. Shall be set. Right then. So, what do you want me to do? Peel a few spuds or what? Percy, eh? Yes, yes, come in, Martin. Thank you. It's a surprise. We don't want to see you. Mm. He's through here, Martin. It's Martin to see you, Mr. Silkton. Martin? Oh, hello. What can I do for you? Well, you can tell me what you thought you were playing at, yelling at my kids and sending them home scared half to death. I beg your pardon? I asked you who that was at the door. Do you mean to say it was Nick? Uh, yes. You said it was Yobbo's. Yeah. Well, the way they were dressed, nobody could tell who they were. Oh, Mr. Sook. You might not have recognised them, but I'm sure you could distinguish them from your bows. I mean, the average age was about seven. Right, well, what were they doing on the streets then, begging for money? They weren't begging for money. Well, I'm sorry, but I got a distinct impression that they were. It was for Halloween, Percy. It was for a bit of fun. And anyway, it's a tradition. I'd have thought you'd have been all in favour of that. It's an American tradition, uh, not one of ours. I don't care what it is. I invited those children here. Well, why did her parents send them dressed up like that? If I'd have had a bad heart, I could be lying at the door now waiting for an ambulance. Hey, don't tempt me. And what's that supposed to mean? It means I've got some very upset children at home. And all right, you might not have recognised them. Fine. But I'm yet to hear one word that sounds anything like sorry. And you won't do. What does that mean you've got the right to go around behaving like that? I think if parents won't tell the children properly what to do, then somebody else has to do it. Oh. And I do think I've a right. In fact, I think I've more than a right. I've got a duty. But what does she do that undermines you? Well, she practically runs that store. I needn't be there half the time. Yeah, I thought that's what assistants were for. Bet you Tanya could run this pub by herself, couldn't you? Watch me, darling. Yeah, but she's too good, that Elaine, you know. No? Well, she's got something to prove, hasn't she? Basically, that she thinks she can do my job better than me. Yeah, you are. 
can I have a gin and tonic, please, love? Yes, sir. Evening, Alma. Evening. Husband run off and left you, has he? No, he might drive off one day, but I can't ever imagine him running, can you? <laughs> and therefore, there's a basic injustice in our relationship. I beg your pardon? Curly and his assistant manager. Oh! That's 154, love. Oh, evening. Oh, evening. Can I get you a drink, Ivy? Oh, that's very kind of you, Alma. I'll have a bottle of light here. Right, well. you are. How do you find Miss Fenwick, Ivy? Oh, hey? you're another one of these better buys lot, aren't you? It's going to be a long night. Oh, is that a promise? How do you mean? I just want a reaction from the shop floor. Yes, Ivy, what is the reaction from the shop floor? Well, I think with us all being women, it'd be nicer to have a woman boss instead of a man for a change. I don't yeah. think Kayla really wanted to hear that, did you, Kel? But there's your proof. She's undermining me. That's 242, love. Oh. Oh, I hope they don't have no reason to regret that. Well, why should they? Alma, you invite the devil to the door and it's quite likely to come through it. Evening. Oh, evening, Reg. Just talking about you. Something about opening a door and you'd come through it. Really? Right, now that I have. Can I get anybody a drinky poo? Go on, twist me out. Uh, oh, ladies, no, no, no. Just uh, three pints all together then, please, barmaid. You're one of these better buys lot as well, aren't you? Everywhere you turn. Mm, I think they've got their own breeding programme. Oh, Reg has. Just can't get the women to agree to it, that's oh, all. Right. Uh, look, Reg, uh, can we sit down? There's something I want to talk to you about. Well, I haven't got my drink yet. I'll bring it over to you. All oh, right, come on. All right. What is it? Just come and sit down a minute. <sighs> what? Listen, I'm yes. going to say something now, totally and utterly unprofessional. Yes? Is there any way you can get rid of Elaine Fennick for me? Oh, what are we talking about here? Staff transfer or contract killing? Well, contract killing if you can arrange it. If not, a transfer will have to do, but I just can't work with her anymore, Reg. Please, please, move her somewhere else. Oh, now we really are burying our soul tonight, aren't we? There we go. Yours is coming. All right. right. So what's she doing wrong, then? Nothing. And she never will. That's why she intimidates me. I know you may think it's pathetic, but I don't care. Oh, please, Reg, transfer her somewhere else, please. <laughs> Seldom hear such a creedy care, Norman. All right, I'll do what I can. There you go. Thank you. And I'm told that's <laughs> £3.60, please, Reginald. All oh, right, right. In your own time. I would count it as the biggest favour ever if you got rid of her. Yeah, so would we all. Mm. Hey. What uh, time do you get off tonight? Why? Well, I might just fancy a Chinese later. Well, don't let me stop you, love. I thought you might fancy joining me. Look, I get paid for working in here, and part of what I get paid for is smiling at the customers. Sorry if you got the wrong idea. So, which one of you does she take after most, then, eh? That's looked like Kevin. Oh, come on. Spitting image of you. No, just the way she acts. Oh, I see. Does she keep banging on about emission levels and timings <laughs> and all that, eh? Why does he? Oh, it's like a religion, let me tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you what, she has that look. A look in you up and down. You know the one Sally has? Like she knows what you're already thinking. Ah, yeah. well, you see, all women have that sort of thing. Yeah. She's lovely. I wouldn't be without her. Mm. OK. You know, I remember my two wee lads when they were Rosie's age. Oh, I run about the base. Two bright-eyed wee creatures getting fed sweeties by everybody, mm. you know what I mean? And their mother running after them, wondering if their teeth were going to fall <laughs> out or whether they were going to get fat or not, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, listen, you enjoy wee Rosie while you can. Because they only get big and horrible when they get older, you know? Will you let me pay for this? No. This is my way of saying sorry for messing you about. Half, then. Half each. No. Well, OK. Well, next time I pick up the bill. Ah. Can't have been too bad, then, if you think there might be a next time. I have to be honest. It's very nice to be able to go out with a fella and know you're not going to have to fight him off at the end of the evening. Believe me, there's not more calculated to ruin your appetite than knowing the more you eat, the more he'll expect. Yeah, I, uh, I can imagine. So, yeah, of course, that'd be a next time. Just whenever I feel the need of a night out with a pal, with no strings attached. Well, I wasn't expecting you back till tomorrow. Well, I had to live off Bryony's parents. So, have you uh, been to the Rovers? Only to drop my stuff off, and then I thought, I have got to see him. Where is he? <laughs> oh, no. Well, this is a popular spot. How about you, love? Back with us for a bit? Just for a week. No, well, a week will be long enough for that big lad, I'm telling you. Well, I've been just invited out to dinner, so I have. Been round your neighbours. The Webster's. 
Now there's a nice contented wee family. Why can't we all be like that, eh? OK, she said it, yeah. So why didn't you tell me? Because... Why? Right, because you believed her? No. Because I swear to you, Kevin. I swear on... on Rosie's life. I swear that is an absolute, complete pack of lies. I know. I don't think you do know. Look, I do, Sam. You must have at least wondered or at least had some doubts about it. Or she would have come and told me that when she said it straight away, wouldn't you? OK, yeah. I suppose there must have been some doubt there, yeah. Oh? Oh, come on, Sal, face it. If someone had come up to you and said that about me, you would have wondered just a little bit, wouldn't you? No. I wouldn't. OK, let's, let's just forget about it, OK? Do you want me to stop looking after Jonathan? No. Because I will. All you have to do is tell me and I'll tell him. But why? What would be the point? Because that would mean that Joe would never, ever come near our house ever again. Yeah, and all that I'd go to prove is that I don't trust you, Sal. Look, forget about it. I don't want to hear another word, OK? Right, just clear this up.